Yep, yep. I'm not gonna be on here long. I ain't gonna be on here long. I just I just wanted to come on for a minute. Yeah, I don't understand that. Hold on. Going through some stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, so they're saying that. <laughs> I want it. So, how many people are saying this? All right, bet. Yeah, um, we definitely gonna start going in on this soon. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be some very good things to go after. But um, so the news I'm getting right now, I made a video about this a while ago. You know what I'm saying, and and I'm gonna tell y'all for real. Terrence Crawford is what thirty six, thirty five, thirty six. They've been calling him a duck for, for forever, so this only made sense. Yeah, I don't understand that. So right now, I'm gonna go ahead and start, man. I ain't gonna be long in this, but right now, uh, so everybody's saying that Crawford is um ducking Jerron Ennis. So that so the Eubanks fight versus him is a duck, right? Okay, that makes sense according to the rules everybody's saying, right? I'm glad everybody's saying this because I'm probably the number one person on earth. People don't want to hear me talk about this because I'm going to tell the truth and they're going to run the other way. I'm not going to hear nobody come to me about, because most people don't even say nothing to me when I'm even live doing stuff like this because they know what's up. But so, because I'm looking at dudes' resumes and I'm listening to what the fans have been saying the last couple of years. So, when it comes to Jerron Ennis, right, with the resume he got, with the resume Jerron Ennis got right now, if any other fighter got that resume, who who is he gonna be able to fight? So if I got so if I got Jerron Ennis resume right now, and my name not Jerron Ennis, let's just say my name is whatever my name is, and I got the resume that Jerron Ennis got. Y'all telling me that I'm going to be able to um, have a chance at a big fight? 
because from what I've seen lately, a lot of people say certain guys aren't ready when it's a, a situation like Canelo versus Floyd Mayweather. But then when it's the other way around, guys feel like Ennis is ready. My thing is this right here, though. And this is what the funny part about boxing fans. They feel like Ennis is ready. I think Ennis is, what, 26, 27? They feel like Ennis is ready, right? But Terrence Crawford against Earl Spence at 20, at 35, they don't feel like he's ready. Same fans. So I'm not surprised that we have fans out here actually saying that Terrence Crawford is ducking anything. People, people have been quiet since Terrence Crawford's won. Nobody's really happy that he won the fight. Now you got people coming out here like, oh, my God, I didn't know he was that strong. Like, you got all kind of weird stuff going on now. I didn't even know. Last time I checked, Terrence Crawford don't make uh fights. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know how he got in the ring with Spence last time I checked. That's what the fans said last year. He wasn't going to get in the ring with Spence. You know what I'm saying? Why did he even fight Spence then? Why did y'all make all that attention and bring all that attention all these years and bother me every day about Earl Spence so y'all can focus on Jerron Ennis now? Boxing fans are the worst, bro. American boxing fans? Man. Jump off your nearest exit, please. American fans looking so lame these days. Dudes from other countries be laughing at y'all. Talking about Jerron Ennis. They really, they really don't even realize that they're basically telling everybody in the world, hey man, Jerron Ennis is the best we got right now. And they like, bro, Tim Zoo just slayed half of you. What y'all got? And y'all talking about Jerron Ennis? Bud a duck. It, can Jerron Ennis stop uh Tim Zoo right now? Bud a duck, but can Tim Zoo stop? Can uh, Jerron Ennis stop Tim Zoo? But Bud can be a duck, but can Jerron Ennis stop Tim Zoo right now? Answer that question since you want to debate. Can Jerron Ennis stop Tim Zoo right now? Yes, Tim Zoo. Boy, you on you on you on drugs. Boy, you on drugs. Go have a seat. You broke. Talking like that, you broke. You ain't got no money talking like that. You ain't winning no bet talking like that. You can't. You can't even make a good name. Yeah, you you broke. You broke. Ain't, ain't nothing irrelevant. You broke talking like that. That's not irrelevant. You broke. You broke. You ain't never gonna get no money talking like that. You one of them fans. You don't bet no money. You broke. Have a good day. You broke. You broke, homie. I ain't even paying attention to you. You broke. I'm talking about Jerron Ennis. Man, you broke. You broke. Bet your life that he'll stop somebody. That he'll stop a top guy. And I bet you won't be on this earth. You broke. You broke. You broke. You got to be an Earl Spence fan. Tell Earl Spence to run that rematch back. Oh, yeah. We talking about Earl Smith. We talking about, if you talking about Bud and, Earl, and, and Ennis, you a new fan. Nobody wasn't even mentioning Ennis last year when I was talking about Ennis. So what is you talking about? I was talking about Ennis during the shutdown. Y'all just now talking about Ennis? Man, please, jump off a cliff. You sound crazy. Just now bringing up Jerron Ennis. Jerron Ennis almost 30 years old. Boy, please. Jerron Ennis almost 30 years old. Boy, I don't you don't know what you're talking about. You just randomly, you on the meth. Kick rocks. Jerron Ennis almost 30 years old. You just now bringing his name up, please. Boy, I've been new about Jerron Ennis. You don't want to look crazy. You look crazy. Not a real boxing fan. A lot of these dudes just now knowing about Jerron Ennis and they like, yeah, boots, eh? I know Boots. I know his nickname. He don't, man. He he know y'all don't know him. He know that. He know y'all don't know him like that. Never mind me. He don't. He know y'all don't know him like that. 
Come on, man. Come on, man. Y'all just want to pick sides in boxing. Dude, so corny. Earl Spence got scraped up. Now we talking about uh, boots. Come on, man. Yeah, right. Call out Tim Zoo. Do that. Tim Zoo ain't turned down no fights. Everybody talking about they can't find no fights. Call out Tim Zoo. Yeah. Call out Tim Zoo. Who Tim Zoo ducking? Yeah. Okay. Like I said. Like I said. Crawford talking about Canelo and y'all talking about Boots. Boots, tell Boots to jump out, jump up. We gonna see, man. I don't know if y'all know it. We gonna see. We gonna see. We gonna see. Bro, get off the drugs, bro. Get off the drugs. We gonna see. We gonna see. We gonna see. I don't care if Tim Zoo is at one one uh one seventy five. We gonna see. I don't care if Tim Zoo is at one seventy five. Nobody care about Canelo, bro. Everybody watching Mike Tyson versus uh Jake Paul. Canelo's not um. Canelo's competing with Jake Paul. That's how his career is going. Yeah, about that getting Canelo stuff. Who cares? Who cares? The Mexican fans wanted uh him to fight Crawford, not me. I can care less about Canelo. I haven't watched Canelo really in years as a uh, as a real supporter. Nah, it's been a long time. If the best fights you can give is Triple G, I can care less about Canelo. You can go over there and run over there and pay them eighty dollars for Canelo. Do that. I ain't answering no question like that. You come in here talking stupid. I'm using you as an example now. I'm about to make you fetch. Coming there and talking about uh boots. Tell boots to call out Tim Zoo. How about that? And if boots if boots crying and if he crying about seven pounds, he ain't the guy you talking about. If he if he and if he and if he crying about seven pounds, he's not that guy. I'm sorry to tell you. And I like boots. But the way you coming in here and coming at me, no, sir. I know. Nah. Tell boots to call out Tim Zoo. Do that. Talking about Bud. All right, let's just say Bud ain't that guy. What about Tim Zoo? Tim Zoo going to be around. Tim Zoo ain't 35, 36 years old like Terrence Crawford. Tim Zoo going to be around. He going to be around. Believe that. Believe that. Believe that. That's what y'all don't know. That's what y'all don't know. And I'm going to shut all that down real quick. Tim Zoo going to be around. He going to fight everybody. He on to Keith Thurman right now. So Tim Zoo, he found himself in the ring with Keith Thurman, but Boots didn't. Yeah, let's address that, homie. You don't know what you're talking about, dog. Yeah, whatever. Anybody but Boots for Bud. Anybody but Boots for Bud. What about Boots for Tim Zoo? I'm not worried about Bud and uh, Boots. What are you talking about? It's enough guys in boxing. I thought PVC ain't got no guys. Why we call, we just calling out guys who just fought on PVC? What about somebody else? I thought PVC don't got no fighters. Why we just calling out PVC guys? I thought PVC don't got no fighters. What's going on with that? Ain't nobody up. Match room or uh, top rank ain't got nobody for boots? Oh, okay. So match room and the zone, they ain't got nobody for boots? Oh, okay. Just Bud, right? Oh. No, I, I can care less about that fight. If that's the only fight that can get made right now, yeah, I'm not finna argue about boxing. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, like I was saying, though, um, using this guy as an example because it's very easy. He's pr basically the person I, I was basically talking about before he showed up. Bro, who cares? He's never beat a guy like Tim Zoo. Are you on are you on crack or are you on drugs? Like which one is it? You on all of them. <laughs> you on everything. You on a party pack. Dude's talking about. 
This dude was talking about boots. Boots for Bud. Man, people won't even mention boots with uh Tim Zoo. That's what kind of level boots is on. And I'm not disrespecting the boots, I just know. I ain't no way. What's up, Mexican uh boxing number one? Yeah, I, you think he gonna stop him? Uh, you think he gonna stop him? I was thinking about that today. You think he gonna stop him? You think he gonna stop him? Yeah, man. I, I was I was hoping so, man. I think he I think he can stop him, bro. But I don't know. I'm like. You know, Maxie Hill, bro, he be surviving. I'm like, I don't know, man. I, I I want him to go for the knockout, To honestly. I'm thinking about the knockout. I think I picked the knockout. I think I picked the decision. But I want to go knockout. I don't know who he's trying to fight. I thought he was trying to fight Lomachenko. They talking about Shakur Stevenson. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, he did. He did. I don't know if he can do the same thing George doing. I mean, I don't know if uh he gonna do. The, I don't know if George gonna do the same thing as uh you know. I think Maxie Hughes might pull uh not pull it off. I think he might get knocked out though. If he, I think he can get stopped, but Zapata man, he's. He goes to the body a lot, so I feel like he can break uh Maxi Hughes down. And that fight with George Cambosis, he was just kind of head hunting. I feel like with uh Zapata going to the body, he's gonna be able to slow Maxi Hughes down and go for that knockout at the end. I want to go for a knockout though. I haven't even looked at the uh the better odds. Uh, I think he can stop him. This would be for what the um the belt. They got Lomachenko fighting in a couple of weeks, so well, not a couple of weeks. I think it's in two months. That's kind of far away. I don't know. I don't know if it's paid to wait on the uh, winner of that fight. I don't know. He can't. I heard he. I heard he can't fight uh Shakur Stevenson last night though. That's the crazy part. I heard he can end up fighting Shakur Stevenson last night. If they made that fight happen, that'll be a good fight. Yeah, man, that's crazy. He do sitting out here talking about dudes ducking for Jerron Ennis. If that's the only guy, if if Terrence Crawford is the only guy Jerron Ennis can fight right now to prove himself, boxing at an all-time low. Boxing at an all-time low. You know what I'm saying? If that's what's really going on, Boston at an all-time low. That's how I feel, for real. I definitely feel like it's at an all-time low. He got talking about Terrence Crawford ducking. That's crazy to me. It wasn't no point to even fight Earl Spence. I knew that already. 
I mean, Earl Spence did beating Earl Spence meant nothing to the fans. It did. It's like, yeah, they beat he beat Earl Spence. So what? The way these guys do, man, it's crazy, bro. It really is. It really is. I already know what's going down though. Uh. But that's crazy how we just put pressure on guys. Ain't nobody making no fights in um in Boston. Yeah, that's crazy. And I like to run in this. I think he'll be, you know what I'm saying? I think everybody, I'm glad everybody started giving him credit. But I see as American fans, bro, they only try to gang up on one fighter. Like dudes over here, bro, they can't they can't support multiple fighters. They gotta be like one or nobody. That ain't that ain't true boxing fans. That's not a true boxing fan. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's crazy, man. That's crazy though. Terrence Crawford don't get no respect down here, man. These guys will say a guy like that ducking ASAP. Yeah, man, he ducking, you know, because I feel like he ain't did enough. I ain't gonna say he ain't doing enough. It get like that sometimes, I guess, man. I don't know how many times you got to prove yourself these days, but it looks like a lot. It's becoming a lot right now. But I don't know. I think it's a section of boxing fans, honestly, that like to say a guy's ducking at a certain point because... I think with the opponents that Canelo just had with Benavidez and Terrence Crawford, so everybody cool with Canelo not fighting Benavidez or Terrence Crawford. So for some reason, Canelo fighting Terrence Crawford or Benavidez, that's not a big fight. So he in the face of boxing then, man. We worried about Jerron Ennis versus Boots. Uh, Boots. No, uh, Jerron Ennis versus uh, Terrence Crawford. Canelo not the face of boxing, man. It just is what it is. If we ain't worried about the big fights that he ain't making, but we worried about Terrence Crawford, it sounds like people treating uh Terrence Crawford like he the face of boxing. A lot of people worried about what he what his next move is and why he ain't fighting this person. For some reason, that, my thing is this right here. Why do people wait until uh Terrence Crawford was 36 years old to start asking for big fights now? Why we got to wait until he's super old or getting older now to be like, hey, man, we want you to fight this guy. Should have asked him that a long time ago. It doesn't even make sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, man, nobody likes him.
nobody like these moves that people are making. And everybody worry about uh Terrence Crawford moves, but not they worry about Terrence Crawford moves, but not Mungie and all these other guys. It's a shame what's going on, man. Yeah, it's a, it's a shame what's going on right now. It is what it is, but it just shows right now we don't got a lot of stars in boxing right now. You know what I'm saying? We got a long way to go. And it's not really jumping like people think it is. You know what I'm saying? Boxing really not at that level right now. From what I'm seeing, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Hopefully, I'm wrong. But from what I'm seeing, it's not at that level right now. It's a lot of things going on right now in the boxing world. It's a lot of things going on. It's crazy. I don't really understand it. But one thing I don't like though, and I'm and I'm gonna be real about it. I ain't gonna I'm not like these other guys. I'm not gonna be nice about things. Uh for some reason, it's always people saying America fighters ducking. That's the biggest lie on earth. I don't know who's pushing that narrative that American fighters are ducking. And they don't fight it, fight people, but whoever's pushing that narrative, that's gonna end at my doorstep. I don't know if people know that, but all the undisputed fights that get made, American fight, fighters are the ones making them. And the big fights that don't get done, it's not because of guys like Terrence Crawford. So, like, people are acting like everybody's having an undisputed fight right now. Like, stop it. Bibble, Bibble and Bitter Bib haven't, haven't even fought each other yet. Still haven't had Usyk and Fury fight each other. But people ain't talking about them guys ducking every day. Like, people just want to be selective. You know what I'm saying? Like, the Spence fight, it wasn't a big deal, I guess, to people. That's what I'm saying. Like, people are making a big deal about guys like Spence, and then when you beat them, they act like, well, you know, we want to see Boots now. Well, the Spence, well, the Spence guy, he wasn't that big of a deal then. You should have told me about Boots earlier. The Spence guy you was telling me about, he just he, he ain't that he ain't that guy like you said. Now you telling me about the boots guy. All right. After boots, who else after that? Oh, you want me to fight Tim Zoo? Okay, after that, who else? I was trying to get Canelo. Oh, you want me to worry about boots and uh Tim Zoo now? So is Canelo the face of boxing or is Tim Zoo and uh Boots? So which which one I need to worry about? Because y'all all over the place. Last year was uh, Earl Spence. Now it's Tim Zhu and Boots. Don't worry about Canelo. You're too small for Crawford. I mean, you're too small for Charlo, but you're big enough for Canelo. Like, people are all, just all over the place right now. I already know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? But the name, only name people want to mention Boots with is – is Terrence, uh, Terrence Crawford. Nobody's saying, hey, Boots, what about Tim Zhu? Oh, Tim Zhu at 154. Oh, you worry about seven pounds? Oh, he ain't that guy then. Oh, he ain't that guy. The, guy. the guys I know that people that's that guy, they go up seven pounds. They don't worry about, oh, no, no, no seven pounds. Oh, no, you ain't trying to fight nobody then. Oh, no. You worry about seven pounds. No. I'm good. Yeah. Dude's talking about Boots versus Bud Crawford running. He just went up what? 
13 pounds, but people worrying about boots going up. Make that make sense. Then people say, oh, Tim Zoo ain't that guy. Uh, boots will stop him. Boots will stop Tim Zoo. Oh, let's see it. Come on. Oh, seven pounds too much. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Okay. I I heard a dude saying he okay. I ain't even gonna say that. I'm just confused on everything. But I try to explain to people last year. They gonna do this. They gonna try to say Earl Spence ain't that guy if he lose. They did all that barking. Dudes did all that barking over Earl Spence all these years. Now they're talking about boots. Man, I was looking at boots five, six, seven years ago. Boots almost 30 years old. Y'all just now find, find out uh, about boots? Come on, man. What's really going on in these streets? Boots? Just now? Y'all just now bringing him up when he was Earl Spence mandatory last year? Oh, you're an Earl Spence fan. That's why. Oh, okay. Okay. No, 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 Fonzo. They, no, it, it ain't even that. They was an Earl Spence fan when Boots was Earl Spence mandatory last year. But, you know, when Crawford became the champion and then he got the belt, you know, that's when the ducking started, when Crawford got the belt. You know what I'm saying? When Boots had the belt and he called out Spence, when he said, I want the big fish, you know what I'm saying? But because Boots the one who actually made that famous because Boots was actually the first one who said that to Spence at a fight. You know, because I'm such a big Spence fan and people don't know that. But uh yeah, Spence was the uh Boots was the first one that said that to Spence in a, in, actually in a match after a fight. I think it was after the Clayton fight. And then they interviewed Spence, and Spence said, You gotta be careful what you uh reel in or something like that. Yeah, he was talking uh, to Boots then. Boots was the mandatory then. That might have been, what, two or three years ago. But you know, when Crawford get the belt, he ducking now. You know what I'm saying? But when I when I say something about, hey, what about Boots fighting Tim Zhu? Oh, no, nah, no, nah, that's seven pounds, seven pounds. Oh, he ain't that guy then. We complaining about seven pounds, he ain't that guy. Not that guy. Seven pounds, he ain't that guy. He's not that guy, seven pounds. Nuh-uh. Crawford going up 13 pounds. Crawford going up 13 pounds, and we crying about seven pounds? Come on now. I'm not that good at math. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got all them degrees like everybody else. You know what I'm saying? But last time I checked, 13 higher than seven. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's about double, ain't it? Almost. Yeah, dude's talking about Crawford ducking boots. How? You know what I'm saying? Like, when did Crawford ever? And my thing is this right here. This is how I know dudes really be running running around with narratives. Uh, if I if any other boxer had boots uh, resume right now, they not getting no fight with no Terrence Crawford or nobody like that elite. They not getting no big fight with no resume like Boots got right now. I don't care who you are. And that's facts. And everybody know that. This one dude talking about some Vila top five. Who cares? What are you talking about? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's narrative. They pushing it hard too, QT. I'm like, dang, bro, can we stick to boxing? I like all these guys, but I ain't finna pick a side and be like, yeah, this is what I'm staying at. Nah, homie, we ain't finna do that. Nah, this, nah. If it makes sense, then you can explain it like, okay, Boots and Terrence Crawford's in a different generation, so we need to see. What's going on, Queen? What's going on with you? Shout out to the Queen. What's going on with you? That's what I'm saying. If people were really saying, QT, if people were just saying, yeah, man, you know, and Boots like, yeah, shout out to the queen, though, know, checking in, man. She always checking in. This is the second day she's been in here. But, yeah, if everybody was sitting up here saying, you know, oh, I feel like Boots at this level right now, boom, boom, boom. But I knew that they weren't saying that, though, because he was a mandatory for Spence last year. And me personally, I felt like that was a better matchup. Me personally. 
I was like, yeah, that's a better matchup between him and Spence. Because, you know, Crawford a little more faster, a little more technical. Yeah, money got to be right. It definitely got to be right. I think PVC doing the right thing, though. What people don't realize, though, is Boots, um, PVC was trying to line up Boots with um, Tim Zhu. They were trying to give uh, Boots the Tim Zhu fight instead of uh, instead of Terrence Crawford. That's why they had went with uh, Keith Thurman. Because they already had made the plan, like, yeah, we're going to go with Boots. But then when they had that fight with uh, Mario Barrios on March 30th, they was going to have Boots on there with Barrios. And they was going to have, I guess, it was going to be Danny Garcia and uh, Tim Zhu. You know, PBC ain't going to let nobody else get that fight. Because if they don't have that fight, if they don't have the Jerron Ennis and Tim Zhu fight on their um, platform, somebody else going to have it one day. They both around the same age, same size. See, people ain't even thinking about that fight. They think about, yeah, Terrence Crawford. Yeah, Terrence Crawford, if he fight Boots or not, Tim Zoo's still going to be around. He's still knocking everybody out. Tim Zoo fighting everybody. It ain't going to be a Charlo or nobody around when Tim Zoo get through with everybody. Oh, yeah, Keith got a chance. He definitely got a chance. Even um, Tim Zoo know that. Keith got a right hand. You know what I'm saying? Tim Zhu ain't really been in the ring with a dude who could throw with a right hand like that, who could throw on the move. You know, Tim Zhu can move still. Oh, yeah, I definitely got Tim Zhu. I definitely got Tim Zhu. The way he was punching uh, that last fight, he ain't, he ain't stopping, but man, that dude took a beating in that fight. For real. Yeah, Tim Zhu throwing some blows, so I definitely got him. Yeah, that layoff gonna hurt him, bro. I don't care what he say. This ain't this ain't like the Mario Barrios fight. That layoff gonna hurt him. That layoff gonna hurt him so bad. Nah, Jamel. Uh, dang, I dropped the I dropped the video like two weeks ago. Nah, Jamel Charlo was looking at um. Berlanga. He's trying to fight Berlanga, but I don't know what's going on. I got a video I'm going to drop later on about that. Appreciate that, QT. I forgot about that. I got to remember that. I got a video coming out Berlanga uh, later on. But yeah, Berlanga was trying to uh, fight uh, Jamel Charlo before he fight um, Canelo. But I don't think Charlo ready, though, because Berlanga said he called him. He called him out at this fight, what, two weeks ago when Berlanga fought? But I don't know if he's ready right now. That's what I that's what I was saying about Munguia. Like, dudes don't be fighting after they uh get in the ring with Canelo. If Munguia get in the ring with Cane uh right after the Canelo fight, he gonna be one of the first dudes. I mean, John Ryder did it, but he just retired. I mean, nobody get in the ring after they fight Canelo. I ain't saying he just that bad, but I just don't know what's going on, dudes. Charlo get in there, Billy Joe Saunders. I'm talking about anybody y'all can think of, bro. They ain't getting in the ring no more. I don't know what's going on. Canelo get dudes in the ring. Everybody like, yeah. Even me, I'm saying, yeah, Canelo ain't getting knockouts. Yeah, he ain't getting knockouts, but dudes ain't getting in there no more. They ain't getting no rematches. Even Triple G called it quits after that last fight. So I don't know what's going on. I'm 12 rounds hard. That's what I'm trying to tell my gear, Like, yeah, I'm getting a chance. Yeah, but. You like one of the youngest dudes Canelo had recently, dog. So you really risking it all right now. Yeah, exactly. Like Alfonso, he he don't know what's going on right now. He thinking he just gonna have a little sparring match. Nah, Canelo is not finna look crazy now with you. You a young guy too? Nah. But yeah, that Keith Thurman and uh, Tim Zoo fight gonna be so good. I think that layoff is gonna hurt him though. That layoff definitely gonna hurt him. He been doing a lot of. He said he tried to fight last year. I don't know what's going on. He said he was trying to fight last year a couple of times. I guess Amazon Prime, PBC tried to make that move, so they had to hold up a couple of these fights. But uh. 
I don't know. I guess they say this fight for Amazon Prime instead of having him fight on uh, Showtime. Yeah, that's crap. I ain't gonna lie, man. If my gear, if he fight, if he beat Canelo and get the 50 and 0, that'll be crazy because Canelo do not want him to get the 50 and 0. I don't know if he gonna get. <laughs> hey, Munguia was trying to fight Benavidez though. I keep saying that. Hey, Munguia was trying to fight Benavidez. If he wouldn't have fought Canelo, he was gonna fight Benavidez. That's the only reason I'm laying off on. Him. I be get, I be put, man, I be getting, man, I be putting pressure on Munguia. He tried to fight uh, Benavidez twice though. So I had to lay off on him like, nah, I ain't going to put no pressure on him. Canelo making it happen. He like, yeah, I'm going to get my gear. I'll let these other dudes wait. He going to get that 50-0 out of the way. He don't want Benavidez to be the one to uh, stop that winning streak. So he said, I'm going to stop it. Yeah, I know. If he get, hey, if he get that 50-0, it's, hey, it's a chance. It's definitely a chance. It's definitely a chance. It's definitely a chance. Them dudes over there knocking everybody uh 50 and those off. I forgot who the other person they just stopped from getting that. I forgot who they just stopped. I can't even remember now. But yeah, they they definitely looking at this like yeah, Floyd Floyd Ryan with this, he okay with this. That's why Floyd. Hey, if you notice, that's why Floyd okay with the uh, Munguia versus Canelo fight. He like yeah, man, quit bothering Canelo. Let him knock this fifty and no off Munguia. Floyd looking like I don't even know why Oscar even let Munguia get that close. He crazy. Yeah, he was almost there, but they that wasn't finna go down. You know, Wilder don't do tune ups anyway. He was already risking it. I'm like, hey, man, you don't do tune ups? Yeah, that old finna probably go away. You tripping. Oh, yeah, Zordo. Oh, that's who it was. QT, no. I appreciate that, QT. That's who it was, QT. That's who it was, QT. That's exactly who it was. Mm, QT said it right on the nose. Against Bivol, too. When Zordo lost to uh, Bivol, Oscar was like, yeah, you can stay down. I think Zordo lost like 50 pounds trying to fight Bivol. He lost like 50 pounds. Yeah, that's the last person they did like that. Yeah, he was close to 50 and 0. Yeah, Mungie got a lot of pressure on him. He don't understand that 50 and 0 was uh, a lot of them legends. They don't like that. He a little better right now. He a little better. He a little better right now. He did better in his last fight against uh, that Joe Smith fight. He had cruiserweight right now, though. So we're going to see. He got a chance to uh, redeem himself right now. Yeah, I heard that, too. Yeah, I know he's fighting again. I just don't know who he's going to fight. I honestly don't know who anybody going to fight. I don't know if Anthony Joshua going to fight Hergovic. I don't know what's going on. I just know the fights they're announcing right now. That's about it. I don't know who's going to be on Anthony, uh, not Anthony Joshua, but Tyson Fury undercard. I don't know who his, his undercard going to be. I don't know what uh, Canelo and Munguia undercard going to be. They got the press conference coming up in uh, five days. <laughs> nah, he, nah, he just know. He just know. He just know. Nah, Fury start. He still like watching, uh, watching the fights. He just know it's probably on his undercard. It might be on his undercard. That's why. 
That's why. It's probably on this undercard. It's probably on this undercard. I'm thinking about that now. Yeah, that's in May. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, yeah, they're going to be good friends. Yeah, that was a good trilogy. That's why I was saying, man, I was hoping that uh, Triple G would have got a couple of knockdowns. That, that uh, trilogy with him and Canelo would have been a little better. Yeah, they're definitely going to be friends, probably. Yeah, it's crazy, though, what they got going on in Boston right now. I'm telling you, people don't know the fights that they're trying to set up right now. Right now, everybody's trying to, uh, these networks trying to say the big fights for their own network. That's kind of a good thing, though. Wow, I didn't know that. I didn't even know that. That's crazy. Wow, did anybody else know that? I ain't know uh, Bo Matt fought Butterbean. Hey, shout out to my dog Aaron, man. What's going on, Aaron? Shout out to my dog Aaron in the building. I didn't know Bo Matt, uh, I ain't know Bo Matt fought Butter Butterbean. That's crazy. I got to see that. Hey, Butterbean has some power, though. Yeah, man, he took too long on that. Then talking about he wasn't gonna take the, he wasn't gonna have a fight. Then ended up uh having a fight. I'm like, man, you had to fight after make uh make us wait. And that fight was what two years ago? A year and a half ago? That was a bad fight, man. Everybody don't realize that that last fight was bad. Yeah, him. <laughs> hey, that's fat self fuzzo. Hey, he don't want. He don't want no problems right now. He do not want no problems. He do not want no problems with uh with Anthony Joshua right now. Anthony Joshua starting to throw them blows. It's definitely becoming a problem now. What's going on, Aaron? Yeah, that's my dog, man. I ain't seen him in the chat in a minute, man. What's going on? I know you was in here yesterday. Yeah, Bowman need a trainer too, man. I'm like, man, come on, dog. Hey, he been training like I don't know what lately. I ain't gonna lie though. I seen him cooking though. Bro, a good chef. That's why he's so big, man. He a good chef, man. He can really cook for real. But no, nah, I was uh my I was I was I was sitting around the whole topic the whole day. That's crazy. He fought Butterbean. I gotta look that up. Yeah, he can definitely cook. I seen that. Hey, he can cook for real, for real. Like a chef. But uh I don't know what's going on in Boston right now. I feel like uh since everybody in here right now, I feel like right now, uh well, I was gonna drop something later on, but I'll tell y'all now since y'all in here. But I feel like uh Terrence Crawford took that uh Eubanks fight because he don't wanna uh be locked in with like a two fight deal right now with PBC, probably like a three fight deal, unless it's like a guaranteed fight. Because the only reason I see him fighting um uh, Eubanks is because um that's a deal he can kind of get out of, or like let's just say Canelo turn around and be like, hey, I want to fight Crawford, and then Crawford be like, man, I can get out of this fight with Eubanks real quick, and still be able to you know what i'm saying so i feel like he's just making something that's gonna be easy to make it's not really a duck move because to be honest with you i ain't think he was gonna fight no more i thought he was gonna be done i ain't know zad was a good uh was a good cook
Oh, dang. I ain't know that, Aaron. You should live next to Bomat for years. That's crazy. That's crazy. Hey, that's pretty crazy. I think when I had first started uh watching uh Terrence Crawford, um uh, this was like years ago. This was this was a while ago. But uh Bomac came on the internet, he he helped uh he did like one of the first podcasts for like everybody on um YouTube who was like starting their channel and stuff. So Bomac, he definitely be uh he be helping people out for real. Yeah, he a real cool dude. That's crazy. Yeah, Bomac a real cool dude. He got everybody training with him now. I don't know how you gonna train Crawford and Eubanks at the same time. I guess they're gonna have some kind of sparring match or something. Yeah, man. I think I think Terrence Crawford, yeah, uh Fonz, I think Terrence Crawford, uh he leaving himself open for something else. I think right now he kind of satisfied, like, if he can't get Canelo, he's just going to get a name like uh, Eubanks. You know, Eubanks got, a, I guess, like a famous dad or whatever. I don't know if that's a, a Saudi Arabia fight. Maybe that's a fight he was thinking that he can get in Saudi Arabia. I have no idea when the fight is supposed to even happen, to be honest with you. So it might just be a Saudi Arabia fight. That might be the reason why it's even put together. I know it's an easy fight to put together, though, for him. Dang, that's crazy. I ain't even know that. That's news to me. Wow. Yeah, I had I had just knew recently that uh Butterbean was uh was uh managed by Aaron. I ain't know that back in the day. Yeah. I don't know, man, I don't know what people were talking about last year. Man, I got so much. Man, they ran me out the building for saying this. I was like, yeah, I like Bo Mac as a trainer. Oh, he ain't trained nobody but Terrence Crawford. He ain't did. I'm like, man, that's crazy. I can't believe they said that to me, man. They just said Derrick James just because he had Charlo. Oh, Spence over there. They weren't doing nothing different from fight to fight. And then right after the uh, Terrence Crawford fight, everybody told us, so, yeah, man. Uh... Spence, he, I don't know what's wrong with him. It wasn't nothing. He just went, he didn't add nothing to his game over time. You know, Terrence Crawford just a little more technical. That's all it was. I think if Spence would have had to fight a little more early, he probably had more of a chance, to be honest with you. Zab, I don't know. It depends what kind of Zab. It depends what kind of Zab. Zab at 140, possibly. You know what I'm saying? To be 1,000. To be unbiased. I like Crawford. I think Crawford won't lose nobody, but Zab at 140. Like I said, told somebody the other day, Crawford at 135 would probably beat uh Floyd Mayweather. But at 147, I think Floyd Mayweather probably get him. You know what I'm saying? At 147. Just because I seen a couple of things in the Benavidez fight, so I'm kind of like, ah, Floyd would have did something a little different. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of got Floyd at 47, but at 35, I think Crawford was a dog. When Crawford had those dreads and stuff, bro, he was an animal. I don't think he gonna do it. If he wanted to, he could have. He could have Crawford. Be, he could fight five times a year. You know what I'm saying? He already sparring all these guys, but I know he. Ain't, he ain't really focus on that. He's a, he a laid back dude. He don't really care about none of that. People starting to realize how he is now, though. They starting to realize he really about that life, though. I just realized they said he got he took a bullet to the head, whatever. I ain't know none of that. I knew he was about that life all these years, though. I ain't got it. Hey, I I knew that. They starting to know that now. I guess a Earl Spence fight he can do a lot for you. But yeah, I've been new here about that life. That's why I'm hearing about this. This boot stuff, I'm like, hold on now, come on, bro. Like in America, bro, we don't America, bro, we don't duck nobody in America. We the only ones that have been putting the undisputed fights together. Then you got American fans sitting around here like, yeah, bro, ducking. Like, bro, we don't duck nobody in America. The best fighter on anyway record right now is an American. 
But you'll have Americans talking about Americans be ducking. Bro, get off, man, get out, get off all man, come on. Like, come on, dog. Y'all don't what boxing y'all watching? You know what I'm saying? They couldn't talk to no UFC guys like that. Them MMA guys would be like, what is this guy talking about? Ducking, what is that? They talking about American fighters be ducking each other. Come on, man. We the only ones fighting each other. We got dudes over here who brothers talking about they want to fight each other. But you'll have fans talking about, yeah, man, this dude ducking. He don't want millions of dollars. I don't understand that. That Boots conversation ain't going to get far with me, bro, because I'm already a Boots fan. But the way I'm going to talk to you, you're going to think I don't like Boots. And that's the whole setup. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, Mayweather be mad as I don't know what if uh, Terrence Crawford got there. I ain't know, bro, to be honest with you, I've been watching Floyd for years. I ain't know Floyd trip about that 50 and 0 like that. But uh, I don't know if y'all seen that video I dropped about Canelo, but go check that out. Canelo don't play about that 50 and 0 either. Well, I, I told y'all that last night, too, so I heard, a lot of y'all heard that. But Canelo don't play about that 50 and 0 either. Munguia taking shots at Benavidez, like, yeah, he Canelo picked me. Like, he picked you for a reason, bro. Like, you out of there. He trying to get that 50 and 0 done. He did not want that walking around. Not in Mexico. How y'all think Canelo going to look if Munguia get the 50 and 0 and Canelo still active, having big fights and stuff? He said he going to fight for five more years, right? So that means Munguia going to get the uh, 50 and 0 before them five years up. Yeah, Canelo like, nah, we ain't finna make that happen. That's why Canelo told him. He was like, I'm Canelo, uh, Munguia said, I want to fight John Ryder. Canelo was like, nah, never mind. You shouldn't fight John Ryder. He want him to fight John Ryder so he can see how good Munguia is. But then he changed his mind because he wanted to have a long layoff. That dude a psycho, man. He up there with Floyd Mayweather. He do the same stuff. Might be worse. I think that's a wrap. I think the only thing we can hope on right now is Benavidez catching Bivol. Now, now the setup is going to be if Benavidez fight Bivol, right? Because if Benavidez beat Bivol, hey, Canelo can't say nothing. Like, who cares if uh, Benavidez ain't fight uh, Canelo? He fought Bivol, and he beat him. That's all we're going to be talking about. That's what people don't realize. So who cares about Canelo? He's done. If you don't fight uh, Benavidez, people don't care no more. I'm being real. A lot of Mexicans ain't rolling with that. They jumping off the ship ASAP. The Mexicans ain't rolling with uh the Munguia fight. They definitely. What's going on, Go Good? Yeah, shout out my dog, Go Good. Yeah, they ain't, they're not rolling with that Munguia uh, versus Canelo fight. It's good and everything, but... A lot of Mexicans talking about Mike, uh, Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul right now. And that's no lie. You got Mexicans like, yeah, you know, I want to see that Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul fight. Think I'm lying, go ask them. Ask them right now. They talking about uh, Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. Because you know why? Mexican, Mexicans know Mike Tyson put on the big fights. They know Mike Tyson put on the big fights, and this is f facts. I'm not lying. They know Mike Tyson put on a bigger fight than Canelo. Mike Tyson just did 1.6. And everybody uh, bragging about Canelo point, what, point six? 1.6? Come on, man. You can't do nothing with no point six. Everybody know that. What's going on, brain food? Yeah, I thought, hey, Benavidez, he's just American right now. Right now, he's just going to have to be American. I mean, Me Mexicans like, I'm talking about over here in America. They just, they like Benavidez, full American in America. But in Mexico, they, shoot, they treat him like his own. But they definitely not rolling with that, though. Canelo, he got he to gotta make some moves right now. Yeah, hey. Technically, Munguia American. You know, Mexico still in South America. I mean, uh, North America. So if if Munguia is in um 
Japan or somewhere, they're going to call them American. They ain't going to say Mexican. You know what I'm saying? Technically, you know what I'm saying? Asian, European, African. They're going to call Munguia an American, technically. So when uh, Canelo's like, yeah, I'm fighting an American next. I knew what he was doing, bro. Canelo always playing these little games. But my thing is this right here, though. This is the worst part about it, man. Canelo doing the same thing Tank doing. So if I, so when I say something about Canelo, I got to say the same thing about Tank. But guys would be like, man, you ain't saying that about Tank. I'm like, bro, I'm saying that about Canelo and Tank. You just ain't watching the Tank videos. Yeah, shout out. What's up, Go Good? Yeah, that's facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't understand that, though. What's going on, Quattro? Yeah, man, they don't understand that Canelo putting pressure on guys. But it's good, though. I'm not going to lie. It's actually good because he's giving the young guys a chance to actually get in the ring. You know, it could be worse. He could be fighting an old guy right now who's about 38, 39. He could say, you know what, I ain't fighting Benavidez. He could do like Triple G did. He could fight Murata or somebody like that. It could be worse. But, you know, the fans, you know, the Mexican fans, they putting pressure on them right now. They want to see Benavidez. They kind of know. They smarter than everybody else. They kind of know Canelo last prime year is probably this year. They know next year ain't going to be no move. Next year is not going to make it happen. Yeah, I heard he just signed with somebody today. I think it was uh, Bob Aaron. He just signed with somebody today. I don't know who it was. It might have been Golden Boy. I forgot who he just signed with. He signed with somebody today. You might be right. I don't know. It might be either him or um or um Golden Boy. He just signed with somebody today, though. You must have heard something. Because I heard his name today. I think it's with Golden Boy or somebody like that. I don't know who he'll get in the ring with. Oh, shout out to Go Good, man, for coming a member uh, on the channel. Appreciate that, Go Good. Oh, Don King. Quattro, no. Don King. Don King. Quattro, no. Shout out to Go Good for coming a member on the channel, man. Him and uh, Brain Food checking in. Yeah, shout out to Go Good, man. Definitely a huge supporter. But yeah, um, it's Don King, man. Yeah, a lot of people signing with Don King for some reason. I don't know why. He signed with Don King, uh, Adrian Bronner. It's like lower level guys, but it's like lower level guys. Oh yeah, go good. No, he man, go good. No, they family. Yeah, uh, it's like lower level guys. Hey, I'm gonna drop a video tonight on the uh for our members too, man. It gonna y'all gonna like it, bro. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a good video, bro. It's gonna be good. Uh, but yeah, um, Don King, man, he uh. He a beast, man. Like, he's still doing it right now. He got some guys, you know what I'm saying, he can step out with. He can kind of make some fights with, so. Oh, yeah, appreciate that, man. I mean a lot, for real, man. Shout out to all y'all, man. Quattro, Queen, uh, Fonzo, Aaron, QT. Shout out to everybody, man. Go good, brain food. Yeah, shout out to all y'all for the support, man, for real. We just put we just talking about real news, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what's crazy? He got a he got a few fighters fast though. I'm not gonna lie. He got a couple of guys real fast. I mean, the only way he can't Dun King can actually do something if he if he was to get like a guy like Jerron Ennis right now, he'll make a move. But I don't think uh PBC gonna do it. Oh no, you good, you good. We we ain't really been talking about nothing. You can ask everybody. We ain't been talking about nothing. I was talking about, uh, I had to cook somebody earlier. They was talking about Terrence Crawford. You know what I'm saying? They said Terrence Crawford ducking. And I don't want to be like everybody else where I just be like uh, pro-American all the time. But, you know, Americans don't really duck nobody, bro. To say an American duck somebody, that's saying a lot. Or say a Mexican fighter is ducking somebody. That's why it's kind of funny everybody looking at Canelo like, bro, what you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't really do that over here. I don't know what you got going on, man. You by yourself on this one, like. But, you know, everybody like Munguia, but they like, come on, man. Like, what? 
That's why Mike Tyson's still that guy. He fight anybody. He ain't gotta win every fight. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. That's what I'm saying, though. People don't understand that. Like, I'm gonna tell y'all a good example, though. If Mike Tyson is he, Mike Tyson is not a bad. I'm gonna tell you tell y'all why Mike Tyson not a bad guy. If Mike Tyson was really a bad guy, he'll be out here making these pay per views every week, like everybody else doing. You know what I'm saying? Like people don't realize Mike Tyson sold 1.6 on his last pay per view. 1.6. His last pay-per-view. They talking about, yeah, Jake Paul, Mike Tyson could have been making these little fights that everybody doing. He probably just mad because he's seeing these guys not taking big fights. And he's like, y'all fighting MMA fighters. I would never fight an MMA fighter. Never have, never will. He's like, but Jake Paul? No, nah, I'm finna take this fight. Y'all getting all this free money. So that's why he's looking at it like that. Yeah, they're ducking, man. It's too much ducking going on. It's too much ducking going on. Do I think Tank duck, duck and Loma? Absolutely. And I'm the biggest Tank fan you'll ever find in your life. I've been watching Tank 10 years. Tank duck and Loma. Absolutely. Absolutely, Tank uh, duck and Loma. Absolutely. You know why Tank duck and Loma? Because Loma going to make you look crazy regardless. That's why I'm surprised why people were saying, um, and this is unbiased. You know, I done made a lot of videos talking about Tia Fimo, good and bad. You know, it's a lot of bad, but Tia Fimo was actually doing a good job in that Loma fight, but, you know, Loma did a good job in that fight. Everybody acting like Loma just got, bro, I haven't seen a fight when Loma just got whooped. You know what I'm saying? I don't know where everybody pushing this narrative. Well, Loma just got whooped in the fight. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why everybody pushing that narrative, but I'm tired of hearing that. Loma just got whooped in a fight by who? Who and when? And when is Tank going to do that? And Shakur Stevenson. Come on now. Loma finna take take over that 135. Loma ain't ducking nobody for real right now. And I'm not a super Loma fan like that. But I'm just telling y'all. Loma ain't ducking nobody like that. Yeah, it's definitely business. It's definitely business. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they know that. They know that. But I'm going to tell you why, though. Go good. Hey, go good. That's facts. Everything y'all talking about, facts. I agree with everything y'all saying. But what I'm saying is, oh yeah, yeah, especially unbiased. Oh yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of unbiased Tank fans around here. People will call you a hater, but no, nah, you. Know, it's a lot of us unbiased around here. It's definitely a lot of us out of here unbiased. But I'm saying, but I'm saying, as far as everything, as far as in the boxing game right now is, I wouldn't say so far as dudes are just openly ducking like Tank won't get in the ring with Loma. But but the example I've used recently. Because I can back up when I say a guy's not taking a fight. I'm not going to just say that and mess up anybody like Tank name like that. I'm saying that because Tank, Tank asked them to make that Frank Martin fight. You know what I'm saying? Tank ain't just spar Frank Martin and all of a sudden he just uh, fighting Frank, Frank Martin now. Oh, that sparring match he had, Tank was like, hey, that guy I sparred, who me and him was going back and forth and everybody think I had a hard time with? Yeah, make that fight. ASAP. Floyd, like, nah, we ain't trying to look at no Frank Martin right now. Bro, make that Frank Martin fight now, or I'm not finna fight for nobody. Period. Make the fight Frank Martin fight. Ain't nobody asked uh Tank to fight Frank Martin over there. They would have been, they was looking at William Zapata. They was looking at Zepeda. They looked at Tiafimo Lopez and William Zapata. Those were the first two fights they looked at before Frank Martin. Let me ask anybody a question. What does Williams Zapata and uh, TFM Lopez got in common? They both what? Latino and Hispanic, right? Exactly. That's it. Frank Martin was the third option. He was the third option. But Tank kept thinking about it, man. These guys still talking about this farm, man. You got to think about it. Devin Haney is the guy that uh, Tank Davis far, right? And Frank Martin's the guy that Devin Haney meant that um, Tank Davis for. So he's he for Frank Martin and uh, Devin Haney. But notice they filmed both of those guys' sparring matches. They filmed the Devin Haney match and they filmed the Frank Martin match. If you got a fight with Frank Martin out uh, coming up, why you don't put a, a minute clip of you beating up Frank Martin?
Yeah, that's facts. What's up, Mr. Lemon? Why you don't just put a minute a minute clip out of you uh beating Frank Martin up and then everybody can see like, oh, oh, that's what he did to Frank Martin? Okay, I want to see that fight. That's free promotion. That makes no sense not to put that out. If anybody deny that, they just, they don't want to tell the truth about it. Oh yeah, that Jake Paul definitely on that on that juice. He definitely is. He definitely is. If you look at how Jake Paul was in his first fight to now, Jake Paul's calf muscles got big. You know what I'm saying? He has calf muscles like Manny Pacquiao right now. And he's a taller guy. We're not talking about a short guy with uh big calf muscles. We're talking about a tall guy. And that's the thing that gave it away to me. He wasn't nothing else. I'm like, dude, dude's calf muscles is huge right now. Yeah, he definitely in there on that. But like Tyson Fury, like Tyson Fury said, everybody do it. You know what I'm saying? We seen Canelo get caught doing something. It wasn't particularly Roy, but at the same time, though, it's like, come on now. That's just what he got caught with. We don't know what else. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. It happens sometimes. It happens to the best. Roy Jones, all these guys, you know, it's different stuff that people take. They ban stuff every day, too. So we got to put that in mind, too. They ban stuff every day. I think Rigo was still good. I think Rigo was still good. Loma was just able to make those. He was fighting those smaller guys. He was fighting those smaller guys. It wasn't enough, you know what I'm saying, in your legacy. But, you know, Loma fighting the, the guys his size right now. He did fight Gary Russell and those guys back then, but. But I think uh I think I think uh, Rodrigo he he decent still. He took another he be uh no Nito. He definitely be uh no Nito down there. That's a good fight. It depends on who it is and, and it depends on who it is. Some of the time they don't let these guys retire. They asking Billy Joe Saunders to come back. Sometimes the, the game the uh the promoters in the game they don't know how to retire these fighters. They asked some of these guys to come back. I heard uh, Gabe Rosado was going to retire. Then the other day, it looked like he going to fight again. I'm like, man, what's going on, man? So I don't really know. It's kind of all over the place. I think that Saudi money kind of got everybody, like, trying to take one more swing at it. You know, it's not crazy. You know what I'm saying? They seen everybody in Saudi is not a big name who's been fighting. Everybody's not a superstar who's been fighting. So guys – I don't know. Nick Ball was over there, so guys trying to find their way over there now. They're like, hold on. So that's really what's going on. Because, you know, Kel Brook, Kovalev. Kovalev supposed to fight on um, Tyson Fury undercard with him and Usy. He was going to fight in February on Saudi, in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, you'll see him. He got a fight already put together. I forgot the guy's name. Oh, no, no, no. Mexican fans ain't rolling with Canelo right now. Not right now. No, sir. No, I thought they did. In, in America, yeah. In America, they think that. In America. But in Mexico, no. Nah, they're not going for that. No, uh not right now. Not right now. They all over Canelo. It's, it's crazy. The way they looking at Canelo right now, it's... Canelo got to step it up, man. We don't really have to say nothing in America right now. I mean, last time I checked, Canelo, he trying to, I heard Canelo trying to fix his house up over here and stuff. I guess he don't want to be over there at home in Mexico no more. He trying to fix his house up. I said, his house where? Oh, in America. Oh, okay. He don't want, nah. You think them guys going to let him go to the grocery store? And they ask him about monkey and stuff? Nah. Yeah, he is. But, you know, naturally, if I had to break it down, I wouldn't say Canelo's cherry picking. But what I will say is how I broke it down before. Like, um, Canelo, to me, his natural walking around weight right now is what he's fighting at. You know what I'm saying? I feel like the whole time he's been fighting was at 168. That's why I think a lot of the PED things – 
and a lot of that stuff came into all allegedly. But I think that's why all that stuff kind of came in from. So he kind of he's kind of mixed in between all that right now. I think the PEDs kind of messed him up a little bit. Because he, he's taking big fights and stuff like that, but at the same time, he's like, no Benavidez? Uh, I don't know if we can roll with that, dog. And then another thing, too, my thing ain't so much about Canelo not taking the Benavidez fight. It's so much about him stopping Crawford from fighting Charlo because Canelo ended up fighting Charlo. Then Benavidez could have fought I mean, then, yeah, Benavidez could have fought Canelo, but Canelo's fighting Charlo. And then Munguia was going to fight Benavidez. And then Canelo stopped that fight, too. So he's stopping a lot of fights right now. He ain't really helping boxing. He's hurting boxing right now. Right now, Canelo is destroying boxing. That's a lot of stuff that people don't know right now. The fights that people are asking about, like Boots versus uh, Crawford, Canelo didn't stop bigger fights than that right now. And people don't even know that. Yeah, that would have been a good fight. I ain't know Sean Porter was going to retire that fast. I was like, ah, I ain't know he was going to hang it up that fast. But, you know, fighting people like Crawford and stuff, you know, it add up after a while. And he already see how the game is. You know, Sean Porter, he a guy who probably deserved to be in a fight like Saudi Arabia, but people would be like, he ain't good enough, so you know he probably just hung it up. You know what I'm saying? People don't like fighting on the B side all the time. It kind of, it kind of gets to. Oh, so go good. Appreciate that, vid dog. Yeah, I'm still hanging in there. But people don't like fighting on the B side all the time. It add up after a while. People kind of expect you to lose every, every time. You kind of the underdog, even though you can you can decide when you're gonna win, but. You know what I'm saying? Sean, Sean Porter, you know, he got a hard resume. Having a tough resume sometimes, you're going to end up with some losses sometimes. But Sean Porter was a dog, though. I told people he, he wasn't going to get knocked out by uh, – you think Stanley Owens? I don't know who Stanley Owens is going to fight next. I have no idea who he's going to fight next. He, wanna, he, he need to fight bad, man. He ain't fought in, what, two or three years? He need to fight bad. I don't know. I thought they would have had somebody like him and Cody Crawley fight. But they talking about Cody Crawley versus Jerron Ennis now. And Jerron Ennis was going to fight Barrio. So he sanctioned everybody messing up the game right now. Oh, he already at 54. And he called him out. Yeah, he called him out at 54 already. That's why I was saying about Jerome Ennis. I'm like, man, hold on, man. So we got Virgil Ortiz. So let me tell, let me, so let me ask everybody out there. I'm glad you said that. But Virgil Ortiz called him out after his last fight. But so everybody gonna have Virgil Ortiz and Tim Zoo fighting each other at 54. And we we ain't gonna say nothing about Jerome Ennis fighting Virgil Ortiz or Tim Zoo if they win the fight. Let's go. It ain't gonna be a long time before people start comparing those two. So they might well just start now. They're around the same age. They're going to be close to the same weight all these years. It's going to be a Triple G and Canelo situation. They're going to be around the same weight. That's a fight people got to expect right there. But, yeah, he said he's going to move up. In, um, he already moved up at 54. That last fight was at 54. He want to fight Tim Zoo. Yeah, Tim Zoo a beast, man. He is definitely a beast. That's what people don't realize. Tim Zoo, the guy who kind of, you know what I'm saying? If I was a boxer right now, I'd be kind of scared of Tim Zoo right now. You know, he's trying to fight everybody. He'll fight 54, I mean, 47, 54, 60. He's the most active guy right now. If it was a, bo a boxer, y'all to pay y'all money to see right now. It got to be Tim Zoo. He having the biggest fights right now. As far as like the hardest competition.
Oh, no, nah, boosting Virgil Ortiz, some big guys, man. Especially Virgil Ortiz. He a big dude. He's still growing. Yeah, Zua, at the fighter, man. Zua ain't really playing. He really active. Zua is really, really active. And yeah, Virgil Ortiz ain't been active too, uh, Queen. Virgil Ortiz ain't been active. He ain't been active at all. He only had one round his last fight. What, two rounds? That was bad. They can't be doing that. They should let that fight kind of go on or something. He gonna fight again uh, a month and a half, I guess, what, six weeks? But he should have got some more rounds in. He ain't fought in, what, two or three years? That's why he can't make weight. He ain't been active. If he was fighting a lot more, he'd probably keep that weight off. But being in between fights like that kind of add up. Everybody in Golden Boy have problems with weight, though. Ryan Garcia, Zordo. Yeah, that's the only thing. Yeah, that's what they're offering right now. That's what they're offering. You know, the people behind Tim Zoo, they kind of offering big money right now. They offering big money. I think I think PVC is gonna try to make a big fight with uh Jerron Ennis and Zoo uh pretty soon. I'm going to tell y'all right now, the two guys that PVC going to promote is uh, Jerron Ennis and um, Tim Zoo. Those are the two future guys they're going to promote. That's why they was going to put them on the first undercard. It was going to be like an introduction, but those going to be the two guys that everybody need to watch out for. Tim Zoo and uh, Jerron Ennis. That's going to be the mega fight. That's going to be the next uh, Spence versus Crawford. I know everybody else thinking about other fights, but that's the fight to make. It's going to happen. That's why Jerron Ennis, he's going to fight a lot of people, but, you know, in my eyes, you know what I'm saying, as far as the boxing business, they, they're not going to let uh, Tim Zhu and um, Jerron Ennis fight Terrence Crawford right now. It wouldn't make sense because the fight with them – between Zoo and uh, Jerron Ennis probably either next year or whenever. That'll be a bigger fight between those two. If they build it up, they keep fighting the guys they fighting right now. Tim Zoo about to fight Keith Thurman. He stops Keith Thurman, that's going to be a big fight. Tim Zoo got a resume already. People got to realize that. Charlo don't want to fight him. You know what I'm saying? So he's going on to fight Keith Thurman. I'm pretty sure Keith Thurman's a guy that Charlo would have fought. So it only makes sense. He's fighting none but big names right now, which is a good thing. Yeah, I think Ennis going to get active right now. He was going to have a big fight, but his uh his ma his manager just uh just passed away. So he got a lot of problems going on right now. His manager uh just passed away, so he got to figure out which way he's going. The only thing I know about Ennis right now is uh he's involved with the PBC as far as with the guys behind the scenes, but he's going to have a big fight. They had to wait a little bit because they're on Amazon Prime and the way the schedule is going to be. That's why I think PBC tried to put him and Tim Zoo on the beginning of the schedule because they probably tried to put them on a lot more fights throughout the schedule so they can be active. But they're going to try to uh, promote those guys a lot more. But Ennis going to be on the uh, Canelo undercard. Just got to find out who's going to fight. I don't know if it's Barrios or Cody Crawley, but we'll see. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I ain't never know that. I got to look that up. Wow, I got to look that up. I think I seen it on a resume, but I ain't, I ain't paid too much attention to it. I got to look that up, though. Amir Khan trying to steal a fight right now. But, yeah, I think... uh. I think Tim Zoo and um uh, Keith Thurman really gonna uh be the fight that's gonna push towards Jerron Ennis or 
Terrence Crawford. It's going to be somebody like that next. But I think, well, I wouldn't say Jerron Ennis next, but that's something they're going to try to pro pro uh, promote. It's a big fight, man. People don't really realize that right now. They're thinking more of the bigger, bigger, bigger fights, but you still got younger guys like Virgil Ortiz that Queen just said. These guys are still big fights. Ennis. Ennis can fight a lot of guys at 54 right now. A lot of guys at 50, uh, at 47, um, they're not going to try to do anything over the next couple of weeks or next couple of months. So with Ennis, I, I feel like at 54, he should be trying to look at those guys probably next year. But if he can make 47, just stay at 47 right now. He'll eventually get back to 47 eventually, but if he's at uh, 47 right now, stay at 47. You'll get to 54 eventually. The only guy that I really want to see him with right now is either Tim Zhu, but I ain't never really think of uh, Virgil Ortiz. Well, Virgil Ortiz, we did think about Virgil Ortiz, but that was like two or three years ago. But Virgil Ortiz said he want to build that fight up, though. He didn't say he want to fight um, Jerron Ennis right now. I think Virgil Ortiz kind of knows, you know what I'm saying. He don't want to make $8,000 for a big fight like that, so. That's probably because how he looking at things. Especially with guys fighting in Saudi Arabia with smaller fights than that. I'm pretty sure they want to get paid for that kind of fight right now. Yeah, I will be surprised. I ain't going to lie. If if Keith Thurman does that, I think the pressure, uh, putting the pressure on him is good. He's never been an underdog like this. Hey, I'm going to be honest. Has Keith Thurman ever been an underdog like this? Oh, he said he's never been an underdog like this. I think he said he was like uh, a nine-point underdog or something like that. Hey, man, that happens sometimes, bro. That'll work out for him. Keith Thurman needs some uh, motivation like that. I think he's been kind of relaxed too much late in his career. I think that's good for him. But him and uh, Tim Zoo, it's going to be a dog fight, man. It's going to be some blows, man. They're gonna be throwing some hard blows. It's gonna be a big it's gonna be a good fight. That card PVC got though, it's gonna be loaded. I'm talking about throughout the whole card. They got that one guy on there, uh Elijah Garcia. Tell you, he a beast. Remember the name. He gonna be a problem. I don't know, man. I'm thinking about uh at least putting a little bit down. I'm not gonna lie. It could end up being a draw. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know. I never seen Tim Zoo, uh Keith Thurman really have his back against the wall like that. But Tim Zoo been just he been so active, man. If Tim Zoo wasn't active like that, I wouldn't say that. But Tim Zoo been active, man. It's kind of hard to say he won't stop nobody right now. Yeah, he definitely is. He definitely is. That's why I'm trying to put pressure on the uh pressure on the uh, fans right now so they can kind of make some uh, noise and try to get him a big fight right now. He got to get a tough fight. I was uh, I was all right with the uh, the Rodriguez fight, but I want somebody like Paro though or uh, Michelle Rivera. I think that'll be a better fight with him uh, for him right now. To be honest. He was supposed, uh, Danny Garcia was supposed to fight uh, Tim Zhu. He was going to fight Tim Zhu, then they replaced him with uh, Keith Thurman. Yep, he wanted to fight uh, Tim Zhu, and they replaced him with Keith Thurman. I think they replaced him with Keith Thurman because PBC doing a lot of moving parts right now. They replaced uh, Danny Garcia with Keith Thurman because they wanted um, Conor Ben to fight Danny Garcia. And then when that happened, that's when Tank Davis called and said he was going to talk to um, Conor Ben. So, but, no, that was after that. After Tank Davis turned it down, that's when uh, Conor Ben called Danny Garcia. And that's when they kind of was moving towards Keith Thurman around that time. Keith Thurman said they called him like a week or two before they announced the fight. So he said he he announced the he uh he picked the fight like a couple of weeks ago. He hasn't really been um 
<laughs> he hasn't really been tra- training for this fight for a long time or well he, he's been training but he hasn't been um knowing about the fight as far as last year or nothing like that this is a new fight this is a last minute fight he got he's trying to prove himself he said if he fight tim zoo he feel like that's gonna be a name on his resume so it's gonna be a big fight it's gonna be a huge fight but danny garcia he's still looking for some fights right now i think danny garcia still can do some things he uh he gets stronger when he move up in weight i feel like he gets stronger when he move up honestly yeah, man, he learned that English. That was funny when he was saying that English. Uh, when he was like chicken, that was funny. Yeah, he making the one forty division uh better though. I'm not gonna lie, that's kind of what we need right now. Yeah, I know that would have been a good fight. Yeah, huh? I thought McDonald was gonna lose that weight when he was uh losing that weight recently. I thought he was going to make something happen again. Yeah, that would have been a good fight, though. That Bronner and um, Porter fight was good, too, though. Porter had a lot of good fights lately. Yeah, Porter had a lot of good fights, man. A lot of classics. But yeah, Tim Zoo, he definitely gonna um put guys on notice. Like a lot of these younger guys, I'm gonna make a video coming up soon. But a lot of these younger guys, like Tim Zoo, Jerron Ennis, um, Dave Benavidez, um, Devin Haney, all these guys. You can even throw Ryan Garcia in there because he's making big fights happen. But um, all these young guys, they making the big fights right now. They making stuff happen, they're chasing down the older older guys. The older guys not making no big fights right now. They letting Jake Paul and uh, Mike Tyson come in. If you if you really think about it, the only fight that people are really talking about right now is the Haney and Ryan Garcia. I haven't really said much about the fight yet. I just wanted to see from the outside looking in how how big it can get. But everybody's talking about it right now. Everybody not really mentioning Canelo and Munguia because they thinking about more of the, uh, more of the uh, Mike Tyson fight. So, like, boxing don't know it, man. It's going to be – boxing kind of setting itself up for a long year, man. Boxing in prove it mode right now. Like, if boxing doesn't prove itself this year, as far as having big fights, it might be done. It might be a wrap after this year, being honest. It might have to go to Saudi Arabia. We didn't have no big fights like that last year. We had the Crawford fights and all that, but it was last minute. Yeah, he would have got him. He would have got him. It would have been close, though. But he would have got him, though. You know, Billy Joe Saunders was out of shape around that time, too. That's how he was against Canelo. He was winning a lot of rounds against Canelo. People forget that. People forget uh, Billy Joe was getting rounds against Canelo. Him and uh, Caleb Plant, they got that stamina just wasn't good enough. I don't know what's up with dude's stamina now, man. Kelzaki. I don't know, man. I I probably got to lean toward Joe, honestly. I don't want to. I'm an Andre Ward fan, but I probably lean toward Joe. I lean toward Joe. Just because, hey, Andre Ward gas tank was it was decent, but in the mid rounds, man, he was. He was having a struggle against Kovalev. I'm trying to think of like against Kovalev, but. I think it'll be close. You know what I'm saying? Andre Ward ain't getting knocked out or nothing, but it'll be a close fight. I think Mike can actually catch him. If Mike actually go in there and try to throw some, I think Mike can actually catch him. I think Mike can actually catch him, to be honest. Just to be, like, unbiased about it. I ain't got no dog in the fight. But I'm just saying, well, have we, like, honestly, have we seen Jake Paul chin tested like that? I don't know. Personally, I don't know. Most people don't know. 
I haven't heard people say they know what Jake Paul Chin is like. Yeah, I like War, man. I think War the Beast. Now nah, he ain't jealous. He ain't jealous of Canelo. All the Mexican fans saying the same thing. Uh, Andre War saying. That's what I'm saying. Everybody saying the same thing. Andre War saying. I just heard. Let me tell you, Quattro. I just heard. Uh, Marquez just said, "I hope Canelo not using a rehydration clause." I don't know why he said that. He was talking about referring to um Munguia. That's how I found out about the rehydration clause. Because as soon as Marquez said, I hope he's not using re rehydration clause, then they put out the news that he's not using rehydration clause. And then you got to realize that, bro, like, Canelo, he's basically had everything that Andre Ward hasn't had. He had a fight with Floyd. Um, He got Oscar De La Hoya representing him most of his career. Um, He's got the biggest fights. Um. He helped uh, Canelo help Triple G make a hundred million dollars. Like, if we want to just stay on that topic, bro, like, like is Triple G worth a hundred million dollars? Can anybody tell me in this chat right now why Triple G is worth a hundred million dollars? That'll be my answer to why is uh, uh, Andre Ward so jealous of Canelo. Canelo is Triple G worth a hundred million dollars in Boston? I'm just asking. Because that's what that's what boxing is right now. We at the point right now where they ain't got no money for everybody else, but Triple G worth a hundred million dollars. Yeah, Triple G worked hard, but he ain't selling no pay per views though. Where the hundred million dollars come from? You gotta understand, right? They say they pay the fighters, right? Where the hundred million dollars for the Triple G come from? And why everybody else can't get a hundred million dollars? He, he didn't sell any pay-per-views. They will say that Triple G, um, they will say that Triple G did it with Canelo. Yeah, that's, yeah, but look, they will, yeah, but you got to understand, though, everybody that fought with Floyd ain't make $100 million. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody that fought with Floyd ain't make $100 million in a fight. I don't know too many people that made a hundred million dollars that fought Floyd May Floyd Mayweather, and this guy that sold pay per views. Like Mike Tyson has had stories right now where he's got robbed. Look, Mike Tyson got stories right now where he got robbed, right in boxing. Ain't nobody said, you know what, Mike, go ahead and make this better, man. You can say Mike just sold one point six million uh, pay per views. Triple G came to America and sold. No pay per views on his own, and got but the narrative everybody say is I'm just saying what everybody else goes off of narratives. They say over here you got to sell your own pay per views to be a star. Then Triple G comes over here sells a hundred million. Uh, he makes a hundred million dollars by fighting Canelo when he went down in weight. He went down in weight. Yeah, it was good. It was good for Canelo, but it ain't good for boxing now. Let me tell you why it wasn't good business. Because now you got Tank. You said about Tank Davis, right? I'm gonna give you an example. Tank Davis doing the same thing Triple G doing. Triple G went down from 160 to 154 and got Canelo. What does Tank? What does every Canelo fan hate? Hate that Tank Davis does. Class, let me ask you. Or no, nah, let me. Any Canelo or Triple G fan. What do they hate that uh, Tank Davis does the most? Because I'm not, I'm not biased. I'm about to prove it. I'm about to prove it. I'm about to prove it. What, is, what do all the fans hate uh, that's Canelo and Triple G fans that Tank Davis does? That's never good business when they say that. They always say when Tank Davis goes down and get a hit to Garcia at 130, he picking on little fighters. We don't keep the same energy, bro. I'm just keeping it real. Tank Davis does this. I got a video right now where I'm saying this on video. I don't know. Let me ask y'all a question. Do y'all watch my videos? Do y'all know that I be saying this on video all the time? This is facts. It's not no opinion. Triple G's done the same thing. We get 
we gave Triple G a pass for making uh Kel Book Kel Brook is uh punch drunk now. Let me tell y'all how serious boxing is. Kel Brook is punch drunk now. He is punch drunk. Kel Brook can't take a punch right now from nobody because after he got in the ring with Triple G, he went from 147 to 160. He went from 147 to 160. And now he's punch drunk right now. He can't take a punch. He ain't been in no big fights. His eye keep breaking. And we giving Triple G pats on the back for making a guy who's a 47 punch drunk. I'm saying, I'm just, I'm just keeping it real. I'm just not Quattro. Y'all know I got love for y'all. I'm just keeping one thousand. Cause I, I have never looked at it like this either. I, I, I never looked at it like this until recently. Because I'm like, hold on, man. I'm like, hold on. Is Mungia gonna make a hundred million dollars after he fight? Bro, let me ask y'all a question. Do we know that Mungia is gonna make a hundred million dollars? Because Mung Mungia doing this at what age twenty seven? Triple G was what, 33? Come on, man. Triple G was like 34, trying to ride the coattails of Canelo. People don't even know that. They're like, yeah, Triple G. Triple G rode Canelo coattails. He didn't do no work. Canelo was down there fighting uh, Shane Mosley and all them guys. Triple G fought, uh, he fought um, Kell Brooks so he can kind of get himself in line with Canelo. He's like, oh, Canelo finna fight Amir Khan, so let me fight Kell Brooks. I'm like, why is he fighting Kell Brook for? Too much weight. It's way too much weight. And Crawford's going to do the same thing. He's going for 47 to 60. And people think it's easy because it's Chris Eubanks. They basically walking around saying Eddie Hearn promoting bombs. I've been saying that, but, you know, until they ain't going to say that until Terrence Crawford fight Chris Eubanks. And then it's like, oh, okay. Now he a bum. Okay. But when I say I don't like the guys over there, Eddie Hearn guy, oh, well, you you being mean and biased and you ain't being a real boxer fan. Oh, okay. I'm just saying. But Triple G, he can't get credit for that, bro. Like, it's too many Mexican fighters and American fighters that's that's from America. Can y'all think of y'all favorite Mexican fighter from either the 80s, the 90s, 2000, 2010, yesterday? How many of these guys made $100 million boxing? Honestly. You know what I'm saying? None of these guys trying to uh, take care of our favorite fighters. Munguia, I don't know if he's going to make $100 million. And I don't know how Triple G still got that $100 million. I still don't know. When I seen the zone deal, I was like, ah, him and Canelo got to fight each other. It's too much money. Too much money for Triple G and Canelo to go to the zone and not fight each other. I already knew the fight was going to happen. You know what I'm saying? And they, I knew they were going to say, Canelo, we did this for you, and we gave you this money after this happened, so you got to help us out. So, obviously, he made the fight happen. But that's why Canelo, after the deal was done, what Canelo did, I'm out of here. I'm going to PVC. Honestly, that's what happened. People don't want to talk about that. But Canelo got a little fed up with his own. The guys that they had him fight, he didn't want to fight. And that's what fans kind of tell on themselves. Like, Canelo didn't even like the fighters. He, he, he didn't even like the guys he was fighting. He didn't like a John Ryder or he didn't like a Zach Parker. Canelo likes fighting a Charlo. He likes fighting a Caleb Plant. You want me to tell you how I know? Canelo is a different guy when he's at those press conferences. Smiling, taking pictures. He throwing punches and stuff like that. Pushing Caleb Plant. He's doing everything. He's a different guy. He got out of there ASAP, though. He Canelo wasn't finna hang around with those guys like that. But at the same time, though, Triple G, he kind of messed the standard up. Now, Tank, now, I'm telling you, everything, now when Tank Davis does something, I got to literally say, Tank Davis doing this like Triple G. Tank D Davis doing this like Canelo. He going down, getting guys away like Triple G. And then Canelo seen Triple G doing the same thing. Triple G went down to get Canelo. And Canelo like, man, y'all let Triple G come down and get me. I'm finna do the same thing. So it's really like I'm saying something to Canelo, but it's too late. 
Bro, the same thing I'm saying to Canelo, I'm saying the same thing to Triple G. Oh yeah, F facts. Uh, uh, facts go good. I mean, uh, yeah, go good. Facts. I wouldn't say it's a circle. I say it more because 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 um, Canelo's serious about his record. I wouldn't say Canelo was going in there just to uh, you know, saying he's serious about his record. Like when he goes in there to fight Mungi, it ain't gonna be no acting. He gonna definitely try to knock his head off. But I feel like um, they tried to market around that idea of uh, Triple G and um Canelo. I think that's all it was. It didn't. I feel like Canelo probably looks at it now like, yeah, I could have fought Caleb Plant a little earlier, probably Charlo a little earlier. He looks at it like that now because he didn't probably think that the zone was uh, because mostly the guys he fought in the zone was the zone guys, mostly. Really, what it is. So I can't really go all the way in on Canelo, but. I think that with Triple G being able to kind of do what he did, it's a lot of guys who expect nothing. They expect B-side money to be like Triple G money. That's what really goes on. That's why a lot of guys is like, no, I'm not going to set the fight. And you don't see that a lot of times. But that never happened before, though. It never happened before. But we don't have trip, uh, trilogies like that either, though, on pay-per-view. and So having a trilogy on pay-per-view with Canelo and on the app, that's kind of a new thing. So the money is kind of being up there. I mean, it makes sense. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know if it's right. Honestly, I don't know if it's right. But it kind of holds things back. That's what I say. It, it mostly holds things back, honestly. Because from what I'm seeing... A lot of things I can make excuses for, like I just said, Canelo's doing basically the same thing Triple G did. So it's not like people can't really say anything to Canelo if they didn't say anything to Triple G about the stuff he did, which I did. But as we can see, a lot of people don't really see it the same way. Or with Tank. There's a lot of guys who like Tank, but they'll think that, oh, yeah, Canelo ducking. But no, nah, he ain't ducking, but he's just doing the same kind of business moves that Tank doing. You know, so Canelo, Canelo fought his foreign partner just like everybody else did. And I ain't talking about a long time ago. I'm talking about recently. Tank fought his foreign partner. A lot of guys do it. It happens. It ain't like no uh guy just making super tough fights that, you know, it's not just that hard. It's, it's not hard, man. A lot of this stuff got to do with uh these promoters. But at the end of the day, your record is what your record is. If you want to retire and having guys like, like if, if Canelo retires right now, his record's going to be what it's going to be. I mean, what fights are we going to go back and watch for real? The ones he lost and what else? Can, Charlo, Caleb Plant, and Munguia now? All those are what? PVC fights. So why 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 is Canelo most of his biggest fights on PBC? That's what people don't want to talk about. The fights that Canelo, everybody talk about Canelo have, they talk about Caleb Plant fight. I'd be like, he fought Kovalev. Yeah, but I like the Caleb Plant fight and the Charlo fight. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, them bags too big. Them bags too big. I mean, a lot of guys really trying to wait on Canelo, though, in the process, as we can see. A lot of guys, that's a problem, too. I didn't know guys, if shoot, Charlo then was waiting on Canelo, so it's not like Canelo told them to, uh, it's not like, uh, Canelo told them to, uh, run it back. Or try to wait on him. Yeah, that hey, but that third fight, Quattro, Quattro know not to say that third fight. Yeah, I see Quattro ain't put that third fight. That third fight was the worst, one of the worst fights I've ever seen in my life. That Triple G and Canelo third fight, that fight was horrible. They could have left that alone. That fight was bad. 
that fight was bad, man. And I said, I said, man, Canelo need to fight somebody else. We don't need to see this fight. Everybody's like, oh, this fight's going to be good. Okay. I'm like, all right. But if Canelo want this to be his legacy, I mean, it don't really hurt nobody. I feel like he's bigger than the Triple G, but if he want to just lower himself to a Triple G, being the fight that he, if, the, if he want to lower his standards to just being on the Triple G level, I mean, that's cool to him then. I wouldn't do myself like that. Yeah, he is. But he uh he takes fights, you know what I'm saying? I said the only guy he has a fault is what? Crawford and Spence. But yeah, he's a smart guy. He's been taking a lot of fights though. I've been watching Thurman for years. Maybe he's been, he been fighting with over. He been fighting since what HBO? Keep Thurman used to be on HBO, so he's been fighting a while. He's trying to make it happen. Yeah, me either. Not right now, man. I mean, I mean the way the way everybody else doing right now. To be honest, that's what the game messing up at. They want certain guys to lose first and take hard fights. Taking taking hard fights is not a compliment no more. You know what I'm saying? It used to be a good thing to take hard fights. That's what people are starting to realize now. If you fight a hard fight and you get you lose, it's gonna be a bad thing on your resume. Yeah, I thought that fight was gonna happen already. That's what I'm saying. I mean, it's cool that Benavidez. Uh, brother uh, fought on the same car, but I wanted to see that C Caleb Plant fight. And I don't think Caleb Plant going to fight him right now because I think Charlo going to stay at 60, but I wanted to see that fight. I think they playing around with that fight. I think they playing around with that fight, to be honest. I was trying to wonder if Caleb Plant can make 160, but I don't think he can. <laughs> Toyota. Hey, Toyota, good car, man. <laughs> I, I, if it's good on gas, I'll take it right now. <laughs> Sit on Sam McCann. Toyota. <laughs> yeah, WBC tripping, man. I don't know what WBC on. And the IBL backwards. I don't know what WBC on. They should have just made Crawford a mandatory. They should have just said, hey, man, Crawford, you got a mandatory 30 days to make this uh run in this fight. They should have just did something like that instead of just taking the belt. Because, you know, if Crawford go fight for the belt, what, he got to go pay, them, pay the um section of body again? So that's probably another reason he probably don't want to do that fight. Stripping the belt when I just got it. I wouldn't want to pay them guys either. Yeah, WBC tripping. They falling off, man. They losing they um, uh, they losing credibility in boxing. I saw more of the uh, WBO last weekend. Yeah, WBC they tripping, man. They falling off. It's starting to be a joke. That's why all these uh exhibitions starting to fight uh starting to happen. Because the guys like the uh, WBC, they don't put on no good mandatory fights. There's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, it's way too many bills. It's way too many bills. It's too many guys that um that can get a belt quick, too. That's another problem. It's way too many belts, though. That's a problem in boxing right now. They need to kind of uh take the belts out of boxing right now. I think they definitely need to take the belts out of Boston right now. That's a problem. That's why guys like uh, but the good thing that Triple G and Canelo did though was actually make their own fights though. Instead of actually uh trying to wait in the same division, I will say that's a good thing they actually did. They brought the um, uh, you know, jumping divisions and things like that. That's the kind of the way it need to be right now.
if you're gonna actually fight somebody. That's why Ennis doing that right. Well, he, he's not doing it right now, but he's soon gonna do that. But uh, I guess Tim Zhu, you can say he's doing it. A lot of guys are doing that right now, but it's too many belts. They gotta start stripping some guys. Crawford team say they just need someone to the money. Yeah, um, yeah, that's true. It's it always been like that. It always been like that. Crawford uh team needs somebody to put up the money. It always been like that. A lot of times these people um they don't want to put the money up. Crawford a fight, you know what I'm saying? That's what I was saying. Like, even with Jerron Ennis, a lot of people don't want to put the money up for Ennis. They tell me he ain't worth the money. You know, he got to pay a lot of people now. So for him to go out of his way and fight for somebody right now, it's going to cost. But he got a belt now, so it's different. But, yeah, they need to put the money up, though. They got all the money for everybody else, man. I don't know what's going on. Saudi Arabia has the money. Yeah, man, these belts, these belts getting sent to guys and stuff, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's why everybody going to Saudi Arabia now. They got belts getting sent to guys. Then the other crazy thing is guys lose, then go fight for another belt in another weight class. That's a bad thing. Yeah, those belts getting sent is crazy, man. That's changing the game right now. Way too many belts. But I don't know. A lot of these, it's a lot of talent right now, though. So the belts kind of, it's not going to matter in a minute. It's kind of going to make things still good because it's a lot of talent in a, uh Yeah, when they got that golf, I knew it was a wrap. Go good. When they got that golf, I knew it was over with. Then last year, they kind of, um, they didn't complain about the golf thing. They kind of rolled over and said, yeah, you know, the golf is okay now. So, you know, it's a lot of stuff going to be go, going over there. I don't know if they're going to try to have basketball, NBA, or NFL going over there, but I know boxing is go and golf is the first thing, and that's kind of, I don't know, that's some of your biggest uh, entertainment on the weekend. So, kind of tough to see it going over there. But right now, it's not like American-based companies over there. It's mostly just uh, Matchroom and Queensberry with Eddie Hearn and Frank – Frank Warren, but at the same time, it could be some things changing. Like right now, a lot of the lower weight classes, where anyway is at, it's a lot of guys going to Japan to fight over there. They paying a lot of money, so different things going on. Yep, All Star Games, Super Bowls, you can definitely see it. Hey, facts, facts, y'all, definitely some facts right here. Super Bowls and All Star Game. I'm not gonna lie, go good. I can see a Super Bowl and an All Star Game over there soon. That's a good call. And Formula One. Yeah, y'all, y'all definitely saying something about that. That's true. I heard that. Um, I heard they're trying to get a football team in Brazil or something recently. So it's a lot of things going on. They, they're trying to go international with sports as far as the teams. No, the planes are a little better now, so. They're trying to do some different things now. But boxing is going to be uh, the center of all this stuff. That's why a lot of guys right now, they're kind of thinking, okay, should I take a big fight in America or should I save it for Saudi Arabia? That's why a lot of fans don't realize it's kind of a risk right now kind of going with Mungi and Canelo because that means the bigger fights Canelo going to save for Saudi Arabia. Most likely, and it's not going to be over here. I don't know if it's going to be Benavidez or anybody, but if he does a Terrence Crawford versus Canelo, you know, if Canelo and Terrence Crawford fight right now, it would only make sense if they did it in Saudi Arabia, to be honest. Oh, yeah, they got way more money. Crazy amounts. I didn't know that Gunner was getting, what, $20, $30 million? That's insane. That's a lot of money. Anthony Joshua, 50 million. 
for two rounds. That's crazy. That's a lot of money. Fans don't understand, man. Boxing is still huge. It's still a big sport. Not many sports you can make that make that kind of money in about 30 minutes. Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia taking over. They kind of learning how to do things right now. They said that um soon they're gonna do all the fights on their own without having uh promoters involved. So maybe they'll help, but we'll see. I don't know how long they're gonna have these events going on. Eventually, it's not gonna go on forever. So eventually, guys gonna have to come back to America and make some things happen, but the events aren't going to go on forever to what to the point where um people think that it's going to be like every big fight in Saudi Arabia and no disrespect but they haven't had a, like a mega fight over there yet the biggest fights they've had are been with uh have been with Ngannou uh you had Joshua versus Ruiz um you haven't had really too many big PBC fights over there the guys who actually are from PBC that fought over there is what a drill, uh, big baby Miller, and um, Deontay Wilder. So a lot of guys from America aren't really fighting over there yet. No, it's not the taxes. The tax is doing too much. The tax is doing way too much. Guys got to pay they uh they got to pay the team and everything. It's, it adds up way too much, and then most of the time. They want to have fights in Vegas and California and Texas and different places, but the Texas is different, even in Florida. You know, Texas is different in different places, so you don't make the same amount of money in Vegas you're making somewhere else. I had Bivol, but now I got Bitter Bill. I got him in, um, not by stoppage, but I definitely got him winning. I definitely think he's going to win. I had Bibble for a long time, but um, I don't know. From the outside looking in, Bibble and Bitter Bib, they used to train together on the Russian national team. And just from the outside looking in, I heard that it seems like Bitter Bib, he's one of those guys that used to be like the tough leader, you know, one of those army type guys. But, um, Bibble said he was a good leader, but, you know, they, they didn't get along, they ain't friends or nothing like that. So it sounds like he used to get bullied by him. But from what I hear, it seems like Bibble don't think that Bitter Bibble know that much about him. But from what I heard, I think Bitter Bibble been watching him very closely. So he knows exactly uh what Bibble can do from what I see. So I think it's going to be a very good fight. It's going to be the best uh Bibble ever fought, though. That's a guarantee. Yeah, it's going to be a good fight. It's going to be way better than people realize. It's going to be a very good fight. It's going to be a classic. It's going to be a very good fight. I don't know what's going to happen after they fight. Like, I don't know if uh, Benavidez is going to get a chance to fight any one of them, but we shall see. That's the good thing, though. We still got Benavidez able to fight a guy like after that, after that fight, he can fight Bivol or Benavidez. I mean, Bitter Biv, so. It's still got some good fights out there we can make, but a couple of them, it just got, got away from us. Like, the stuff that Canelo stopped kind of slowed down Boston a little bit. But like I said the other day, though, if, Mike Ty if that Mike Tyson fight turns out to be a little entertaining, it's going to be hard for Canelo to try to – uh drain out the noise while he's trying to announce that uh, September fight. So he needs probably a big opponent for that September fight because it's a little close to um that Mike Tyson fight. Mike Tyson going to stop a lot of fights during the summer. Everybody's not, not going to uh, pay pay-per-view for every fight. I think Canelo's fight pay-per-view, Tank is. Uh, I know the Mike Tyson fight is. Well, it's a lot of fights. Then Canelo back in September. It's going to be a lot of fights to pay for. Then I don't know if PBC going to have another fight in July. It would be kind of hard not to have one. You just have one fight in the summer. Well, just Canelo in May and then Tank in June. 
I don't think that's a good idea. So hopefully they have a uh, a fight in uh September because I mean uh July because if they don't, May and June's not gonna be enough. But I don't think they're gonna want to compete with Mike Tyson. So that's the crazy thing now. Like even hearing the Mike Tyson fight get announced, now you kind of hear people saying like, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna buy the Tank fight or the Canelo fight. Because now people were just thinking, I'll just buy the Tank fight and then Canelo fight. But but then the Mike Tyson fight's coming on after that. And people might think he's not going to sell a lot of pay-per-views, but he did $1.6 million. I'm trying to find out, like, how many people didn't like the last fight because if he did $1.6 million and he has a lot of people who didn't complain about the fight, he might do another million. I'm just saying. I know a lot of older people didn't like the fight, but he sold 1.6. That's a lot. So we got to see where boxing is right now. We can't be competing with guys like uh, Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul. But when you're not putting the big fights together, that's what happened. I told people that Munguia and um, Canelo wasn't going to be a big enough fight. Everybody said, it's a big fight. It's a very big fight. I said, yeah, to the boxing fans, but not to the average fans. Yeah, Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones. Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones did 1.6 during the um shutdown. Man, that fight sold a lot, man. That fight sold a lot. Everybody was watching Mike Tyson around the time. I think that's when he started his uh podcast. That was right after he started his podcast. Yeah, that's crazy, bro. Crazy. I had looked it up the, uh two days ago. Go good. I thought I heard you. Um, that's probably the first time you heard me say this on the channel, but I learned that like two days ago on the live. I was like, whoa, he saw 1.6. Man, that's why I said Mike Tyson, a nice guy, man. Y'all lucky I'm not Mike Tyson. If I was Mike Tyson, I would have gave y'all three or four Jake Paul fights. I'm like, these guys ain't fighting nobody. Let's go ahead and make three fights, uh, Jake Paul. Make this a trilogy. 1.6 million? Mike Tyson's not even fighting every year like he can. He can do that every year if he wants to. I can just Let me just fight again. People's not complaining. I'm telling you, Mike Tyson's a nice guy, man. He could rob the bank like these boxers doing right now. Everybody else doing $100, $100 pay-per-views, $80. To be honest with you, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how good a shape Mike is. Four years ago, I would have seen Mike doing something. When he was in that uh, Roy Jones fight, he was in shape. Everybody know that. He was in shape. He was in shape. But right now, I feel like Mike was a little bit smaller the last couple of months. He had not really been working out like that as far as putting on muscle. So I really don't know. I don't know. I mean, naturally, I feel like he, he'll have power and be able to, you know, have a couple of rounds to be able to fight, but I don't know. I don't, honestly, I don't know how, how good Jake Paul is right now. I couldn't learn a lot from his last fight. That's the reason I don't know much about how the fight can go. But I think Mike Tyson would be able to last, what, a good six, seven, eight rounds? Well, I don't know, eight, round, eight rounds a long time. Let me not get ahead of myself. I don't want to be get fanned out. Eight, eight rounds a long time. Now, we talking about six rounds, eight rounds now? I don't know, man. It'd be hard for me to bet that Mike Tyson can go eight rounds right now. You know, because he hasn't fought in a while, man, four years. He was good the last fight, though. He was in good shape the last fight, not going to lie. Mike was in very good shape. Can't disrespect him like that. He was in shape. So, I can see him possibly – uh. I don't know if Jake Paul getting the trade. If he get to throw on Mike Tyson, man, Mike Tyson can catch him, man. I don't know about a knockout, but he can do some stuff to where Jake Paul be like, man, let me not trade with him. Just being honest. You know, at the end of the day, anybody fight an older man who used to box. You know, if you fight any kind of older guy who's around 50, 55, you know, any one of us getting, getting in the ring with Bernard Hopkins right now, it's going to be a hard fight. It's not easy to get in the ring with those older boxers. I 
Uh, I seen the I seen the one where he had on Triller. I think the one everybody seen the first one when he knocked out uh Ben Askren. I seen that, and I seen the Tyron Woodley fights. I think after the Tyron the first Tyron Woodley fight, I kind of I kind of faded away. I was just watching it just to watch it, but you know it just kind of get got a stream. But yeah, it's entertaining. It was. If it's your first time watching it, it'll be entertaining. Like, to be honest with you, like, the first Jake Paul fight, everybody was entertained watching it. Then after that, a lot of people kind of went away from it. Um, The first Mike Tyson, well, the Tyson versus Roy Jones fight, everybody liked that fight. I've, I've been trying to find people that don't like the fight, that didn't like the fight when they seen it. The Roy Jones versus Tyson fight, everybody was kind of entertained by that. It was no crowd. Like people, hey, go good. Nobody, it wasn't a, it wasn't a crowd when Mike Tyson fought um, Roy Jones. They didn't have a crowd out there. It wasn't a crowd out there at all. He did one point six with no crowd. That's that's crazy to me. I didn't even know that. One point six with no crowd is amazing to me. I never think I I never thought anybody could do that. Kind of surprised me. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can catch up. Everybody doesn't like it, but it's it's entertainment. You know what I'm saying? I tried to uh, compare it to, um, like, what Kimbo Slice used to be. I don't want to disrespect Kimbo Slice. But, you know, we used to watch Kimbo Slice in, um, on YouTube with his backyard fight. So I try to compare those, really, because it's kind of like the same kind of that little feeling, adrenaline rush you get when you watch certain fights. When you watch a Jake Paul fight, it's not like people look at it as like a boxing match. They look at it as, a, as like a, uh, you know, a fight, an entertaining fight. It's not nothing serious. I don't take it too much serious like as everybody else does. Because, like I said, we, we got MMA guys fighting now in boxing. So to say that Mike Tyson can't do anything, I mean, I don't know, bro. I mean, the age, I understand that, but. I never heard fans really caring about a boxer's safety. This is kind of new to me. Kind of the first time I heard that, so I'm kind of confused at a lot of things. Pacquiao's an older guy. You know what I'm saying? He still competes. I think, I know Mike like 10 years older than him, but just saying. I don't know how good Jake Paul is at this point. So to say that he'll hurt Mike Tyson, I don't know. That'll be – I'm kind of guessing at that point. I don't know if it would be a good match because, you know, a lot of people do say. Yeah, yeah, they do. But that was just Saudi Arabia, though. That was, that was just Saudi Arabia, so. It kind of ended up that way. But that is true, though, Go Good. That is true. That definitely is true. That's why I kind of, that's why I'm kind of telling people, like, you can't have a guy like Mike Tyson who took all those fights when he was a uh, when he was active. Mike Tyson took a hard, a lot of hard fights. So for him, to, so, so for people to kind of tell him like, "Hey, don't fight Jake Paul," he's like, "These other guys are fighting MMA fighters. Why well, can't fight a Jake Paul? They're not fighting real boxers either." And he he's telling the truth. They're not fighting real boxers. So you can't tell Mike Tyson. He's fought in too many hard fights. For someone to tell him he needs to do more, or he he's not doing the right thing, he's not gonna hear that, man. He's putting in too much work in boxing, and he sees now guys ain't trying to fight nobody tough. If guys was fighting like Pacquiao versus Mayweather or Canelo versus Mayweather or something, Jake Paul versus Tyson wouldn't be happening right now. That's a guarantee. But we don't really want to focus on stuff like that, though. We're kind of focusing on why the why uh, Jake Paul's fighting Mike Tyson. But we're not focusing on why the guys in boxing not fighting certain people. Because in a minute, boxing is going to be um, – boxing is going to be falling behind. It's going to be falling behind because it – it stays ahead of MMA, but 
it doesn't it doesn't do a good job of staying ahead from what I've seen. MMA does a good job of kind of keeping up with boxing, but we don't cover boxing the same as uh the MMA guys. They kind of give uh shine to everyone. And boxing, they only want like one superstar now. And it's not really working. It, it doesn't help. Even like when you look at UK boxing or in Japan, they kind of have multiple guys. They kind of push as the the face of boxing over there. But over here, we kind of make it as one face, and it doesn't really help grow a lot of stuff. Because once that one guy is fighting, nobody cares about the rest of the fighters over here. That's why it's hard to kind of figure out who a Tr Terrence Crawford is and if he's good because he's fighting, but nobody's really pushing him. You know, we can't see we can't see every fight. So that's why a lot of times I'll be trying to put on certain fights that I know that fans probably not paying attention to, but. If I cover a fight on the channel, I mean, it's a big fight. That last fight I covered, the Komatov versus Ford, that was a classic. That was a classic. Hey, shout out to my dog, Go Good, man, in the super chat, man, saying facts. Appreciate my dog, Go Good, man, for real. Huge supporter. I forgot what video I met you on, Go Good. I usually have a good memory. I forgot what, uh... I forgot what uh, video I met you on, Go Good. I forgot what video I met you on. You probably been around already, though. Yeah, shout out to Go Good, man. But yeah, man, them dudes, uh, they not really, they not really putting in certain certain fights right now to where. Guys can actually make a name for themselves because we're not really the only young guy that's actually gonna make a name for himself is uh Mungia. He's the only young guy that's actually fighting somebody. I mean, Benavidez has fought Andre, but that's not the same thing as Mungia fighting Canelo. So I think a lot of these other guys is kind of uh fighting a lot of competition, you know what I'm saying? Like Japan's trying to fight each other right now. They're going to have a couple of guys fight each other. They've already had it uh, happen. Anyways, brother has um, fought a lot of guys over there, top competition. Now they're trying to fight guys like Stephen Fulton. That's why in America we need to try to make fights over here first before we try to send guys to fight like Inouye and things like that because, because after the guys come back, we don't really get those fights we kind of look for, especially in America. We could have been okay with a Crawford or a Charlo or a Benavidez versus anyone from over here. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of times they don't really they don't really want to show those things, though. That's why right now, if we don't have guys like Devin Haney, Munguia, Benavidez, uh, Jerron Ennis, Tim Zhu, um, Box is not going to go anywhere. Jai Patea, you can put him in there. If you don't got guys like that who really try to challenge themselves, they go on to spar with guys like Tyson Fury and Triple G. It ain't going to go nowhere. Oh, yeah, especially this year. This year? Hey, go good. This year? Definitely follow the money. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you who the money man is. If y'all in here right now, I'm going to tell you who the money man is for 2024. And thank you, uh, everybody, for the support. But the money man for 2024 is uh, Oscar De La Hoya. He the money man for this year. Not saying he got all the money. I'm just letting y'all know. He the money man. And, and I'm not just saying that. I'm dead serious. I don't want to explain everything, but y'all know. Y'all smart. Trust me. He the money man for this year, though. If you look at the moves that Oscar De La Hoya making right now, he making a lot of moves right now. Every fighter he got right now is is active. Every fighter he got right now is active. I know what his plans is. He's trying to get ready for uh he's trying to see if them guys can actually make something happen in Saudi Arabia. You know. Oscar's a very smart guy. He's got a relationship with Eddie Hearn, so 
He possibly seeing if him and, Eddie, him and uh, Eddie Hearn can possibly do some things in Saudi Arabia. I mean, Oscar does have the roster to do it because the fighters that Eddie Hearn doesn't have as far as like at 140, uh, if they wanted to be fancy, they could make a 140 fight in Saudi Arabia. I mean, Oscar has Oscar has all the guys at 140 that Matias could possibly fight. So that's something that can definitely happen. But Oscar definitely uh the money man right now. He's making things happen. He got Zapata fighting this weekend. And he wants Zapata to possibly fight uh Shakir Stevenson. He he definitely has the money. But yeah, we definitely gotta follow the money in 2024. That's for sure, for sure. Definitely gotta follow the money. Go good right on that. I'm gonna drop a video tonight though for uh go good and um can't believe I forgot my dog name already. Brain food. Yeah, I'm gonna drop a video for brain food and go good tonight. Yeah, but they they gotta follow the money though. Oh, it is. It is. It's coming together now. I think go good. I'm gonna tell you. That Mike Tyson thing, it really is gonna br it's gonna bring out a lot of different things. That Mike Tyson situation is gonna slow down a lot. It's gonna slow down a lot because I don't know how much the boxing industry is doing this right now, but I don't know if they're gonna look at Canelo's numbers for September or even May. I don't know if Mike Tyson's fight is gonna affect Canelo's number more in May or in September. If I had to guess, I would probably say September because football is coming around. I will probably say September. But I feel like um, Mike Tyson having that fight is going to affect a lot of guys in boxing. A lot of money is not going to be around like they thought it was. I've heard a couple of fights already get changed. And i seen Oscar, uh, not Oscar, but Bob Arum just made a date for Shakir Stevenson. So. They've got to make moves now. A lot of these fights for the summer are getting uh getting made right now. They're almost done. It's almost but uh it's almost the end of March. So we're already in uh July right now making fights. So the next couple of fights they're gonna make is what August and September. And I'll be surprised. It'll be a big surprise if Canelo waits till after uh Mike Tyson fight to announce his fight. That'll be crazy. Um, um, my dog Chase last night. Chase said that uh, William Zapata and Raymond Maritai is uh the options for Shakir Stevenson right now. And Z uh, Zapata fights uh Saturday. Zapata fight Maxi Hughes Saturday, and Oscar De La Hoya told um. To pay the fight Saturday, and Oscar De La Hoya told um, Shakir Stevenson to come to the fight. He told Shakir Stevenson to come to the fight and uh, get a chance with uh, Williams Zapata. He said Williams Zapata is trying to fight Shakir Stevenson bad right now. And um, I believe that because Williams Zapata did. I don't know if Oscar did this, but Williams Zapata had a chance to fight um Frank Martin and Tank Davis, but he he picked he picked uh Maxi Hughes. So I know right now that Zapata wants to fight a guy at top rank, whether that's uh Shakur or Lomachenko. So with him uh picking Maxi Hughes, who's technically with uh top rank right now, that we uh that William Zapata and Raymond Miratai, who's on top rank. Those two uh, fights make sense, so I definitely think that uh, that's going to happen. I definitely think that's going to happen. Yeah, I think Shakur, he, he's locked in right now. I did a live on that last night. I don't know if you had seen it go good. It was good, too. I did a uh, live on Shakur Stevenson. I have been saving him uh, for a long time to make that uh, live on him, but he's... um. He's going to be ready in July. I think this fight right here, uh, top rank, will get him a very good opponent because this is going to be one of his last fights on top rank. 
So they kind of need to um go the extra mile for him. They're trying to they're trying to make him happy right now. It might not seem like it, but they're trying to make him happy. They got him fighting on Thursdays. That's why they try to give him his own day as far as him and uh Tia Fimo. They try to let him fight on Thursday and try to give him a showcase. Football not really on, so it kind of backfired, but everybody knows who Shakira is right now. It's kind of what he was all the only thing he was really looking for. It's a gift and a curse, but it is what it is. Yeah, he's gonna come out aggressive. I guarantee it. I'm not a I'm not a, a big fan, like a super fan that knows everything, but I know that he's gonna come out aggressive. Yeah, whoever it is. And he's fighting in his hometown. Like I said, he gotta he gotta drive past his old neighborhood when he goes to that fight. So he definitely gonna be ready. It's a different kind of mindset when you drive past your neighborhood. Then he stays in uh the fight gonna be in Newark, New Jersey, so. That's definitely going to be a good fight for him. Shakur got a lot to prove, man. He's he's definitely, like I said last night, um, he's a guy right now that everybody kind of expects a lot out of, a lot out of. A lot of fans know uh, a lot about Shakur right now, which is smart. You know, the fans smart right now. Fans very smart right now. I got to give fans credit. Like, they know Shakur is good. Even fans that don't like him, they'll be like, when is he fighting? Who is he fighting? You know, fans are smart right now. They know he's good. Just want to see more. You know, in boxing, man, we we don't really play around. The fans don't really play around as far as a guy not proving himself yet. Like, if we didn't see enough, we're not going to say, oh, yeah, he won. But, you know, Shakur is a good guy, though. He uh, he complaining after winning a championship. So that's how you're supposed to do if you want to be great. So I kind of like that idea about Shakur, you know, complaining about winning the championship. That means he's trying to be the best. Now, if he was happy and smiling, that would be a problem. You know what I'm saying? I'd be like, oh, man. But for him not to be happy about where he's at, that means he's trying to be the best. That's good. That's going to make for better fights with all, uh, all of those guys. I can't wait, too. That's why I like these younger guys actually fighting at the age they're at now. We get to see them for the next five years. You know, we might we might change around, have a favorite guy to change. We might, somebody else might be our favorite in a couple of years, so. Boxing is gonna get a lot more interesting that way. I don't. I'm tired of getting fighters that's like, you know, like Terence Crawford situation. Now a lot of people starting to realize who he is, and he's 36. That's not supposed to happen in boxing. But when the industry is just pushing one guy the whole time, it's kind of hard to see who the other stars are when they're not really getting in the ring, proving themselves. So I don't want to catch myself in a situation like uh, Shakur, overlooking Shakur or something like that, and. Because that's happened with everybody as far as Terrence Crawford. Even Earl Spence, you know, it took a while for him to get noticed. Earl Spence didn't get really noticed until the Mayweather sparring. I mean, people knew him, but a lot of a lot of other fans, they kind of used the Mayweather sparring kind of to say that Earl Spence was a the guy they liked. But he's always been a good fighter, though. What's up, PD? Uh, makes sense. What's going on, man? What's going on, PD? Yeah, I was just in here talking about uh different fights with um uh, with Go Good. Just talking about different random uh fights over the last couple of years. Okay, bet, 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 bet. That's all it is. I'm definitely gonna stay on here then. I'm definitely gonna stay on here then, PD. Yeah, Earl was a real boogeyman. Yeah, he was a boogeyman. He was a boogeyman. He was definitely a boogeyman. That's why I I, I wanted Earl to get uh to get in his earl earlier. Now nah, they talking about hey PD, they talking about um <laughs> PD, they talking about uh they talking about uh when uh around the time where um after that uh that Mayweather spar when people start jumping on bandwagon, that Mayweather spar when uh around the time Earl Spence started making some noise, they didn't really know who he was before that. But that Mayweather spar, they kind of brought him out a little bit. Nah, the boost good, boost good, boost good, boost got a plan. I, I I had explained that earlier, PD. I'll run it back for you, though, PD. 
I'm gonna explain it for you early though. So what I was saying about boots was, you know what I'm saying? What people don't realize is if you think of boots like boots, if we yeah, 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 me too, me too, me too. Facts, facts, PD. Facts, PD. PD, a lot of people don't know know that though. Hey, he look better from amateurs though, don't he? Hey, PD, he look way better than the amateurs, dog. Man. He look way better now. Jerron Ennis a problem right now. But what I seen from uh Jerron Ennis though, uh Showtime was actually going not Showtime, but so you know Steven Espinosa. You know who Steven es Espinosa is. He was messing around with um Jerron Ennis. So you remember last year? I'm tell I'm, I'm gonna tell PD real quick. So you remember last year when Spence had I mean not Spence, but when, when Tank fought um Hector Garcia? You remember when Tank fought Hector Garcia? I think that was in DC, wasn't it? Hey, right, didn't Tank fight Hector Garcia in DC? They had the car with Jerron Ennis. Um yeah, they had a the car with Jerron Ennis. They had a car with Jerron Ennis, um, Rashidi Ellis, Vuvu Andre. You remember they had that car, that car, right? Yeah, exactly. It was in DC. Yeah, it was in DC. Uh, go good, good. Yeah, it was in DC. But they had that car set up with Rashidi Ellis, Andre, and all those guys. Well, on that car. Espinosa had put that card together. Espinosa helped put that card together because um I know Andre people were trying to get uh trying to get on a card or something like that. You know what I'm saying? As far as trying to get a fight, something set up. And they end up getting him on that card, and Rashidi Ellis was on that card too. But everybody that was over there is not under directly up under Al Heyman. You know what I'm saying? Everybody think that everybody over there was dealing with Al Heyman. Like, Andre ain't dealing with directly with Al Heyman. You know what I'm saying? That ain't how things going. When he's having the fights with PBC, he's not dealing with Al Heyman. It's more so of a situation where Al Heyman is dealing with his people probably, but not as far as with um, a direct line with him. Yeah. Oh no, 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 I know I know what you're saying, PD. I know what you're saying, PD. Yeah, he's a good fighter. I just want to see him in better fights. Yeah, I know what you're saying, PD. Oh, I'm right with you, PD. But Jerron Ennis, you know what I'm saying? The thing about Jerron Ennis, Jerron Ennis was gonna get put on the card with Tim Zoo. They was gonna put Jerron Ennis on the March 30th card with Tim Zoo. He was gonna be it was gonna be Tim Zoo versus Danny Garcia. Then it was gonna be uh Jerron Boots in his verse. Um it's gonna be Jerron Boots in his verse. Mario Barrios. Then when Barrios fight ain't happened, because Barrios said, I think he said he wasn't ready or something like that. So they moved that fight off the uh car. And now they got the Eastside Cruz and Roller Romero fight. But now Jerron in is fighting on um Canelo's undercard. He's gonna be on the uh co main event for Canelo. But we don't know if he's going to fight Barrio still. So that Barrio fight might not happen because now, you know, the sanctioning bodies, they want to do the right thing now. So now they want to make Jerron Ennis and Cody Crawley the main fight. So now Cody Crawley and Jerron Ennis is the fight now. So I don't know if that's going that's the fight that's going to happen. Oh, yeah, that Keith Thurman fight is in uh, two weeks, PD. In two weeks. In two weeks. In two weeks, he gonna uh that fight gonna happen. In two weeks, man, it's gonna be a good fight. Yeah, it is gonna blow him up. It is gonna blow him up. He got that that Tim Zhu fight with um when PBC met that Tim Zhu and um uh Jerron Ennis fight. I think it's gonna be soon. I'm telling y'all, I think that Jerron Ennis and keep uh Tim Zhu fight gonna be in two or three years at least. I don't think PBC gonna let these guys uh go around and 
possibly make that fight on another network. I don't think they're gonna try to make the same mistake as uh with the uh Crawford and Spence fight. Yeah, Cody Crawler. Hey, Cody Crawler retired though that last time. Hey, PD, did you know that Cody Crawler retired when he became uh Jerron Boost in his mandatory? He was a mandatory last year. He retired. That boy Cody Crawler don't want none of Jerron in his man. Yeah, me too. I ain't gonna lie. I'm a huge. I like Keith Thurman. Hey, PD, you know, hey, I know you probably been watching P, uh, Keith Thurman since HBO, like I have. Keith Thurman used to be on HBO, man. He been out there a long time, dog. He need a big win. Keith Thurman, get this, man. I ain't gonna be mad. He win this fight. He about seven pounds. Tim Zoo about seven pounds. They gonna they gonna eventually fight though. They're going to eventually be in the same weight class. They're around the same age. They're going to eventually fight. Because Keith Thurman um, just went up to 54. It's not a lot of people that uh, Ennis can fight at 47 over the next three or four years, I don't think. I don't think he's going to move up soon to fight at 54, but I think he's going to give it some thought eventually as far as the bigger fights. They got a lot of names at 54. 54 is very deep. That's going to be the next weight class that's going to have some guys. It's like if Jerron Ennis went to 54 right now, that would be a whole different weight class. They got a lot of guys at 54. I feel like he'll make that weight class even better. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, what was it? Oh, no, hey, PD, I heard that was the second time. Hey, PD, that was Jerron Ennis said. And I heard that was the second time he retired. He retired, like, right after he became a mentor. I ain't even know what Jerron Ennis said. He keep retiring. I was like, Re keep retiring? I thought he was joking. And then somebody else said it in the comments, like, I think on the zone fight. I went and looked it up, man. He did retire twice. I said, wow. This is, like, the last year. I ain't talking about like no TFM or retire. He retired like as soon as he became a mandatory. <laughs> Those American shorts. <laughs> Before the, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, PD, you talking about the American shorts? Keith Thurman used to fight in? PD crazy. PD crazy, man. Yeah, Ennis do got a wide open lane. He do got a wide open lane for real. Ennis really that guy. That I think they're trying to make Ennis crash out in the Crawford fight. I'm gonna be real with y'all. They don't, they don't, they don't make no other guys crash out like that. They trying to make Ennis uh and Crawford crash out. I'm gonna be real because they weren't thinking about that Crawford versus Ennis fight last year. I was trying to get Ennis to fight uh I mean not Ennis but I was trying to get. They didn't say nothing when Ennis called out uh Earl Spence. Y'all remember when Earl Spence was at the fight uh, at um Jerron in his fight and he called out Earl Spence? Ain't nobody said nothing. I was like, oh man, y'all gonna try to feed Earl Spence to uh Crawford. I know how y'all is. Yeah, for five years, man. Long time. Five years, bro. That's a long time. That is a long time. I think, I think though, to be honest with you, if if Jerron Ennis can kind of hold his own at 47 for a little bit, he can kind of, he can kind of, he can make a name for himself for a long time. I don't think a lot of guys want to fight him at 47. I don't think nobody wants to fight him at 40, especially those little guys at 140. That'll never happen. Them guys don't want no work at, uh, against Jerron Ennis. Yeah, he, he gonna fight more. It's just that uh that Amazon contract, man. That Amazon contract they got right now, PD. They only gonna be fighting one time a month, man. I'm not gonna lie though, PD. That if hey, if you ain't looked at that card, March 30th, PD, them dudes, that March 30th card that Tim Zoo and uh Keith Thurman gonna be on, bro. If you don't buy a pay per view, they'll make you buy a pay per view. That card stat, they got six fights on there. 
They got six car fights on there that's going to be loaded. They got a good card for March 30th. Nobody else putting on fights like this. But that PBC card for March 30th, it's going to be worth the wait. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It's going to be big fights on there. Bruh, that March 30th card, that might be the best card we've seen in a long time. That March 30th card might be good, man. It might be the best card we've seen in about a year and a half. Yeah, I know. Before them youngsters get up there. I don't know if they want to get up there too soon, though. Hey, they hey, good, go good. I don't know if they want to go up there right now. Them young guys get up there, man. They're going to stop all that. They're going to be like, hey. We ain't trying to hear all that. They're going to try to gang up on uh, Jerome Ennis. It's going to be good. That's going to make some good action. You know what I'm saying? I want to see him. Uh, I just want to see Jerome Ennis fight Gary Russell, uh, Gary Antoine Russell, and uh, Tim Zoo. You know what I'm saying? To be honest, I want to see them two fights. Those are the fights I went, I've been waiting on. I thought Crawford would get the uh, Canelo fight, so I wasn't really thinking about him and Ennis. To be honest, but if that fight happened, I'm not gonna be mad at it. Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that, man. Shoot, I'm, hey, that some of them cars be the best ones. The ones that ain't got no names on them. Yeah, I can't help. I can't help it, man. I, I watch any kind of fight now. I was gonna watch the fight that came on last night. Yeah, I think he got a lot of time to uh, make some things happen, though. He got a good five years where he can make a run, but can't nobody t touch him. You know, Earl Spence went on a five-year run. And and to be honest with you, you know, Spence was hurt a lot of times during that five-year run he took. You know, he had that accident. You know, he's been out a lot. Of, he, he hasn't fought a lot the last couple of years. So guys don't really have to be super active um, around there. Man, you talking about the older Jerry, Gary or Gary Russell uh Jr. The uh well the older Gary Russell who fought uh Lomachenko, bro, he um he almost got that tank fight. Like they was thinking about fighting him on a tank fight. They was possibly looking at him and uh Frank Martin. I thought that. They was going to go with him instead of Frank Martin, but he could have got that um, Tank Davis fight. But, he, you know, he was rehabbing his shoulder. He's looking for a fight to happen right now. I think Gary Russell's 35, 36. So he's looking for about two or three more fights to kind of happen, especially. But he's in trainer mode. Yeah, he in trainer mode. I hope, I hope not he on that two-year plan, bro. Yeah, Canelo not taking that. Canelo not taking that risk right now. Not right now. If he was, that's kind of what Canelo should be doing. If I was Canelo, I'd kind of do that. You know, Canelo would be the best thing smoking. He kind of fight Crawford, Benavidez, a guy like Ennis, or Tim Zoo or somebody. Yeah, he'll, he'll be the biggest thing in years if he did that. Yeah, Andre Ward doing the same thing, man. Yeah, I was ho I was hoping that tank would have got on that Gary Russell. Yeah, Gary Russell hurt his shoulder. He hurt his shoulder. He hurt his shoulder. Hey, let me ask y'all a question. I I was thinking about this the other day. What was you talking about, PD for who? What you mean? What was I saying? Oh yeah, for tank. Gary Russell was talking about a fight for tank. Oh, Benavidez and Crawford. Canelo not taking that risk for Benavidez or Crawford. Canelo don't want that work. Canelo don't want that work with Benavidez or Crawford. That ain't going to happen, man. But, yeah, I was talking about uh, Gary. Yeah, Frank Martin and uh, Gary Russell would be, uh, would be good, though. I'm not going to lie, but. 
That's what I'm saying, though, PD. I was thinking more like Tank would have fought Gary Russell and then uh, Frank Martin. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking Tank. I'm thinking Tank that guy like that. Like Frank fight Gary Russell in January. Gary Russell ain't fought in what a year, two years. Fight Gary Russell in January, then fight Frank Martin in June. I'm trying to see some fights like that, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm not asking Tank to fight a Devin Haney or somebody. Hey, fight Gary Russell. He older. You know what I'm saying? Fight a Frank Martin. That's the kind of fights we're looking for, PD. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. A few months? Come on, dog. And look, the only reason I'm even saying that like that because Tank is his prime right now. Him and Canelo ain't got that many years left. I mean, if I'm Tank, what, Tank going to fight, what, two times this year? Then three times next year? So you got, what, five good fights in them left? Because 135 getting deep. So you got, what, five good fights left in them. Canelo got probably two or three. Yeah, it would. But I, I had thought about something, too, though, uh, PD. You remember when Gary Russell's arm went out, his shoulder went out? I was trying to think, was that fight more entertaining than that Shakur Stevenson fight? I think it was. When he hurt his wrist, I'm like, man. And Gary Russell had one arm in that fight. And Gary Russell had one arm in that fight. That's what I think. I, that's what I thought. I was like, yeah, Gary Russell ain't that bad. You know what I'm saying? But the long layoffs, though, man, they can't. Can't be doing that, man. You probably got to find somewhere else to go to keep doing that uh, same guy. Yeah, especially when he fought with it, man. I was so mad he fought with that injury. But they was going to strip the belt anyway, so. But, yeah, that shoulder injury was crazy. Oh, they. I wonder if he will. His, uh, at his age, it can't happen again, though, to be honest. You're right. I don't want to say anything. Knock on wood, you know what I'm saying? But. You are right. Them shoulder injuries is nothing to play with, especially in Boston. I don't even know how he hurt his shoulder. I think it was like in training or something. It wasn't in the fight. Yeah, I want to see uh, Tank uh, fight a couple of guys like that. I don't know if he's going to speed up these fights he's putting together, but 135 is super deep. We was talking about that last night, PD. They talking about uh Raymond Miratai and um William Zapata trying to fight uh Shakir Stevenson. Shakir Stevenson fighting uh in July in uh New Newark, New Jersey. Yep, Shakir Stevenson next fight gonna be in New Jersey. I ain't gonna lie, if I can actually make it up there, I actually go to that fight. I would actually go to that fight. That'll be in July. Yeah, that's that's a good fight. So I think a lot of these fights coming together right now are going to be big, though. It's going to be the younger guys, though. It's not going to be the older guys. Like, I mean, Canelo, he's fighting Mungi. I mean, that's a decent fight. I mean, Mungi is a younger guy. We haven't seen uh, Canelo fight too many younger guys, so it's probably the only thing that's good about that fight. He's not fighting an old man, so, I mean, you got to give him credit as far as that. But, yeah, these guys need to fight a little bit more now. Fighting two times a year, it's getting kind of played out. That's why a lot of other guys starting to come in and kind of make moves in boxing. Because if Gano's kind of shown, like, the money don't really matter. Guys going to come into boxing. And Gano can fight a guy like Fury. and um, He can fight a guy like Fury and Anthony Joshua. Get a bag. And he ain't got to worry about um, matchmaking and waiting until next year. And this guy fights on only May and – you know, they, he made moves that he he get, he getting out of there. He might fight again. Guys really ain't active no more. They definitely not active. But I see now that um with these fights coming up, we're gonna have to try to uh test boxing. See if Canelo's really at that level where he can kind of dodge some kind of backlash from a Mike Tyson fight. But I, man, I be, I don't know, man. Mike Tyson fight look like it's gonna be bigger right now. I mean, Mike Canelo just had the worst look. 
He just had Mike Tyson announce the fight the same weekend he did. That's like the worst thing that could have happened for Boston. And then in Ganu fight happened what last weekend, and the Mike Tyson news was so big that all that just overcrowded all this. It overshadowed everything. Then the Ryan Garcia stuff going on. You know, Canelo's having a hard time announcing this fight right now. They got a press conference. Uh, they're going to start in, what, March 19th, five days from now? They're going to have the uh, press conference. So what is that? Um, on a Tuesday, probably? I don't know, man. I don't know if this fight's going to really pull in the uh, audience like it's supposed to. Technically, this, this fight's supposed to save boxing right now. You know what I'm saying? Canelo supposed to be in a position where, like I said, Floyd wasn't going to let a Jake Paul be fighting in his era. But for some reason, Canelo think that Jake Paul is because boxing is bad. No, nah, you the face of boxing. If you was making fights big enough, nobody would be paying attention to Jake Paul. You fight Mike Munguia and, bro, you got to realize, like, fans know more about Mike Tyson than they know about Munguia. Who you think they're going to go pay for? No, nah, don't don't think, man. Look, I seen I seen channels that got like church. I seen church YouTube channels. I seen church YouTube channels. I got somebody who I know somebody that doesn't even like boxing. They keep sending me Mike Tyson uh fight updates. They don't even watch boxing. I'm like, what is going on? Why am I keep keep getting Mike Tyson updates? I thought the fight wasn't until July. People are talking about this fight like it's tomorrow. Yeah, but his fan his fan base ain't happy right now. His fan his fan base is not happy. They definitely not happy. When I seen um like the fans over here, yeah, they they happy, but in Mexico, they kind of upset, you know what I'm saying? I think that's why he kind of announced the the fight as far as um having them Watch the fight for free on the network when he said, I got a big announcement. I'm going to let the uh, Mexican fans watch the fight for free because I think Amazon wanted the rights to the Mexican fights, to the, uh, the rights to the fights in Mexico when Canelo fights. But they end up getting uh, free, um, free television, I guess. We got to pay for the fights, but they get it for free. So, you know, Canelo, had he trying to cater to the uh, Mexican fans right now. Because we the only one paying for the fights. Like, when most of these fights happen, only Americans got to pay for the fights. Like, most of the time when they have fights and you have, like, a zone or a match room, most of the time UK fans don't have to pay for the fights. They just got to get Sky Sports or whatever network they have over there, and they watch it. And then most of us, we pay for the, uh, the app or we'll buy the uh, pay-per-view. But a lot of these guys, they don't have to pay for these fights. We the, we the fan base that actually paying for everything. Most of these guys, even if uh, Mexican fans wanted to buy the pay-per-view, they can't because they're getting it for free. So we the fan base that's really buying everything, like the, the boxing fans over here, because everywhere else is free. UK gets their fights for free most of the time. They had a couple of pay-per-views, but mostly they had some free fights, especially ones that's kind of in between with us. I forgot what the last one was. I don't know if it was in Ghana or something, but it might have been. But they, they cross-promote a lot, and it's it kind of helps, but it all depends. But right now, Canelo's fan base is actually huge because, like Go Good said, because I didn't realize it, but a lot of Triple G's fans are now Canelo fans, and uh, somebody else that Canelo's fought, Caleb Plant. Um, Charlo. So a lot of times when Canelo fights these guys, he gets a lot of their fans too. So he definitely has the biggest fan base right now. But I don't know if it's going to be enough to kind of hold up boxing right now with the way things are going. I'm trying to see if his fight is going to be bigger than because I know the Ryan Garcia fight is going to be two weeks before Canelo fight. I'm trying to see if the fight between Canelo and Ryan Garcia, I mean, not Canelo and Ryan Garcia, Canelo and uh, 
my gear is going to be bigger than the uh, Ryan Garcia fight. Everybody's talking about the Ryan Garcia fight. It sold out in New York ASAP. You know what I'm saying? That New York fight, New York been begging for a fight lately. So Ryan Garcia, everybody's talking about Ryan Garcia right now. I think Ryan Garcia's, his fight right now, the most talked about fight right now. So it's going to surprise me what happens when he fights Devin Haney in a couple of weeks. That'll kind of show us where, where boxing's at right now. Because, to be honest with you, I was kind of nervous about can, um, can Ryan Garcia kind of pull in a lot of fans right now in a big fight, but it looks like he's doing it right now. I don't know if this is a, a plan, but yeah. Yeah, Ryan Garcia versus Devin Haney in a couple of weeks. Um, Then we're going to have Canelo versus Munguia. Then we're going to have Tank Davis. I think that Tank Davis fight going to sell because they're going to have uh, David Benavidez on there. So I think that's one reason. Yeah, he definitely over trolling for that fight. Ryan doing too much for that fight. I said that today too, go good. I said he doing too much. He's going live every every five minutes. Yeah, he's doing too much. If he would man, because he got what four or five weeks left. If he would have just sat back and just relaxed right now, he'll be good. But yeah, he's doing too much right now. He's trolling too hard. I mean, a lot of stuff he's saying, people agree with, but like I said, got a fight coming up. Yeah, me too. Yeah, more. Yeah, the the more you see anybody, it kind of like wears you off. You know what I'm saying? When especially when a guy's overdoing it, it's kind of like, come on now. But you know what's crazy though? Go good. It might get even worse though. You might want to see him get knocked out so bad you pay for the uh pay per view. It might be a lot of people that say, "Man, I want to just see him get knocked out at this point." So it might work out for him. You know, he the ultimate uh, he know how to sell a fight, man. I don't know. I didn't expect him to do all this, but and I don't even know if he is trying to just sell a fight. But I'm just saying, like, from what I know, he know how to sell a fight. That's definitely, but I know one thing, you know, Ryan Garcia definitely, like, he definitely wants to outsell Canelo. I got a video coming out about that later on. Ryan Garcia said that uh, he mad that Canelo um, got a zone deal, but he doesn't. That makes a lot of sense, though. Ryan Garcia sold, what, over a million pay-per-views? I thought he would have had his own zone deal by now. I mean, if he's mad about that, if I was another company like PVC or somebody, I'd be trying to give Canel, uh, Ryan Garcia his own deal right now. Or Amazon or somebody. He says he wants his own deal. He's putting on big fights. He's putting on big fights. For, I'm definitely going to watch the fight. It's not something I've been talking about a lot over time, but I'm definitely going to watch it. It's not really that many big big fights to really try to ignore this one. People act like uh, in boxing, we got a lot of fights going on right now to the point where, I mean, as far as a pay-per-view, yeah, you got to choose. But when it comes down to a, a fight like Ryan Garcia versus Haney, you got to, you, you know, you're going to have to pay for that. Yeah, he is. He is. I know he done made Devin mad, too. I know that Devin ain't been saying much lately. He put that tape out about Devin. I'm like, ah, oh, man. He still got to fight him. You know what I'm saying? He's just making him more mad. That's what's going to help the fight, though. That's what's going to help the fight. Because now people are looking at it like, man, you know, Devin Haney might try to walk through Ryan Garcia now. Or a lot of people might think, you know, Devin Haney looked bad in that sparring against Tank. He might get knocked out by Ryan. People saying that, man. You know what I'm saying? So it's a, it's a fight. You know, anything can happen. But they think that now. So it's a lot of narratives Ryan Garcia pushing that's helping the fight.
Yeah, he, he definitely doing a lot. Yeah, sponsor's gonna be scared to touch him. Hey, you know it's crazy. I wonder if he still got that Gatorade deal. I wonder if he still got that Gatorade deal. I'm like, man. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good point. I wonder if uh, he's still gonna keep his uh his sponsorships, man, because he's doing a lot right now. You said Bud ducking uh boots. Hey, let me ask you a question. Yeah, probably not for long. You said Bud uh ducking boots. I'm glad you said that. Okay, I'm glad you said that. You're a Bud fan. I'm. I seen you before. What's up, Demond? I'm. I'm asking. I'm. I'm asking this question now, Demond. Can you see? Can you see? Uh, can you see boot stopping? Uh, yeah, I got, I got a strain yard. Yeah, I do. Oh, you're not a Devo. Oh, what's going on, bro? I gotta remember that to call you Devo. Now, I don't, I don't think, I don't think he, I don't think, I don't. Are oh, you talking Link? Oh, bet. Shoot. I don't even know how to do that. How you do that? I do. Oh, okay, cool. Cool, we can debate. Go ahead. I got a link right there. I ain't never invited nobody, so I don't know how to do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, no, nobody got no money right now. Oh, what's going on, bro? What's happening with you, player? Man, chill, man. I seen you in here for a bit, dog. What's going on with you? Man, just cooling, man. I'm trying to trying to talk some boxing shit with you, man. Talk no boxing shit with, no, with niggas in a while, man. Yeah, man. I appreciate that, dog. You're my first person I done had up here before. I ain't never did it before. But yeah, man. Uh. Uh, say, say what you want about that. Uh, let me, I'm gonna give you the floor, man. Let you speak for sure. I mean, shit, we ain't even probably got no spectator before. We could just turn up, me and you. Fuck it. People come in, they come in, but shit. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. keep it funky, man. I'm a Bud fan, bro. And I ain't gonna lie, I don't know. Me too. Um, I, this it's kind of deep with me with this Bud and Boot situation for real. Cause like you, you probably heard of H Money, huh? Mm hmm. Like me and him had a falling out because of this shit, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm still a I'm still a Bud fan. Like I'm always gonna be a Bud fan, no matter you yeah. know what the nigga do, unless he just do some real whole ass shit. But he ain't got that in his blood to do that. Because then the days, this shit just boxing, you know. When it comes yeah, to like real yeah. life shit, I could tell he a real man of principles, character, integrity, and he stand on what he stand on. I'm always gonna respect that, you know, despite right. the boxing shit. But just yeah. strictly boxing, man. <clears throat> Excuse me. It started off with H Money, man. He got a campaign going on because he's sucking these Philly. He got a bunch of Philly niggas he go live with, so he's sucking a dick. And I know why he's sucking a dick, you know what I'm saying? Because he know Boots about to take over, so he trying to ride the wave early, so you know what I'm saying? So he, oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's why he's okay. doing this shit. So oh. at the time, like, I was, I'm still a big time Bud fan, but you know, real recognized, real. You, you know, I used, to, I used to defend Bud like, nah, man, that motherfucker ain't ducking boots like boots. He got to do this and that, like he ain't got his weight up. But then mm -hmm. when I started really just peeping it, I'm like, oh no, he kind of got a point. And then one night, oh no, this nigga Ace Money just flipped on the nigga like we was cool. He flipped, and I know why he flipped on me because he wanted to show off for them Philly niggas. So you know. I ain't gonna say it's up or nothing, but I ain't fuck with this bitch. Yet. He a bitch to me now. Like, you know, and if I ever seen H Money, but he never go out in person, I'm gonna smack the nigga, you know what I'm saying? But you know, that's neither here or there. But it, it led to me now seeing like Bud really ducking boots, bro. Cause ain't no way every time you go to the media, like you can see all over the media, they always mention them boots. What's up with boots? What's up with boots? And then you always listen to Bud response, it's it's duck talk. Like at this mm -hmm. point, I'm starting. I'm gonna make this shit a phrase. Duck talk, nigga. You, your favorite fighter start talking about how he don't want to fight a nigga, and he make all these silly ass excuses. It's straight duck talk, bro. And a lot of your favorite boxers, they real fluent in duck talk. <laughs> real fluent in that shit. 
Okay. And that's the, the nature of the beast, you know what I'm saying? Okay. But my thing, all right, I have a question about this, though, because I agree on everything you said. We kind of, I ain't going to lie, we agree about the same thing. But this is my thing with boxing, though, as a whole, especially with 147. You know this all the way. Without, let's just say Bud Crawford wasn't at 47, right? Mm-hmm. Who, who Jerron Ennis going to fight? He can't fight nobody because all them niggas ducked him. That's what that's what nah. really pissed. Nah, that's what, what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying though. At 47 without Crawford, Ennis ain't got nobody, right? Shit, that's cap. At the time, he fucking had uh Thurman who ducked him. Keith definitely ducked the nigga. Keith, and then now you got Stanley on his. He ducking the nigga. Like, niggas is straight now, ducking. I'll say, I, I say uh, Crody Crawley duck worse. You know what I'm saying? You remember when Crody Crawley did that retirement thing? Yeah, he, Crowley, he, he, about Crowley to fight, he about to fight Cody Crawley, though. No, nah, he the mandatory, but he ain't. Cody Crawley ain't. But you know, who, you know who really started to duck with Boots? And that? I don't, a lot of niggas don't mention that shit, though. Fucking Sean Porter. No, nah, you know who actually was supposed to fight? Sean Porter ducked that nigga by retiring. I'm, I'm I don't, don't want to say retire early. He retired, he retired, but I feel like yeah, he yeah, retired because after she, you done fought the two top niggas at 147, Spence and Bud. Yeah, the next nigga up was Boots. He didn't want that smoke. Facts, so when he facts, seen that, he seen facts. like, damn, Boots the next nigga up. Young, hungry facts. ass, lying motherfuckers, mm -hmm. ready to take yeah. niggas head off. I'm retiring, nigga. I'm going straight to my podcast and just talk yeah. shit about niggas. Yeah, I'm you right. It started with Sean Porter, bro. You right. Cause he didn't want to take that. Sean, you know, he didn't want. He didn't want to take that. credit about Sean fighting the best of the best. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, Boost man, Boost got these boys ducking, bro, for sure, bro. I just gotta call it how I see it, bro. But what? Well, this is what people don't realize, though, bro. And I'm gonna tell you, Devo, it, this is what I don't like. What the fans did. You don't remember when? Um, I don't want to say it was the Clayton fight, bro. The Custio Clayton. I think it was the fight. It was a fight with Boots was outside. It must have been a Clayton yeah, fight. Yeah, that was the oh, Clayton mean, fight. Yeah, I remember that. You remember, I watched that. You remember, you, you remember when Spence was yeah, out? That was that was the fight. He was on the undercard with uh Mel and Castano. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That I was the undercard one. I remember that fight Dang. vividly. Hell yeah. So you remember when uh Spence was ringside and uh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you looked at Boots, Spence talking shit Boots like, like yeah, you next. And Boots up. was like, I want the I want the big fish. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I was like. I said, I thought Boost was finna call out Bud. He just called out Spence. I and mean, then, Spence and... definitely ducked him, but I feel like after Spence got his ass whooped by Bud, he ain't even in the equation no more, for real. No, but then what I'm trying to tell you, though, Spence had lost. Spence was a Boost mandatory when Boost had called him out of that fight. Hmm. Like, Boost, Boost was calling out Spence right there. Like, Spence, Boost ain't PVC. You know what I'm saying? Boost. Right now, Boots ain't really pay PVC like that. You know what I'm saying? Boots, Boots manages. And see that be duck talk too. I mean, I get it. You know, different promotional companies, but but like I always say, oh, no, you cutting out? What you say? Oh, no, I don't wait on bro to come back. He's still going. Are hey, you still there, Devo? They cutting out a little bit. Yeah, I understand what Devo talking about. I understand what he's saying. I understand exactly what Devo talking about because a lot of a lot of people trying to wait out. Uh, a lot of a lot of people waiting out. Uh, Jerron Ennis right now, and the bad part. Hey, Devo. Hey. Let me see if I. You good now? Man, he dropped off. But yeah, I understand what he's saying, though, because Jerron Ennis ain't got a lot of competition down there. And nobody really trying to pass him the torch. You know what I'm saying? Jerron Ennis really going to be the only 47, like Devo said, that's actually going to end up dropping into the uh, equation as far as a 47. And what? He going to have a standing onus and a Thurman not there. So he ain't got Thurman no more. Yeah, I, I understand what bro talking about, about that. I agree with everything he said. That's how I've been feeling over the years. But I didn't know. That's why I felt like what Jerron Ennis going to be. I knew they weren't going to try to throw him in front of uh Spence before the uh, Crawford fight. But I feel like now is, is Jerron Ennis going to be the focus at 47 or they just going to move him, move him past 
and just think about 54 now? Because I feel like now they kind of moving towards 54 with Jerron, even though he has a belt. Most of the guys at 47, they not really guys who's got a belt right now. They kind of got they got to get a belt. And I don't think he's going to try to wait around for them to get a belt. He's probably going to try to get a belt before they do. Another belt, you know what I'm saying, as far as the ones that Terrence Crawford has, especially if Terrence Crawford doesn't do mandatories or anything like that, and they kind of fall to the wayside. But if Terrence Crawford end up with them belts like that, it's going to be a wrap. If he just gets stuck with him, but if it's with Jerron Ennis, ain't nobody going to fight him. He already got one fight right now. And like he said right now, with Cody Crawley and the standing onus, I don't know what's going on with standing onus. Standing onus right now, he asking for uh, Crawford other belts. They want He want a belt from Crawford, like vacated or something. <laughs> go good, crazy. Hey, go good, you crazy, boy. What's going on? Yeah, my fault, man. My shit got. I know you like where he went. My my shit over here. Oh yeah, you good, you good. Yeah, over yeah, here. Yeah, I understand what you're saying because right now, like at 47, don't nobody really got a chance for um for uh I would say a chance for Jerome Ennis to kind of prove himself because you know when Earl Spence was coming up, he had guys that he can kind of latch on to like a uh Sean Ford or somebody like that. But with Jerome Ennis right now, he kind of got to wait on either. If it's not Bud, yeah, he, like right now, I ain't gonna lie, it's it's real bad for Boots, bro. He came in at the wrong air because he really like the only competition he got is them older niggas, bro. Them niggas ain't trying to fight him, you know. They ain't trying to fight so he can't, nobody like me right saying that, like he he don't really got a big money fight. That's why I'm kind of pissed off at Bud, like because like damn, like y'all not giving this young nigga shot. And the crazy thing is, real nigga shit, bro. Like, even though I want them niggas to fight, and I feel like Bud ducking them, I ain't going to lie. If they was to fight, I would put my money on Bud. I feel like he yeah. could keep the nigga, like, yeah. honestly. Yeah. But we can't, ain't nothing. I can't say too much if they don't get in the ring. You feel me? I don't think that, uh, and my thing is this right here. Uh, Yeah, that is true, though. Like, they for real, for real, get... Boots going to have to move up to 154 or somebody. Yeah, like, if, I, bro. if I was Boots, if I was Boots management team, real nigga shit, Cause one forty seven, this this shit gonna be a cake wall for his yeah, ass. Yeah, yeah, real yeah. nigga shit. Like if I was his management team, that's how. I ain't went out again. You still here? Dang. He was cooking too. Hey, he right though. Dang, went out again. Yeah, he right though, man. If I'm, if I'm boost, I'm going to fifty four, man. Cause the way it's looking right now, I mean. All the decent little fights he can make. He'll miss out on money trying to stay at 50, 47. Yeah, he right about that. He'll miss out on money trying to stay at 47. Them guys at 47 not trying to make nothing happen. That weight class, that used to be my favorite weight class. That's why when Devin Henning said, I think about going to 47, I'm like, man, you go to 47, I'm not finna watch anything. With Devin Haney on there as far as 47. Ain't nobody there. Who is he going to fight at 47? Yeah, facts. Facts. Don't nobody want to put the money up. Man, that's why a lot of these fights going to get made in Saudi Arabia. People better hope that Bud fight don't happen in Saudi Arabia. That fight happened in Saudi Arabia, you're going to hear a lot of guys tomorrow. I'll fight Bud. If that fight happens, it's going to be crazy. They don't have no money for the fights over here no more. That's why I'm kind of afraid. I'm like, man, they overpaying for Canelo. We need kind of uh, Jerron Ennis to kind of get some of that money. If he, if he going to be the next star. But my thing is, they're not trying to headline him right now. They don't feel like he'll be a headliner on... Um, Amazon. I think they tried to do him as a co-main event. Well, he's going to be a co-main event, but I think they're going to try to do him as a co-main event, then try to headline him next fight, but I thought Jerron Ennis would have been good enough to get headlined right now. I thought he would have been good enough to get headlined by now, but people ain't really trying to headline right now.
<laughs> if you ain't like Canelo or Monkey, then they got Tank, Frank Martin. I don't know what the next fight gonna be. It's kind of crazy because they, they didn't really want to uh have Benavidez as headline. Yeah, they are. It's crazy at this point. It's a good, it's a good thing, but they gotta get some replacements. Like top rank, Bob Aram, he could put he could put random fights together because he got a lot of talent right now. He ain't gotta worry about Lomachenko losing to Devin, Devin Haney. You know what I'm saying? He can make another fight. But these other companies, they kind of they letting them hurt. They letting that hurt them right now. And then you're gonna need a guy like Jerron Ennis to kind of carry you, but you're gonna need some talent around him. At 47, you don't want everybody else to kind of get out of town at 47. I think the only thing PVC can kind of offer him is what? Uh, Tim Zhu. Guys like Lubin at 54. Jesus Ramos. PVC got a lot of guys at 54, but 47? Nah, I don't think I don't think T, uh, Keith Thurman going to take the fight. I think Jerron and his uh, manager passing away recently, messing up a lot of things right now, though. It's a lot of stuff happening at the wrong time right now. So I don't know what kind of fight Jerron Ennis had lined up before the guy passed away. So it could be a whole nother plan right now. Well, it's definitely a whole nother plan because he don't got the same guy at the table. But yeah, Debo would definitely uh tell him the truth though. Like at the end of the day, it's kind of like the fans right now, they want to see the best. Cause I can't really say that. Tell a fan right now, hey, no, nah, I don't want you. You shouldn't see Crawford fight this guy. No, nah, I mean, it's probably one of the last fights they're going to see see from Crawford. So they definitely want to see a Jerron Ennis versus Terrence Crawford. Because we might not see Jerron Ennis with a, in, a, uh, in the ring with a guy like that. And a lot of people don't want to say what if right now. So it makes a lot of sense. I understand what Devo talking about. I actually felt like that. The only reason I don't feel like that right right, right, right now because I kind of letting it go, but I don't know. He kind of making too much sense again, man. Kind of bringing them old ideas back. For real, because he's telling the truth about that. That's a fact. Yeah, they don't want to take the risk no more. But people got to uh, realize that the risk in Boston is the reward. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people still talking about they want to see Ngannou. And he just got knocked down the second round. I'm like, dang, they still want to watch him? Yeah. Some people look at boxing totally different. They don't look at boxing the same as everybody else as far as the O's. And... Yeah, people care more about the risk than the reward. That's all I care about. That's all I really care about in boxing. That's why Mike Tyson's still that guy. I'm telling you. He don't got no big wins, but he got big fights. He made big fights, and that's, that's what matters in boxing. That's what matter in UFC, shoot. Guys been worried about big fights. A lot of those guys have a lot of losses, too. Yeah, I think it's a wrap on that, man. I think it is. The way he was on the ground the last time, I was like, man, he he been on the ground too long. I don't want to see him get in the ring no more. Yeah, I don't think he should do it. I think he kind of putting himself in a bad position doing that. But Engano, you know, he put in a lot of work, though. But at the same time, I just want boxers to kind of take tougher uh, fights than he's taking. Yeah, if he UFC, I'll check it out. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Especially right now. Man, bad, too. Bad. He got slept bad. He got put to sleep bad. I haven't seen a guy step into a punch like that in a minute, man. And then it was a one-punch knockout. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. But, yeah, the game got to change as far as boxing, though. Yeah, I saw that other clip. I ain't got that first one. Did you see the first one when he got knocked down? And I, I didn't even want to. I ain't. Even, I didn't even want to make a fuss about it because I seen it the first time. I was like, "Yeah, I think everybody's just talking." That's. But the other one, you seen the other one? The first time he got knocked down, they look like he touched. Honestly, I think maybe I'm seeing things, but I don't know. It didn't look like it at first.
that's the bad thing, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't know the guy like that. I don't know if he'll do nothing like that, but yeah, that first one, man, it looked crazy. Yeah, I got, I got to, I got to watch that uh, first one on my own. I seen the clip of it, but I got to watch that. That's crazy. Because when he fell down the way he did, I was like, I ain't seen nobody fall down from a knock. Yeah, I, to, yeah. To be honest, a lot of people didn't really. Uh, the, the way he got knocked down, people said, I ain't never seen nobody get knocked out like that. We've been watching knockouts all our life. We ain't never seen nobody get knocked out like that. So, yeah, it did look r real suspect. I don't know if it was real or not, but it just didn't look normal, like a normal knockout. It really didn't. But maybe he, him being such a big guy. But, yeah, it did look kind of crazy, man. I agree with what you're saying. You ain't saying nothing crazy right now. Most people said the same thing. Just don't know. It was a lot of money on the table, too. That's what people do got to realize. It was a lot of money that was on the table. Yeah. And and he had his, he had his palms out. Yeah, he had his palms up and everything. He didn't even, he didn't ball. I don't, that was crazy. He didn't ball his fists up. I thought he had great reaction time. I, I don't know. I'm confused. I'm confused. I don't want to uh sound like I'm complaining about the knockout, but you know, when you see a guy like uh, uh Usyk go go two fights with um Joshua and him get clipped like that, it's kind of like man. Kind of crazy to see him knock out a gun like that. That's the only thing that caught me off guard. I'm saying, I thought Usyk, you know, maybe Usyk has a chin. You know what I'm saying? It looked like Usyk got a crazy chin. Yeah, Usyk got a crazy chin. That's what it, that's what I'm looking at right now. I haven't seen Usyk buzz yet by a shot to the chin, so. I don't know if Tyson Fury can kind of outbox it for 12 rounds. Especially after seeing that, uh, because you know, people say that uh the Nganu loss makes Tyson Fury look worse. But I think, you know, Nganu, it actually made Usyk look better because for Nganu to get knocked out like that, you know, Usyk gotta have a chin. He fought uh Joshua for two fights. 24, he went 24 rounds and didn't get buzzed like that. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of scared to pick Tyson now, man. I was kind of on on the bandwagon, but now I'm kind of like, I don't know, man. I'm definitely nervous about the pick. I don't know if I'm gonna go with Tyson now. The fight been, <laughs> the fight been so far apart, man. You know what I'm saying? People just changing the uh, changing my pick over and over. I just don't know what I'm uh, who I'm gonna go with. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna go with Fury this time. I wanted to. But man, I don't know. Yeah, he definitely going to. He's definitely gonna have to. I don't know how he's gonna fight in this fight either. I don't know what kind of strategy he's gonna come with. I don't know if he's gonna fight from the outside or I have no clue what he's gonna do. That's the craziest thing about the whole uh the fight. I just don't know. Tyson Fury, you know, he can come out doing anything. He fought in Gano a lot different uh after he got knocked down. So, you know, he can switch it up a lot of ways. So I don't know how he's gonna come out as far as against uh Usa. Usa can, uh he can move around a lot. He can definitely move around a lot. It's gonna be a different style matchup though. It's something we never seen with uh Tyson Fury. Oh yeah, he definitely gonna be on the outside. Yeah, he definitely gonna be on the outside. I think being being on the inside that'll give Usyk a uh, advantage because his arms so short. 
Fury got a punch down. So, yeah. I feel like on the outside, that'll definitely work for Fury. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to be in good enough shape to do that. He, he's always in decent shape. shape. I'm not saying it like he's not going to be able to uh, move around for 12 rounds, but I don't know what kind of fight he's going to be doing. I don't know if he's going to be expecting a jab or I think Usy going to try to make him exchange most of the fight. So Fury, gonna, he's going to use his stamina, you know what I'm saying? We're going to see how good of a shape he, he's in. If he comes in slim, and he might have some uh, workout for him, but he definitely gonna have to be on the move, not not running, but just like, you know, steady, not standing in the pocket, just taking shots. But that's gonna be a good fight, though. That's why I, these next couple of months, it's gonna be some good fights coming on. Like the fights this weekend gonna be good. The Payton, uh, Floyd Schofield, all those, those fights gonna be good. So the next couple of weeks, we're gonna have fights every, on every weekend. So. It's going to be all right. It's going to basically all the way up to when uh, Canelo fights. It's going to be a fight on every week. One or two fights. Yeah, man. He might be a liability now for real. I, <clears throat> and I and I heard that cut is on the same eye where he heard it on uh, the Otto Wallen fight. Same cut. So it might open back up. I didn't know that, but I guess his scar tissue or whatever is kind of bad right there. But he's definitely going to have to show up, man. If that, if that eye opens up, if I was Usyk, I'd, I'd go for that eye during the fight. But if it opens up during the fight, oh, he hurt his eye? Yeah, I seen it. I didn't see a good angle of it, but it look crazy. Usa said it looks fake. Hey, what you think about the video? Usa said it looked fake to him. I forgot to do a video about that. He said it looked fake, though. He said, how can a guy hit you in the top of your eye like that and you got a head gear on and he's punched you in the chin? Yeah, that's what it looked like. That's what it looked like to me. And the guy was short. You know what I'm saying? That was a short guy. And he had a head gear on. Yeah, Usa said, man, that don't look right. I didn't understand it. They said they said some medical records, but yeah, man, I thought I thought so as well. I did too. Because if they would have had that fight already, we would have been on to the rematch already. Yeah, I don't think it was real. I don't think it was real. I do not think it was. I, I forgot. Somebody said it was fake. Man, I forgot who said it was fake. I don't think it was uh, Lennox Lewis, but it was somebody else. Yeah, I don't think it was fake. It, was def it, it wasn't close, though. It definitely wasn't close. Nah, he got away with one. I don't know why they postponed it, though. Sometimes they will postpone a fight like that, so I don't know. The stitches he got, they look pretty real, but we've seen Tyson Fury do some crazy things to get out of fights. That's what Klitschko said. But, yeah, that's going to be a very good fight, though. These next couple of weeks, man, we're going to have some good fights coming on. It's going to be real good fights. A lot of championship fights. But uh, this Haney, this Haney fight, then Canelo, and then Tank. Oh, here you go. What's going on, bro? You been sitting there a long time. Man, every time I get to cook, my shit really be getting cooked. My shit overheat. I'm going to give it one more go, man. If not, then oh, it's yeah. just to be. Yeah, you, oh, you good, bro. Sure. You, you, yeah, you was cooking, dog. Yeah, you was definitely cooking. But I agree with what you were saying. Though. Go ahead and finish what you were saying. Man, I forgot where I was at, bro. Where I was at? <laughs> Dang, that shit messing up. You were talking about uh, Jerron Ennis going to 54? Oh, you yeah. You talking about Jerron Ennis going yeah, to 54? I mean, yeah, 
Yeah, to get the big money fights, yeah, he gonna have to go to 54. Cause like look at 147. Ain't really nobody at 147 for him. Like as far as like a big name. You like to really get yeah. that 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 star, that superstar status. Oh yeah, yeah nah, nah, nah. Matter of fact, I do remember, I do remember I was about to say, yeah, nah, I'm glad you said that. Yeah, because yeah. I was saying something about like if I was drawing uh drawing boots uh management team on what I would do with them. This would be my plan for him. If I was like his uh promotional team, I would this would be my plan. Get because he already got the what IBF belt, right? They didn't hand that shit to him, right? What belt does oh, he have? Yeah, he got an IBF belt. Right. So if I was him, I would just like get all the belts. Get all the belts, get your weight up, get your name up like that, so you could become undisputed at 147. That's if you can't get a big fight at 154. Now, if he can get a big fight at 154 or higher, he got to take it. Like where he at in his career, he he got to take it. Like he got any. I feel like even 160 because the man like he could make 160. If he can get yeah, a he, good fight at yeah. 160 and 154, he got to take it. It ain't no if ands or buts. It don't matter if it's a belt or not. Like if it's a big name, 154, 160, he got to take that shit. Mm -hmm. But like, up if he can't get them type of fights, I say just. Just collect all the belts, get all the belts at 147, like on some shit Devin did. Like, even though they weren't really big names, you know what I'm saying? He was getting the belts off of. Just get the belts anyway. That way, you just make your resume look better. Like, it just give you more yeah. prestige. So, I would say get all the belts you can at 147. Once you become undisputed, then just go after all big money fights after that. Like, because he's still young. He was 26. Yeah. So, he got time. Gary Russell, yeah, I, uh, with yeah. Gary Russell, I feel like that's a good fight too. But he had one forty, man. But I feel mm -hmm. like that definitely be a good fight once you know Gary gets to moving again because Gary seemed mm -hmm. like he kind of got out of motion. Yeah, I think him and uh, I think him and Boots and uh Tim Zoo that's gonna be the big fights on down the line, like two or three years from now, probably four years. She I think they'll probably make three. something. Happen. They probably make that shit happen sooner than that. No, that uh, that Tim Zoo versus Boots. You know they try, they trying to uh do that soon. You know that, right? That's they yeah. were trying to, they were trying to. But I ain't like Zoo. I feel like Tim Zoo. He 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 got to get past Thurman. Like I know Thurman old, but if you get, oh yeah, yeah, that's you, a good if fight. If you get a, if you get an eighty percent Thurman in there, like shit, he what? gonna give. Cause I ain't gonna lie, bro, man. Me me personally, I'm not a big Tim Zoo fan. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Like I. I I don't, I'm not a big Tim Zoo fan. That's why I wanted Jamel to fight the motherfucker, but Jamel didn't got that Canelo money. He didn't, shit, he didn't took some, he just chilling, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man, Jamel, man, he, bro, he was supposed to fight Tim Zoo and Keith, uh, Terrence Crawford last year. And yeah. instead of that, he went with uh, uh, Canelo. I'm like, bro, you could have got nah, I mean, I, I get it, bro. Canelo is like, you know, if you in boxing, bro, fight oh, yeah. Canelo, that's the Super Bowl. Bro, yeah, like, it, is. it is. is. Like you around yeah. that weight class, that's what your goal is. The fuck, if you if you around 154, 160, shit, even 175, like yo, your goal is to get that Canelo fight, bro. That's the Super Bowl, bro. Cause you're gonna get like, like that's a like like he said, payday, payday. Everybody want payday. You gonna be set for life off that Canelo fight for sure. That's why Mel chilling now. He didn't make that money. He just chilling like fuck that. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think he done though. Because uh he was talking about um who called him out recently? Berlanga called him out two weeks ago. Talking about fighting him and called him up. Berlanga but called out who? Jamel? Yeah, trying to fight him. You know, yeah, Berlango but... fraud. He got see, and this is another thing. I'm glad you spoke on Berlango fraud. Eh? He got David Morel. That's another nigga I fuck with hard too. I'm fucking with the Morel taking over. Oh yeah, Morel got yeah, Morel. Yeah, Morel right in his face. He talking about some. He want to fight male, and they both at 168. Oh, that what Morel has said to him when you say Morel got uh... Morel got the boy. So you seen Benavidez move to 175? I feel like that's one of the reasons. Man, the boys ducking Morel. Nah, bro. They nah, don't want to smoke with nah. Morel. Nah, Benavidez is coming back to 68. Um, Man. Benavidez taking this fight because the winner of this fight, he get Bene, he get Bitter Biv or uh, Bivol. That's why Canelo messing up because if uh, Benavidez go out there and beat Bivol before Canelo do, it just gonna make Benavidez I don't, I don't got Benavidez beating Bivol. I don't give a fuck about them damn sparring stories he keep talking about. <laughs> I don't got I, Bivol beating no damn. I don't. I mean, I don't got Bitter. I don't got uh Benavidez beating Bivol. Especially not, at, especially not at 175, maybe at 168, yeah, because then he's going to be a little bit drained. 
That 175, fuck no. They were going to box the shit out of fucking uh, Benavidez. They're going to box oh, yeah. that motherfucker up for 12 rounds straight. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Cause, shit, you, cause are you a I bad feel, man? I feel like uh, I don't know if they're going to fight. You talking about uh, against uh, Benavidez and Bilbo? Yeah, they have a. Yeah. You know, if yeah, you a bad well, man, we definitely could put some money. Oh, yeah. I definitely got Bilbo. Oh, yeah. Well, I, you know, I'm paying up. Yeah, that'll be a good. Hey, that's a good fight. I think that'll happen. I don't know if that's gonna happen though. Let me ask you a question. So, what if if Bivol lose the bitter Viv? You think that uh Benavidez versus Bivol still a good fight? You said if Bivol lose the bitter beater. Yeah, hell yeah, that's still a good fight. Cause that what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Just that, that's the thing, man. Just cause you take an L don't mean you know what I'm saying. That's what Floyd really fucked. Floyd, my favorite fighter, but he really fucked the game up for real, man. He fucked this shit up, man. Cause niggas is scared to take L's, man. Oh yeah, man. scared. They very niggas oh yeah, hold scared on. shitless to take an L. Hey, plus, yeah, I know you talking about plus. Plus, talking about this dude named uh Elijah Garcia. He got uh man, he got some power, dog. Uh, at 154, he supposed to be fighting a dude named Kyron Davis on um that Keith Thurman undercard. Man, that's gonna be a good fight. I ain't never heard of him yet. I got a, I got. Bro, I got look up, bro. His name is Elijah Garcia, bro. He I know Kyron Davis is. That's a nigga who got beat up by Ben, uh, Benavidez. Yeah, but the dude Elijah Garcia, man, he got hands, dog. They gonna have a good fight. Watch when, he, when they come he, on. He Mexican. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't too high on no Mexican fighter, bro. Sure. He got, bro. Bro, could they all he, could they all fight the fucking same like nah, that bro. Mexican he, style he, shit? Nah, like it's cool. Nah, Gar- balls, nah so. Garcia, Garcia fight like a Charlo. I got to check him out, man. Yeah, he fight like a Charlo, bro. I wouldn't even throw him out, bro. He fight like a Charlo. What you said, like, Elijah Garcia? Yeah, look him up. Yeah, I ain't never heard of him. Yeah, I'm gonna check him out for sure. Yeah, yeah he a problem. I was like, I looked him up a couple of weeks. I mean, a couple of months ago, I was like, man, who is this dude? And then when I looked him up. He is he actually is he actually like real Mexican or he Mexican American? Uh American. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna check him out for sure. Yeah, he out of I think he out of Arizona or Benavidez down there from. Yeah, they said uh you heard about uh you heard about Boo Boo. They said uh Boo Boo and Morel post a fight on the undercard of Tank and Frank. No, that's what I've been hearing. Wow, I thought That's he was gonna go to the fight for sure. That'd be a good fight for real, for real. But I ain't gonna lie, they they send Boo Boo up with that one, bro. Yeah, they is, yeah, bro. They you, know, Boo, ass up. You, know, <laughs> you know, Boo Boo. You know, Boo Boo been having these long layoffs. He older now. Mm-hmm. You know what Boo-Boo, time? Boo Boo probably at the point now. He just like, man, I'm just trying to get this money, get on out. Fuck yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he had some uh issue. I think uh one of his family members passed away last year, so he he got a lot of stuff. He's just trying to make some moves right now. He you know they holding up business. He's just trying to make something happen. That's why I don't want Gary Russell them to get in that position. I'm like, man, y'all gotta make something happen, dog. Yeah. For real. Yeah. You don't want to end up like boots. I mean, not boots, but uh, boo boo. Yeah, but I mean, shit. The, a lot of, I mean, a lot of them are to blame for that, bro. A lot of them are to blame for that, bro. Because you know, boo boo early in his career supposed to get them twin, the twin fight, but then shit fell through because the Rock Nation shit and some other shit. So. Lot like, sometimes yeah. you gotta take that shit when you were hot, man. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Might not come back around, man. Exactly. Oh yeah, Davis a beast. Kyron Davis a beast too. Uh, plus, Kyron Davis an animal. That's yeah, why it's gonna right. be a good fight. Kyron, come on, all right. Kyron, Kyron a stepping stone. He, he, yeah. he, he, he there to show you if you really like that or not. He wasn't mm-hmm. the type of guys like, mm-hmm. like you that really last like fight that. He had. Him. Mm-hmm. Bro, that last fight he had, I'm like. Man, you look like you been sparring too much, dog. You look like man, it took him like five rounds to get going. I'm like, well, it might be the end, bro. You sparring too much. He looked like he was insane, man. So you right about that. He definitely like he definitely he said, uh old boy talking about um he looked bad the last fight. That's why the dude want to fight him. I mean, you already telling yourself you're gonna lose. Mm. Oh, is Laura on the card too. Oh, yeah, I seen that. I forgot what fight that was. Yeah, that card deep, bro. They got Laura on there. What, what they, fight card you talking about? That Thurman and uh Tim Zoo. Shit, who you got? Who you got with Rolling Pitbull? I feel like that's kind of easy. I got uh. That shit could go either way. Man. Yeah, me I too. I I know the, like I want to go with Rolling, but I could, you know, I, I do too. Pitbull can catch him with some shit though. I I feel like Pitbull good at cutting out that ring like he did with Tank, but Rolling got that right hand. You know what I'm saying? Rolling got a. He got a mean right hand. And people, people, if you people good for walking into some shit, man, because he he you know he got that Mexican style shit. 
The motherfucker don't throw no jab. Everything straight hooks. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Facts. That one, and he be throwing them wide too, bro. I be like, mm -hmm. man, pit bull, yeah. If you get your little jab behind, you be straight. You know what I'm saying? But that's the thing. He's so fucking little, bro. Jab would probably fuck him up. He get in there. That's why he probably fight like that. He fuck, you know, pit bull. That nigga fuck up. That, man, that nigga like five two, bro. Ain't he like a? <laughs> ain't he like an inch or two shorter than Tank? Hell yeah, Tank already I, little as hell. Yeah, Tank was looking down at him. I'm like, man, pit bull, a little dude, man. He's short. Like he he can't like jabs really only work if you like the longer fighter, the taller, longer fight. That's when it really works best. Like mm -hmm. he's short as hell. That jab. That's why he fight like that. Cause that jab was man, he, like for real. Just look, imagine him coming in with a jab. Nigga gonna fuck his shit up. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. He gonna come with that little ass jab. Nigga gonna pop your shit. <laughs> like he gotta fight like that. He, like he five two, but he ain't. He fight like a, a bigger weight. He ain't fight at no 120, 120. He fight at 140, 135. Yeah. Like yeah. He moving like, up though. Hey, he a real one for moving up, dog. Nah, you know he, anybody else? Oh, no, we nah. say he a real one, but man, man, he didn't duck some fights, so Pitbull didn't duck some fights. Hey, he said recently though, I because I, I put the videos up, I did say he ducked, but he said recently though, um they said told him to wait on the tank fight. That's why in that last minute he All had right, so if you so if, if you if you I mean I, I can respect that, but I mean, let's be for real about the term duck. Like, you telling a nigga just wait on one fighter, you got these other upper, upper echelon niggas trying to fight you like Shakur and Ryan Garcia, and you turning mm -hmm. them, them duck. You ducking them niggas. I don't think they trying to get Shakur no fight, though, for real. I think nah. they trying to make... I don't think they trying to have him fight nobody, for real. They Man, I, mean, like, I feel like they trying to freeze him out. Yeah, they don't, they don't want... And I ain't gonna lie, his last fight, even though a lot of people don't like it, it really showed me, like, Shakur really got some defense. He know how to get out the way of some shit. So, Bro, the fact he know how to engage and not engage, niggas not... In. Shakur, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't realize how quick he was. So I seen a video of Shakur playing basketball with another mm -hmm. quick nigga. Like, that nigga is really fucking quick, mm -hmm. bro. Like, he real he quick. Like, he know how to get in the way and out the way quick as hell. Like, niggas ain't trying to fight. Like, a niggas that really like to fight, fight, they not trying to fight no defensive nigga, bro. Nah, Because they're going to make them look silly. No, no, no. It would look crazy with him uh, uh, fighting. Look at De La Santos. Man, don't nobody want to get in the ring with De La Santos now. they like, bro. The way you just looked against Shakira was crazy, man. You know, Shakira, what I'm Shakira liked that, bro. But the fact he fight like that, yeah, niggas ain't trying to fight him, bro. They gonna keep ducking this nigga, bro. Like, and and they gonna use the excuse of, oh, what about Tank and Haney? I mean, you calling, you talking about the top guys? Like, what about just a regular guy? We just trying to get a regular guy in there. What about an Andy Cruz or somebody? Y'all saying he that guy? What about him? But you know what I'm saying? Like they're, they're and he to... proves it the way they going, they gotta build him and Keyshawn up. They, that's the fight right there. That's the yeah. fight. And yeah. I'm a VA nigga, so I'm always gonna stick with the home team. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so we, sure. we, I'm definitely riding with Keyshawn, but yeah, they got yeah, that's the fight right there. Me too. I'm definitely uh a huge Keyshawn supporter. But uh they they want to match Andy Cruz with just him, though. I'm like, hey, you know, 135 got other guys now, you know what I'm saying? It ain't gotta just be Andy Cruz, Andy Cruz got to fight somebody else eventually. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So dude's kind of like, know, nah. you know, they in the process of building him up a little bit. Yeah, he been looking good with uh, Jerron Ennis, dad. He been training with Jerron Ennis, dad. He, he been looking good lately, his last couple of fights. That last fight, it was all right. You know what I'm saying? But the one before that, he he been doing a good job. But I think he just wanted to go to 10 rounds that last fight. So that's why he was kind of doing his thing but he definitely yeah, that, looked that's, like it, that's really what it is with Andy right now they just want to get him comfortable the way he could fight them long mm -hmm. fights because he, he got that long amateur career just fighting what four rounders and shit yeah because Jerron in the day he's my favorite trainer right now the way he can train a new guy like Andy Cruz yeah he, Andy Cruz got a nice little guy for right sure he know his shit yeah he a beast I thought last last year I had Bo Mac probably the best but this year I'm gonna go with uh in his dad on this Bo one. Mac tough it. too yeah, he is. That's why Eubanks was looking uh better last year. That's why I'm noticing like a lot of guys ain't going. Keyshawn looking better. Everybody ain't noticing. I'm like, hey, he working with both man. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna be a good fight. What you think about uh Tank and Frank Martin? Man, I, I I'm a Tank fan, but man, why I'm man, why I'm at with Tank? I don't give a fuck about none of my fights. He fight Devin, man. Fuck, fuck, bro. Bro. Give a, man. Get that bitch with about, Devin, bro. man, because. Frank, Frank, good, but bro, we all know. Look, if you really know boxing, you know Tank yeah. levels above that nigga. 
Frank can't, yeah, Frank can't fuck it with that nigga. That's why they took the fight so damn quick. Uh, Tank don't really want no challenges. And I ain't gonna lie, when you hear his team talk, you hear Coach Calvin them talk, they don't want no challenges. Like, I heard them niggas say, like, what? Last month, them niggas was like, man, we ain't gonna fight. Like, nigga, Coach Calvin literally said, I, mean, I hope they keep the video up somewhere, but the nigga said on the video, <laughs> he said, man, we not fighting Shakur because shit. We know he not gonna engage like that. He gonna be moving around. We know what the people want. They want knockouts and shit, so we ain't gonna probably knock him out. Like, he really, he said that what? his whole mouth. Like, when I heard it, I'm like, oh my God. Like, this, oh. this, this, this why boxing this why a nigga like fake Paul could creep in the boxing and take. That's what I said. The I best don't fight that. the best. Facts. Like they maybe nigga, I, that, and, and I and, and I I got my favorite fighters, but nigga, I like the I like the sport that, of boxing before. That's what I like I'm saying. So when you talk to me, I'm gonna keep the shit real in perspective. I ain't gonna really. I might be a little biased towards certain fighters, but in the day, I'm gonna keep this shit to the truth, man. Niggas just be ducking off, just be ducking, bro. Like. Okay, I did, and I and I'm the type. I'm a competitor, like you know me in person. Like I be doing a little hood boxing myself, so I get it in and I play pro ball. You know what I'm saying? So I love competition. That's what I built my name on. Whether I win, lose, or draw, like niggas know me for not ducking smoke. Like that's what I'm known for around the way. Like I don't duck shit for real. Like I just like competition. You, you, yeah, me too. You, you get you get that respect by trying to fight the best. Like if you always fight niggas, you know you can win. Or playing niggas, you know you can win. That shit whack. That shit it is, bro. whack, bro. Good, like, and then, then we paying like I don't even, like bro. I don't even play like niggas at the crib when it comes to like fucking basketball, bro. I don't even play niggas if they sorry, bro. Like I yeah. play niggas I know is like that gonna give me a challenge. Real talk. Yeah, yeah like I don't know, like, like, I'm playing you for, yeah. bro. I ain't getting nothing off you, bro. Unless you gonna put up some big money or some shit. But hell, nah, bro. Like. Man, he nigga, man, the, the sport, this shit be fucking the sport up, man. That's why I kind of like Ryan. Cause Lee Ryan, he gonna like he gonna go after some of the top niggas. You feel me? Yeah, facts. Real talk. Shout out to Plus, uh, go good, uh, to Queen, man, in the chat for real. Yeah, you, sp you speaking fast though, bro. Like, uh, Tank, man, we trying to see Tank fight, bro. Yeah, Shutter bro, guys, I want to see all that shit they talk about Tank. Man, Tank got this and that. He ain't never getting his bag. I want to see a nigga bring his bag on. I that's feel what like I'm saying. Gonna be the one. But if he don't fight the nigga, we ain't gonna never see that shit. And that's what I'm saying, bro. I'm like, bro, y'all gonna put that sparring clip out. And I hope that ain't the best thing I see. Cause that's but you know that was Ryan doing that shit. Though. Ryan doing yeah, that shit for clout. Yeah, I don't know Ryan going on clout train right now. This nigga. Man, he do, he I did, and I realize, I feel crazy. like at this point, I feel like he just doing this shit to disguise the fact. He probably feel like he he, he know he about to lose. Like that's yeah. about to lose shit out that nigga. So Ryan probably bringing as much attention as he can for <laughs> motherfucker get his ass whooped. He's saying, I, and I ain't gonna lie, I feel like some of the shit he's saying low key truthful. I ain't gonna lie, yeah, like that. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I yeah, love he yeah. believe in Illuminati yeah, and shit, so yeah. I feel like some of that shit he's saying yeah. is real, but yeah, the way he going about this shit, like, like, yeah. bro, he just going on a whole clout train, my nigga. Yeah, like, bro, like, you feel me? Like, you just said everything that come to your fucking mind, nigga. Like, it's so bad, <laughs> it's like, niggas, like, you even focus on the fight, but it seems like he is focused. I guess he just, when he get on his downtime, he just get on Twitter and just. Twitter talk and just go crazy on that bitch. <laughs> yeah, man, he, he do be doing a lot. Bro. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he doing way too much, man. And what I thought about, no, no, but what what I thought about, he gonna bring a lot of eyes to the fight, though. No matter what he doing. Yeah. The, at that point, I'm like, now, Ryan, bro, Ryan, a superstar, bro. Like, I ain't gonna oh be yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, he next level. I don't know how big he is though. Like at this point right now, bro, I don't know how big the fight gonna be. Cause he doing so much, I'm like, man, I don't know how far he. Gonna how many, many pay per view buys you think they're gonna do? I'm thinking right now he gonna at least crack a meal. You think? And I thought he gonna crack a meal. I think so, man. Cause every time I turn around, like even if you look in the engine, and you know this too, every time you turn around, somebody he, he popping up somewhere. Mm -hmm. Brian Garcia everywhere. I'm, I seen him on World Star a couple days ago. I'm like, hey, bro, just everywhere right now. Nigga, like, what really should be a superstar, man? They was at that press conference, bro. That nigga got mobbed, bro. When I see him, like, he couldn't even fucking walk to hey. the bus. I'm like, yeah, he a superstar, bro. Like, like it was about, it was like, damn, there 100 people out there trying to get to him. When I seen that, I'm like, yeah, he a superstar. <laughs> oh, yeah, I seen that. I seen that. Yeah, Ryan Garcia, he different. He a different level when it comes to uh, fighting, Popularity. Man. Yeah, he's he, that's he why him. that's why niggas like fighting him because they know his shit. He ain't now. Don't get to it. Ryan a good boxer. He ain't trained. He a good, but he not elite though. You know what I'm saying? So the elite niggas, cause like the elite niggas to me in his weight class is Shakur, Tank, T.O. 
Shit. That, that's about it, I think, for real. Matia is tough, but I feel like Matia is going, they going, he getting there with one of them niggas, they going to X him out. Hey, plus, uh, Ryan Garcia might move to MMA like uh, Regis Program after you stop being stepping stone for everybody. Hell no, he, <laughs> he going to get in MMA and get his ass folded the fuck up, nigga. <laughs> Hell no, he better stick with boxing to shit. He don't want to do it no more. <laughs> he I heard Regis MMA get his bones broke. I heard Regis Program try to go over there. I'm like, bro, nah. Bro. Regis better stay with boxing too, but for I don't real? know if that shut him out so much. I don't know what's left for with Regis. <laughs> Me either, especially at 140, for real, real talk. I don't know what you do with him now. Like, he got like, shut out, Regis, Regis is a stepping stone. He like, like, it gets to a point where certain niggas, when they know they're not elite, they just the niggas to show who elite. So, like, you really think you're elite? If you could beat this nigga, yeah. that make you elite. That's how I feel with certain straight niggas. Gatekeeper. Like, yeah, straight gatekeeper. Yeah, gatekeeper, yeah. Yeah, they got a lot of gatekeepers right now. That dudes ain't trying to be gatekeepers, but it's like, man, if you ain't, man, you ain't putting man, together no gatekeeper, then, sh then prove it. Then you got to beat the elite. You got to beat niggas, bro. Like, and, and but put you can make good. The crazy thing is, like, even though niggas ain't, you make good money. You can make good because you're gonna, because as being a gatekeeper, you're gonna fight the next star. So it's like, and don't get it twisted just because a nigga a gatekeeper, one of them them niggas they hype up to be the next nigga. They fuck around have an off night. This shit, the gatekeeper back in the, you know what I'm saying? He back yeah, in the Yeah, it's over with. You know what I'm saying? It's just because a nigga gatekeeper don't mean you sleep on that nigga. Like, that just mean he, does, he like, if you can get through this nigga, yeah, you elite. But if you have an off night, nigga, oh, yeah. Nigga yeah, be right you, back in the mix for sure. You fat. That's facts. Because, hey, if, it, if uh, Ngana would have won, Anthony Josh would have been like, hey, man, you know, I lost the bro. I'm just in that position. So, yeah, you got to take that risk sometimes. Like, you might end up being a gatekeeper. You lose a fight. That's real talk. That's why you got to take the risk, though. A lot of people don't try to risk nothing, man. A lot of people are scared to do that right now. That's the, like, 35, 40. That why I'm like, man, who, who going to fight Tank for real? Because. Man, it ain't no, it ain't no who. It, it's like who he want to fight. Like, everybody trying to fight Tank. But, like, nigga, who you going to send a contract to? You got Devin call you all type of name. Bill going crazy. I'm like, that. Though, I'm like, bro. I fuck with Bill, but I'm like, man, he doing too much. But if if a nigga don't beat Devin, he gonna he gonna keep with the antics, and it ain't gonna never stop. That's why I'm I really won't tank after this Frank fight, cause I feel like Frank might last. I think I think he, he I, I feel like he gonna knock him out, but I feel like Frank might last to the uh the championship rounds, get him out the way. Then, bro, you gotta you gotta you gotta fight Devin, bro, cause they talking too much, bro. Like they call you all type of pussies, bitches. Like what they call you, Bama? Like the disrespect, is wild the now. This the disrespect so much. It's like niggas in the street. Like sometimes you view that nigga, like you know, you gonna get the little niggas coming at you. Like man, I ain't worried about it. But then the little nigga kind of start getting some clout. He just start going crazy every other, like every other day. You hand shit. Like you gonna have to go see that nigga, bro. Like he getting too much. He doing too much. Like you gotta get him out the way. Like if not, you you scared. You know what I'm saying? Like. Yeah, fact. Devin, like Devin is, and I kind of like it. I like that. Put the pressure on that nigga. Fuck that. Make that nigga fight. I love shit like this. Was box. This was boxing bout, man. Like, yeah, me too. You, I love that boy. Yeah, I love this shit. You know what I'm saying? But niggas got to step up to the plate, man. You feel me? It, it man. That's why we gotta put pressure on these guys. That, that's why people think like, even what you saying, like, hey man, I'm a Bud fan, but hey, he need to. That show that you a boxing boots, fan. Yeah, he yeah, did. Yeah. But cause, cause, cause keep it real, but. At 140, 147, 154, the toughest fight he got is fucking Boots, bro. I don't see nobody giving him a tougher challenge but Boots, man. Yeah, I think uh, I think right now uh, him and Boots is probably the best fight to make right now because let's just say Boots do something in the next, like Boots the man in the next five or ten years. That means Terrence Crawford then fought the, the baddest dude in the last five or ten years. You know, and I'm so glad you said that. And this the same point I've been making because a lot of niggas like, man, well, he ain't got his clout all the way up. I look at this situation. This how this how I compare this shit, bro. And I feel mm -hmm. like this a good this a good um analysis on how I break this shit down between uh, on boot on bud fighting boots. You remember when Floyd fought Canelo when he was mm -hmm. young? I knew you was gonna say that. I yeah, knew you was gonna this, say that. I feel like it's the same situation. <laughs> like if Bud, beat, I feel like if Bud beat Boots. I feel Fact. like Boots gonna take over eventually. I feel like once all the old niggas get out the way and shit, Boots gonna take over. So Bud beat, cause all you gotta do is beat a nigga one time, but you don't gotta get that nigga no rematch or none of that shit. Just get in that bitch, beat that nigga, have you beat him one time, 
get that on your record. Man, I just feel like that win right there is just going to make your legacy even more because Boots going to take over this shit. So the fact Boots taking over, you got that win on Boots, that just make your legacy even more better. Then you can start really kicking your shit, popping your shit like a Floyd type of shit. Man. You know what I'm saying? That's why Floyd can keep popping his shit because he like shit. Canelo, the face of boxing, you know what I'm saying, to take. But shit, the fact I put that nigga loss on his record, shit, nigga, I could pop my shit, nigga. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and then nigga can't really say nothing for real. Nigga can't say shit for real. You know what I'm saying? For real, man. Hey, you ain't lying, Niggas bro. don't be looking at it like that. Niggas ain't really, niggas ain't hey. going for legacy, bro. That's what it is. Niggas just, they, they just in it for the money. You know what I'm saying? But even though they in it for the money, they niggas understand like Floyd only got to that money because he was doing legacy fights. You know what I'm saying? Floyd won't fight trash niggas. He was fighting the best of the best. That's what I told him. That's how he got the where he got to. You know what I'm saying? See, niggas just want to take it the easy way out, man. Devo saying, Devo say everything. I be Devo. You know what you doing, bro? You saying every video I basically put out, bro. That's all you doing, bro. You saying everything I been I been I been talking like this, bro. I been on this shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? They think it ain't normal though. We get in the chat, bro. They be like, man, block this dude. Like what? How you gonna block me for saying some facts? Man, but you understand, niggas be having a niggas be biased. So I know I start P2, like especially with this boxing media shit. Not even by just sports in general. Yeah, I feel sports like a lot general. of these niggas on payroll with certain yeah. fighters and shit, but certain <laughs> athletes like you oh know, no, they just love them dudes that bad. They just mm -hmm. think them dudes like that niggas good. don't even want to keep it real no more, bro. Bro, they just think them dudes that good, bro. Like I noticed that when nobody was mentioning uh Jerron in. That's oh, why, like, like, even though I don't fuck with Ace Money or how he, he, you know, how he, because it, it just got to disrespect to me, like, you know what I'm saying? They yeah, not, you ain't trying to go off with the Philly niggas, but I respect the fact, like, you trying to see the best fight the best, my yeah. nigga, like, I can respect that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, me too. I can respect, because that's what it's about, you know what I'm saying? That's what keeping this shit alive, like, that's why I'm glad AJ knocked out Francis. That, that low-key saved boxing, because Francis was the fucking... Not AJ out, they gonna be like, man, these niggas ain't that like that. Fuck boxing, oh, he's going to the MMA, so the fact he got him up out of there early, so he like he really like low key. That's why right now, not even not like, forever he on out. Like I don't want to hear no bold AJ soft. Like I don't want like you. If I hear you say AJ soft, I might you might trigger me, bro. I ain't even gonna lie. I, you might trigger me, and I ain't gonna oh, lie. No, 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 he ain't soft. He ain't soft. That, he ain't that, soft that, at that, all. That, 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 you know, because you know that's that's the stigma AJ got in the hood, bro. Like when I'm noticing, like with American niggas, like American niggas in the hood, bro. Like that's the stigma AJ got. But I'm like, ain't no way that nigga soft because he didn't. He got the best. I mean, I gonna say he got. Yeah, like when it come to like niggas who he like the niggas he actually fighting, he got yeah. the best resume in he the heavyweight division. But my you thing, know what I'm is, saying, like he my, done fought all the top niggas. You feel me? So ain't no way you gonna call a nigga like that, so. My thing with AJ is what I be knowing about his situation is, he all they got. Like every time, bro, people don't know it. He be having a lot of pressure. On, they be rolling the dice with him. They'll make a fight with him, to where it's like, hey, if he lose, you know what I'm saying, we gonna have to, like with the Usyk fight. It'll the Usyk fight. I think one of his first fights was in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, yeah, he, um, he, popped, yeah, he the one popped that shit off for real. Yeah, so it's like he always mm -hmm. taking a risk, and I'm like, Eddie Hearn. Yeah, he AJ always taking that risk, like for he sure. He always taking a risk with bro. And I'm like, man, make the big fights first before you kind of just trying to build. Because he trying to, he trying to. Everybody think that he using Eddie Hearn to build, but nah, he building with AJ because AJ the one who kind of making everything. Oh yeah, AJ, right. AJ, like AJ is the zone, nigga. Shit. Yeah, oh, but was AJ, saying. nigga, the zone don't happen. That's why you see Eddie. Well, he love AJ. Well, he. That's why he be red like man. when that when that when that like when he when they when he was about to fight um uh, Big Baby Miller and he got caught with steroid Eddie Hearn like he's ready to fight Big Baby bro because he's like bro you about to try to hurt my dog like that you take a steroid yeah, that was... and shit like Eddie Hearn like yeah that's like that's who made like they came in this shit together for real yeah Eddie Hearn was looking at uh uh that why he didn't want ba Big Baby to fight him this time he like man I don't know what this dude on because everybody thought they was gonna fight again. As soon as he got out them steroids, he got exposed like a motherfucker. Super regular. What? That was a horrible <laughs> fight he had. The boy. It was, it was entertaining, but man, he man, he got stopped. I a lot. Like one thing about uh Big Baby, uh, well Miller can ask two big babies. He gonna definitely put on the show. Like he gonna talk his shit. That's why I like him. He gonna talk some good that good New York shit. <laughs> he gonna have some good witty ass shit to say. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. 
That's crazy the way he be the way he be talking and stuff like that. I be liking that man. Like I, I ain't nah, gonna you lie, need right? that for boxing. That's entertainment. Yeah, man. That's why. Um, even though people don't like Chris Culver, he kind of built up that fight with Ryo. You know what I'm saying? People wouldn't really like that knockout if he wasn't talking so much. That's that New York shit, bro. They be on yeah. that, bro. New York, and they just slick with the mouth, man. <laughs> Like, I ain't never, I ain't never met no New York who won't slick with the mouth. All them niggas slick with the oh, mouth. Yeah, I, feel yeah, like yeah. I feel like low key, that kind of got me. My, 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 you know what I'm saying? My mouthpiece a little bit the way it is, just hanging with some yeah, New York niggas. Yeah. And Fast. they gonna talk slick as fuck. Whatever thing they do, they don't even gotta be the best at it. If they decent, oh yeah, they gonna talk their shit for sure. Hey, that's fact though, real talk. They gonna talk their fucking shit. That, that's what be selling the fights. I'm like, cause you know, when we were growing up, well, back in the day, you know what I'm saying? Uh, them guys used to be mostly from New York who used to sell fights and had little press conferences and stuff like that. Now it's kind of different. You know, you got guys like Tank, a lot of guys from DC, Cali, uh, Ryan Garcia, and Devin Haney. You got oh, fighters guys all over the world, world, bro. Yeah, it's different now, man. They spread out all over the place. Terrence Crawford out of Omaha. But I feel like, um, I feel like basically with these next couple of guys coming out though, Jerron Ennis, he gonna be able to. He the only person I know that don't really gotta uh get on the internet and tweet every day to kind of build like, his name up. He don't, but I, I feel like I mean I want him to do more like that, but I mean I can tell type and he just a reserved nigga. Like, yeah, he, he ain't really, really, like, he ain't really like outspoken. He not really like no uh like he ain't like he he not real outspoken. He real reserved, calm, cool, and collected type nigga. He just gonna he gonna make the, he gonna let the work speak for itself. Yeah, I hope he's straight right now, man. I know he got a lot of trouble going on. His manager just dying like that. That's like, bro. Manager died. Yeah, his manager died. Uh, man, January like nineteenth or something, twentieth or something like that. And man, then yeah. when he when the manager died, right, the dude wife. Get up there and like, oh well, we want Jerron Ennis to do this and this and this. And Jerron Ennis is like, man, you don't even know how to run a boxing company. So they don't want <laughs> so they don't want to let him out the deal. So now he gotta take her to court. Oh yeah. So he like I that might I mean rest in peace, dude. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to speak ill will and shit, but yeah, that might be yeah. that might be a blessing in disguise. Shit. Cause the way they the way they like man, yeah, it might be wrong. because I like um, how they manage uh, yeah, I mean, but Boots like, need is a height trying man. to keep That's up. What need. Boots need a height, man. You remember, you remember Devin had that nigga named Church? Yeah, man, what happened to him, dog? I don't know. I still to this day wanna know what the fuck happened to Church, bro. Man. Got but bro. it seemed like, but it seemed like the shit Church was doing now, Bill doing that shit. Yeah, it if, do, you, if you keep game, cause Church is hey. that shit now. See, like. He done rub that shit off on Bill. Now Bill taking that shit to Front Street. If you if you peep game, yeah, yeah, yeah. You right, you right, you right. You know what I'm saying? You right, you right, you right. See, boost hey. with a nigga like that. He need a nigga, a nigga from the streets who just got that good ass lingo because he ain't gonna talk all that shit for real. You know, I mean, Boost can't talk shit. I seen him talk, but he ain't gonna get too crazy. But he need a he need a nigga like that to build his ass up, like because nigga oh, love yeah. this shit entertaining the, the day, bro. This shit entertainment bro like this is what niggas want they want to be entertained bro that's what the fans want then mm -hmm. boxing really ain't really real talk like to be real with you my nigga boxing ain't even really built on the real actual like niggas who really love boxing this shit ain't built off on us but it's built off the casuals once yeah, you got the is. casuals once you got the casuals on you that's when you the star bro like it is. you know what i'm saying this shit ain't built off real boxing fans for real like cause we really that's care about this sport on how it's ran and shit but this shit built off the casuals and the casuals, they love entertainment. They love entertainment. You feel me? That's what they like. They like niggas who talking shit. And then they like niggas who knocking niggas out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If Boost, if Boost talked a little bit more, like Queen said, if Boost talked more, he'll make more money to promote the fights. I mean, that, that'll that work. That'll work. But also, um, that'll put pressure on these guys to, uh, to let the fans know that uh, Boost actually calling these guys out. Cause they'll try to make a scene like they'll try to make a scene like Boots don't want to fight. Like, yeah, he ain't saying he, nothing. He want to fight. He just like I said, he just a cool, he a cool nigga. Like, cause shit after after um shit after I, I said shit like what a couple months ago, shit, Bud that said something that nigga went on Twitter that's like send the contract. I mean, you don't really gotta say too much after that, but it, it makes it more entertaining if you do, but shit, mm -hmm, that's just straight to the point, nigga. Like, what else can a nigga say if you want to fight you? Send the contract, I'll sign it. That's what he said. Like. But I ain't gonna after, lie to after that. I ain't hear Bud speak on boots ever again, for real.
<laughs> you, you think you think Boots took the uh took the wave away from the Charlos? Like what the wave they had, like the hype they had behind them. You think Boots kind of got that behind him now because ain't nobody mentioning them like they mentioned the Boots now. I mean, yes, in a in a, in, a, in, a, in a way, but I just feel like the the twins they just let their own wave go down. Like them niggas got their own personal part. Well, especially fucking Maul, he had that shit going on with his wife and shit. So I feel like that situation kind of fucked them up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, it was really Cause I ain't gonna lie, bro. I, I just seen a video of Mike look bad, bro. That nigga pudgy. And yeah, shit. don't even look the same. Lie, like, I'm no, scared I, for him. To, I'm scared for him to get in a big fight. We gonna get if he if the way he look, he getting that bitch with Canelo. He gonna get knocked out. He ain't gonna make it, bro. Like. He looking yeah, bad in that bitch. Like then, every time I see Maul go live, the nigga look drunk as fuck. Like that's what I'm saying. Geeked like, up he, like he that. He ain't got no. He ain't got no good active boxing lifestyle outside of like camp. You feel me, he, bro? You geeked up like that before you go to a fresh camp. You couldn't wait two hours after you woke up, woke up. Like, bro, you, <laughs> come on, bro. You ain't stressing that bad. You got a bag. Like, what's going on? Man, like, you'd be you... surprised, bro. Bitch could do that to you, bro. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I seen yeah, some yeah. of the best. I mean, yeah. I just seen some yeah. of the best men fucking just go down the drain off of bitch, bro. And he a family guy too, bro. I'm like, dang, that's kind of messed just up. Just like bro. sorry, we sorry, Miss Bitch. Yeah, it's 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 woman out here, holy bitch queen. It's motherfuckers out here that drain <laughs> the fuck out of nigga. Like, like what once once they find out you, you in love, bro, what? A, a, bit, a real bitch find out you in love, bro. And she was like, kind of like, she she kind of diabolical, man. She gonna drain the, she gonna drain your shit, bro. Like, you could be a, the greatest nigga on earth, bro. Like, but if you fall in love with the wrong bitch, man, she'll drain the fuck out your ass, bro. Whole kingdom go down, bro. And we didn't see his wife in action already. Like, the bitch already seen crazy as fuck. Like, I don't even know why he even went back there. Be should have divorced that bitch. Like, fuck her, man. Man, I don't know okay. what he was thinking, dog. Now he nigga in love, bro. Cause I think niggas say that's his high school sweetheart. So he probably that's the probably the only bitch he ever loved in life. So he like, man, shit. Then you know how you know how to be with you know men like yeah, Yo, you gotta provide for the family. Oh, you ain't no real nigga that you know what I'm saying. So that shit probably overwhelming in the fuck. So that 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 right there, the, that should affect you. Yo, yo, that should affect you in the ring. That should affect your performance. Yeah, it do. It do, it, man. Especially with them guys, you know. Every time they be around, they had their girl around or something like that. So yeah, yeah they some high, pretty yellow bitches, man. What Houston bitches too? My, I, my, I'm, I'm about to move to Houston, so I know how them bitches get down a lot of. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Houston, uh, yeah, Houston, a move, man. I got a partner from down there. He said, "Hey, that thing, Houston, huge too, man." Like you yep. see my my uh my picture with T Mac and that shit. That was in Houston. I ain't got. Oh, that was in Houston. Shit. Yeah, cause he, uh, T Mac was doing this uh thing called OBL One's Basketball League. Basically, it was like a nationwide one on one basketball league. And, you know, he invited me to that shit. I ain't gonna, I ain't do good, but shit, I still got invited, and got to meet T Mac, so that was cool. You know what I'm saying? Oh but yeah, 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 bro. Yeah. Like that shit was right there. In the first, the, the the uh the startup of this shit was in Houston. Yeah, I think T Mac from Texas too. I forgot about that. Now T Mac from Florida, but he live out there. He oh, yeah, I'm bro. tripping. I'm tripping. Yeah, he, 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 he man started from Florida. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Mm -hmm. but he, I don't he know why I be thinking. I think he live in, I think he live in Sugar Land. He got, I think he got a crib out there. Oh, yeah, I seen his house, dog. Man. Bro, I got one of They take a lot of my niggas, my, like my niggas in Houston, they be seeing him around and shit. Yeah, he, yeah, Tracy McGrady, he that guy, man. He, then where they had the, uh, the, 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 uh, the gym at, the gym wasn't even really in Houston. It was in Sugar Land. Like we had to, I had to travel to some big ass gym in Sugarland. Dang, pay some niggas. That's that side where that money at too. For sure, hell yeah. Yeah, Cause I, yeah. Cause I'm, that's what I'm. That's what my next move. I'm in VA right now. I'm in Richmond, VA. But my next move, I gotta get the fuck out of Richmond. This shit ain't. Oh yeah, all right, no, bro. I got a, I got a, uh, a partner I was just talking to the other day that just came from Richmond. He was like, man, I had to get up out of the Richmond, VA, huh? Yeah, you are like it ain't, it ain't as bad as other places, but like, why? What my goals is because I'm trying to be a millionaire in four years and rich. And I don't, man, I ain't gonna, I don't feel like it's gonna happen in rich. But it's just, it ain't that, it ain't that many resources out here, bro. And then niggas' mindset out here ain't like niggas' mindset in Houston, you know what I'm saying? Like, niggas uh -huh. get money out here in Richmond, but niggas ain't getting money like niggas in Houston. 
Yeah, facts, facts, facts. It ain't it ain't too much moving out there, you know what I'm saying? So I already know what you're talking about. Shit's in as hell, bro. That's why I'm on this bitch with you now. Like, I don't go outside no more. Nothing. Yeah, like, me either. And I didn't cut mad motherfuckers off. I cut bitches off. Because I just feel like, man, y'all holding me back. Like, I just had a that nigga. That's what it is. I'm actually trying to get too personal and shit. But I just no, you right, that's real. I just had a nigga who was staying with me. You know, I got I got my own crib and shit. He was staying with me. But this nigga, man, he won't. I just feel like he was on some bum shit, my nigga. Like. So we didn't got her to it, man. I just and I kicked the nigga out, man. Cause I just felt like he was just draining the nigga, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got you living in this bitch. You didn't. You living in my crib about four, or five months. You ain't paying no rent. You got a nerve. Yeah. You about to boss up on me and this joint? Hell no, nah, nigga. Get your yeah, ass out of here, nigga. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> get the fuck out of here, bro. You hey, they don't, they don't. They don't. They don't look at that as like a. Uh, hey, bro. If you ain't got. If you ain't got. Uh, a hundred this week. I got a hundred next week. And, they don't and look the at, they don't was, look at like, it like that. Like, but, you know, buddy was my partner. Like, he didn't, he fell on yeah. hard times and shit. So I'm like, oh, you come over here, get, get your feet right. You know what I'm saying? But then it's like, how long are you going to take to get your feet right, my nigga? Then in the midst of you, you know, getting back on your feet, nigga, you ain't about to be in my crib bossing up on niggas like you running this shit. Like, hell yeah. no. Nah. Nigga got me all the way fucked up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I ain't uh, never been no hoe, nigga. Like, that, like, hey, that, nigga, I ain't saying you got to bow down type shit, but, bro, like, Pay homage, nigga. Have some respect in this motherfucker, bro. Like that. that, was, know, that was, everything happened for a reason. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a man. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer. You know, like attract the like law of attraction. So yeah, you know, you always gonna you know shit that's supposed to happen gonna happen. You feel me? Yeah, that's real talk. Cause sure, you, you know, man. A lot of the times, you know, people just don't know how to work well with others, bro. That's all it really be. They just don't. They think that somebody else is. They don't know that somebody else, they think somebody else is gonna do that for them and what, what somebody else doing, but they'll never that know. and a lot of niggas out here, they they will mistake your kindness for a weakness. Yeah. They like, oh yeah, he like that's my nigga. All right. So the fact he my nigga, I could treat him different than other niggas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that'd nah, be the crazy nigga, part. Treat me like how your boss, you know what I'm saying? How you treat your boss, nigga. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> hey, like, you, the guy who gave you the job, you know what I'm saying? You treat him nice. Go ahead, yeah, show yeah, me some respect nigga. too. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, I'm gonna give you a whole place to stay rent. Like, it's like my crib. Thank God, thank God, I got rich parents, so you know I can move different <laughs> and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got a crib. I got a three bedroom house to myself. Three bedroom townhouse to myself. You know what I'm saying? I pay no rent, but rent costs. If a nigga was supposed to pay rent, it shit like two racks a month in this bitch. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> Bro, that joint add up after a while, like bro. Yeah, man, hey. Like your boss ain't giving you no place to stay, nigga. Damn food, man. You say how much food costs right now? Man, man come on, dog. Come on, man. Food costs more than gas right now. But I ain't trip. Everything happen for a reason. So you know the people that's getting cut out of my life, they ain't they like like you know you got you know it's a story. Everybody got their own story. So you just got chapters of this shit. So some yeah, people it, they it happen like that. The next chapter. It happened like that, cause shoot, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, sometimes, bro, a stranger help you more than your partner will. Mm -hmm. It be like that, but that's the that's the, that's what's going on really with everything right now. But it, it be like that sometimes. But definitely, uh, just keep your circle small, man. And, uh, like plus said, you gotta keep that circle small. And then you know everybody gonna be jealous of you, bro. They gonna they gonna want what you what what you, what you got already. So you know you gotta watch out for that too. Everybody gonna want what you got already. Yeah, I'm protected, man. I'm protected by the man above, man. And then I don't really go out my way on shit. You feel me? So then a lot yeah. of niggas that's probably all jealous of me. They probably niggas I didn't probably used to help anyway, nigga. They just, well, that why I'm man, type man. of nigga like I'm a type of nigga like you see me around a nigga fucking with a nigga and he ain't around no more. That is his fault or her fault more than likely. Like you know what I'm saying? Like because I'm a good nigga for real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. If motherfucker ain't around me, you probably used to see me around that man. Man, them motherfucking across the line, nigga, and I just had to let them stay there. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, that that fact though, that's real talk, man. That how it be, but you know, time gonna time gonna go out. It's gonna reveal everybody who ain't real. Mm -hmm. Yeah, shout out to you, bro, for real. Uh, how long you been uh following me, man? I, I seen you ain't around. Like real nigga, shit, bro. This, I just. Cause like, bro, I, like, you know, when in my spare time, like, I ain't working on this shit, especially right now, I've been having a lot of downtime and shit. I just be on YouTube all day, so I, you okay. know, if I see some good boxing shit, I'm gonna definitely uh, entertain myself with this shit. And I seen you was talking and shit, and I was like, 
you know, I love a good boxing conversation. Then I seen you went live. I'm like, shit, drop the link. Let's turn this turn up. Oh, shit. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the first drop one that's been on here like that. Yeah, you're yeah, the first yeah, one. Like, man, I ain't, ain't want to keep just talking in the chat. I'm like, man, fuck that. Like, the way you, oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. how your shit was. I'm like, see, you could just drop a stream, y'all. Nigga, just go live and turn up. Make that's a whole show out this shit. Because that's what Ace Money whole ass did. Like, yeah, man. Yeah, he just dropped. Next thing you know, he got, I ain't going to he got the hottest boxing live out there shit. But I, I can't fuck with him just on the fact that like, he just, the way he moved, bro. Like, I don't, I, just, <laughs> yeah. I, I can't fuck with him, bro. I just can't, like. Cause I like I'm a man of integrity and respect. Like you ain't just about to be calling me no bitch and shit. Like niggas oh, yeah, talk yeah. like what, nigga. Then on top of that, I know you. The crazy thing, I know niggas that like I. It's a nigga that know him, nigga. And I got niggas in Memphis. He in Memphis. Like I got like I low key probably could get that nigga if I want to. <laughs> yeah. like, take it there. It ain't that serious for real. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But like how you like, bro? Like you ain't even tough, bro. You don't even go outside your house, my nigga. Like how I'm a respect. Ain't, ain't, ain't no gangster. Ain't no way you gangster. You never go out your house, my nigga. Like you never did no real street <laughs> shit or nothing. Like you talk, you talking to a reformed street nigga who done hung with some real crazy ass niggas. Like you know, hung with killers and all type of shit. Like you ain't no way you about to be talking to me all reckless and shit. Like <laughs> then on top of it, I'm the, I was one of the main niggas trying to. Help your shit, keep your shit in motion with shit. You know what I'm saying? But once I see yeah. how he was moving, I'm like, man, I can't respect it, man. Like, I just can't. Like, I the only time I'll probably ever go back to that channel is if Bud beat Boots and fucking <laughs> Sean beat Andy Cruz. That's all, only because he 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 loved Andy Cruz and like in order why he on them niggas dick like that, cause the motherfucker them Philly niggas and took over. Oh the Philly. yeah, Andy Cruz. Yeah, that's, Philly, what he, yeah. that's why he kind of asked me out, cause see, he seen how many Philly niggas was coming at bitch. He like, yeah, yeah, we gonna use Debo as a pawn. Like what? Ah, oh, that's crazy. Yeah, you know I had peep to play and shit. Wow. But it's all good. Everything happened for me. That's why oh, yeah, I, I, was, I can't wait. That's why I low key. That's why I low key want to see boots. I mean, Boots and Bud fight. That's why I love okay, Keith. That that's why, one of the reasons why I want to see it. So Bud beat motherfucking Boots. I go on his channel and talk cash shit all <laughs> fucking night. Nigga, he going to ban me again. I think he got me banned. I'm hey, going a new name. He going to ban me again on that bitch. I'm going to let that nigga have it. What? You know, you know what's funny, God, man? I'm going to let that nigga have it. Like, that shit low key personal. You got me wanting to see that fight now. That's the funny thing. I'm telling thing. you, bro, that like... shit the fight, bro. That's why I'm mad at fucking Bud acting so damn scared, but because I feel like he could beat the nigga, but like I keep telling <laughs> niggas, like, it don't mean nothing if he don't get in the ring with the nigga. Just like Tank and Devin. I feel like Tank gonna beat Devin, but them niggas don't get in the ring shit. I can't well, say be... nothing. Well, that would be so funny when these dudes be going in. They make you want to, uh, they make you want to. <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna lie. That nigga, bro, the way he, like, he, I'll never forget that night, man. He kind of went off with a nigga. He kind of pissed me off like that. I'm like, dang, he, he got it to where it got personal. Like, now I, def I definitely got to see Keyshawn and Andy fight now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. I got to see that fight. I got to see that shit. You know I was talking to the dudes bringing that fight up, dog. I'm like, bro, y'all act like that's the only dude Keyshawn can fight right now, bro. I'm like, man, all right, bro. I'm ready to see that fight now. I don't know why they they want to see the Virginia dude lose so bad, man. I don't know what it is. He the I mean, only you know, one. You know, you you know why? Cause Keyshawn, he be talking that he shit. Talk, bro, he be talking. I be loving that. I, bro, I be loving that too, yeah, bro. Yeah, I be he like, talk that shit, bro. I love that, boy. Cause everybody else, they was all acting like they were talking. Then we started talking last year. Everybody like, I don't like that. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Just like okay. Floyd, like Floyd niggas was loving that nigga. Then Floyd Pete how he used to talk <laughs> shit niggas hate him. But you know him doing that. That's actually bringing his fan base more. Cause then you gonna have the word shit. We paying like how Floyd fights were. They they was paying money just to see this nigga lose. Cause he was lose. talking so much shit. Man, that's crazy. Pay to see you lose. That's that's crazy to me. <laughs> so Floyd, he a genius. So he was like, "Shit, all right, y'all niggas want to see me lose that bad? I'm gonna make y'all. I'm gonna capitalize off this shit." Niggas, niggas to this day still hate Floyd, nigga, because he's still shining on niggas. <laughs> he's still shining on niggas. Still talking yeah. shit. <laughs> still in, man. Still got tank. Got tank. Man. I mean, Tank, I don't think Tank signed to him no more, but I think he's more of a mentor, but he's still around, so, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Because I think oh. Tank on his own now, GTT, they, they, I mean, I think, of course, you know, Al Hamer always going to be, you know, there, but as far as, like, him signing TMT, I think they, yeah, he ain't signing TMT no more. Yeah, I think I think Tank too big right now for Floyd to just be messing with him right. alone, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, but, but let's keep it real, you know, without Floyd, you know, uh, Tank don't be where he gets. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! But, see, but Floyd got another one. He's smart and got he got Camel now because Camel gonna take over too. He fighting on um. Uh, he got Camel uh, now. He fighting on the Thurman uh zoo fight. 
As he should, yeah. They building him up real nice. I think it's like his third or fourth fight already. Yeah, they building him up nice. Yeah, Floyd got him moving. He fighting on everything. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. And then that's the good thing, too, because you got to think about it. That's the first fight on every card. It's going to be mm -hmm. a Kamel, and then you see the other guys fighting. Kamel got a fan base. I ain't going to lie. Niggas is fucking with Kamel. And that yeah. motherfucker, I don't even, is he still 17? I don't think he's 18. Yeah, though. I think he's still 17. No? You feel me? Like, 17-year-old, you got the stars fucking with you already? Like, damn. Man, he's he still about, still about three, four years, 20 when soon he started drinking. He didn't took over. Man, it's a lot of guys around that age. Like the young guy, man, they taking over. Though. I ain't even gonna have no talent like that. But shoot, they got. That's why I'm telling Tank, like, hey, bro, you better hurry and get the moving. These young guy trying to do something. They ain't gonna be waiting around talking about what you is and all that. They gonna try to move you out the way. I feel like Tank gonna fight Devin and he gonna retire after that. I don't he see said him. that too. Even yeah. when he said that last year. After, after I heard him, after I heard uh. Calvin talking about man, we ain't gonna fight because he literally said they not gonna fight Shakur, bro. Like, uh -huh, that. Man. I'm like, yeah, he gonna probably fight Devin, get on up out of here, man. And yeah, I, like, I it's, at the way it's look, I'm cool with that. I did want to fight Shakur, but I'm cool with that. As long as you fight Devin, shit, I'm cool. Fuck it. Fuck yeah, it, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. Uh, yeah. as long as you fight, uh, Devin, <laughs> Go ahead, because... fight Devin, get your ass up on out of they here. Give a one on um, because. You know, because a lot of people were talking about last year. I'd rather see the Shakur versus uh, Tank. I mean, not Shakur versus Tank. Yeah, Shakur versus Tank. And I was like, nah, bro, I don't know about that. I want to see it, though. I want Because I want to see the best fight the best. But, you know, how Shakur be, man, he's such a defensive fighter. They ain't trying to get in there with that nigga, man. Damn. And I, I don't know if uh that would be a good fight. No, I ain't going to lie. I want to see that. I want to see that fight, me personally. But I don't, I don't know. I don't know how they're gonna do it though. Cause Calvin on some shit like man, we, we since we you know cause Tank low key the face of boxing, so you know niggas mm -hmm. want to like I say the Cavs love knockouts and Calvin know this, so Calvin he at this point he just they they just fight for the people, bro. Like as far as like the, the they they fighting for you know the the the, the, the casuals, man. And you know, yeah. you know, because I ain't gonna lie, bro, I be I, I'm a Tank fan, but the diehard Tank fans, I can't talk to them niggas. Bro. Bro. You haven't been. You haven't seen gonna, him on Twitter. They, they, they gonna make every excuse in the world for him not to fight the best, bro. I be uh, they be going hard about this nigga, bro. Like, and just call, got, and they just call Frank Martin a dub, bro. And the crazy thing, I used to low key, I used to low key be like that a little bit. I used to low key be a little dog, but then I started realizing, like, man, this nigga is nothing <laughs> for real, bro. And low key, he's fucking a sport of boxing up doing this shit, like, you know what I'm saying? Because like when Tank retired, boxing still man. gonna go on. And I'm still it gonna is. be a fan. It is. That's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, fighting, I ain't about to be no diehard fan for these niggas. They not trying to really give <laughs> yeah. real boxer fans what we want, nigga. Because they don't really give a fuck about us, real. They just trying to get their paper and get out, which I can respect. But as a true fan of this shit, nigga, I want to see some real great. I want to see greatness, nigga. I want to see who the fuck really great. You know what I'm saying? When it's all said and done. You know what I'm real saying? Tough. That's what I'm trying to look for. Like, we don't even know yet. Yeah, like, nigga, I don't know them niggas for real. They don't even know me, so I'm going to stay <laughs> true to the sport. Nigga, I, don't, I ain't on none of these niggas' payroll. You feel me? A lot of these niggas, Tank fan, they act like they on payroll. Nigga, Tank ain't, don't even know you niggas. For real. He won't even see you niggas. He won't even see you in the sparring match right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about, yeah, in the sparring match. You ain't seen it. Ask him to send it to you. <laughs> like, bro, we trying to see this fight right now. That's what I'm saying. Like, and my thing, I told everybody, like, I don't know what Frank Martin did in the sparring match with, uh, with Tank Davis, but for Tank to be like, yeah, I want Frank Martin. I know he asked for that fight because you fight a dude, you just sparred. You can't tell me Al Hamey gonna force you to fight a guy you just sparred, bro. Something happened that sparring man. I seen a little interview. I wonder, like, hey man, why Tank got out the sparring man so fast? He got up out of there. Everybody, because you know, usually if a dude just got beat up, you know, everybody ain't gonna be standing in front of Frank Martin, like, hey bro, you know what you just did in the Tank man. So they interviewing Frank Martin, like he the winner or something. So I'm trying to figure out, like, like Tank, yeah, I know you put out that uh that Ryan Garcia. I mean, I know Ryan Garcia put out that sparring match, but uh, what about that Frank Martin sparring match though? You know what I'm saying? So, I think that sparring man Frank Martin did got got the got the uh tank real bad, man. Because there ain't no other reason he fighting uh Frank Martin right now. Ain't no reason. He ain't got no connection to Frank Martin. I mean, shit. He kind of. I mean, if you look at it, he kind of because you know Tank. Like I said, he him and his team they're not really trying to take no real challenges. So I feel like the way it was, Frank really was next in line. You feel me? 
And I think the you nigga, know, I think niggas, the niggas kind of been on tank ass. I'm like, oh, you don't ever fight no black fighters. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if Frank, Frank, if you look, if you really, you know, if you you know Frank, his last fight look kind of he ain't, he kind of look weak. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. he, he ain't look uh, uh top tier. You feel me? So they gonna they gonna harp on that shit. Yeah, Come tell right now, fight, take man. them, man. Them GTD boys, they not trying to take no real challenges, bro. They, they like, don't get it to it. Frank, a good fighter, though. But he yeah, he is. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not no Devin or Shakur, man. Yeah, he ain't a super superstar, but yeah, he, he, he elite, you know what I'm saying? But my, uh, what I was thinking about was, um, yeah, because you do make a good point, though. Like, if he does make that, uh, Frank Mark fight, you know what I'm saying? It's a decent fight, but it ain't something like, the mega fights we looking for. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing I'm kind of looking for because, like, uh, I think um, I think Tank Davis going to – if Isaac Cruz win that 140 bill, I think Tank Davis will possibly do a rematch at 140. Yeah, I can see that happening. I can definitely because, see that. I could definitely see yeah. that fight Isaac Cruz again and Duck and Devin again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because because uh, Lomachenko, you got Zapata. Because the last he never, guys, he never he knocked out Cruz and low key Cruz really built this name on the fact that Tank could not did knock him out. Yeah. Oh, the like, only reason why Tank ain't knocking him out because he hurt his fucking hand. Yeah, he did. This is you know the saying? same thing that happened to Tank happened to uh uh somebody said Tank hand was already messed up when he's uh, in the fight before he fought though. So I don't know. I'm not I'm not I think sure. So too. I think he probably heard it in training. So I'm like, man, he but, probably tweaked. He probably tweaked it in training, then in the fight, he tweaked that shit again. Then you know, once you tweak it in the middle of the fight, nigga, shit, man, you gonna keep fighting, nigga. You gonna cause shit, if you stop fighting, nigga, that's an L. That's why you seen the fight. If you see like the uh behind the scenes shit with Calvin, motherfucker, you mm -hmm. see Tank was in that bitch like, man, my hand hurting that nigga Calvin. Calvin a street nigga, like he a real street, like yeah, without boxing, care, Calvin, that. <laughs> like Calvin without boxing, bro. What really both them niggas like without yeah. boxing, them niggas are. Fuck around, be some stone cold murderers, bro. I believe for I, real. So you could tell like that street shit came out of Calvin because he was looking at Tank was bitching about his hand. That nigga said, "They go fight, nigga. Fuck that shit." Like, you see that nigga just <laughs> snapping on this nigga and like, and, like they they got that. I ain't gonna lie, they they got that chemistry, but as soon as he did that shit, motherfucker, you know what I say? He started turning up, nigga. Like nigga, like he started like, "Fuck that. We gotta dig this shit out for a win, nigga. Fuck nigga, hurt, but we." We got to dig this shit out. You know what I'm saying? Ain't like we didn't face adversity before. We from the streets, my nigga. We from the struggle. So this ring yeah. shit really ain't about nothing compared to what we really went through in real life. That's what I feel like. That's what I feel like would make Tank what he is. The fact that he he come from them humble beginnings. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's why I feel like him and Devin, he, he going to get the best of Devin because Devin low-key been spoiled. You feel me? Like mm -hmm. Tank really had to get all his shit out the fucking mud. You know what I'm saying? Like. So I feel like that type of I tell you, I feel like that's gonna play a part, like as far as who got the heart, you know what I'm saying? That's what I feel like that's what you know what I'm saying. I think that's what's gonna play a part when they fight because of that. I feel shit. like I feel like Tank gotta go on that thing active though. Like even with this Frank Martin fought, he ain't fought in like what 14 months when that fight happened. He need to get <laughs> active quick, bro. Because you know, most of the most of Tank life, bro, he been active. Like this the most he this the longest he ever been without fighting in this. But life. I mean, even though, even though you know, you, you, like act as far as like actual, like, like the actual like fights, you know, I'm fight nights. I mean, I, I see he's still on weight. You know what I'm saying? He on like oh, yeah, you know, yeah, Tank yeah. used to get fat as hell. All they season. did, like, bro. You know, he, used to, he used to blow up to like 180, 170. When he was like five, AB, even, five, when he was five, AB? 180. He a little fat nigga. But I think soon as he started realizing, like, man, we gotta, we gonna have to, the shit, the road gonna get tougher. Like he started, like he started staying in shape. You know what I'm saying? Like he even say he cut out drinking. He used to drink like a motherfucker. He said he don't even drink like that no more. Yeah, because yeah, he knows shit gonna get harder. So it's it's hard. It's it's easier to, you know what I'm saying? Stay in shape, man. When training camp come, you could just focus on your actual opponent instead of trying to make weight during training camp. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true because uh he used to be fat as on the way with Adrian Brown. He used to be mm. drinking a lot. I was like, yeah, when he started, like that motherfucker out there wild. <laughs> yeah, when he, when he start when he started losing weight and stuff, I was like, all right, I'm gonna back up off uh tank. I see you trying to be serious now. He trying to lose shit, that, that, that motherfucker just posted a song with his crooked ass toes were on the uh scale. Man, he like what 138. That's all right. Consider the fight what eight to what July when them niggas fight. Ooh, that nigga make featherweight if he yeah, can you feel me. I'm trying so to see don't. if he, uh, I'm trying to see if he can make featherweight get that anyway fight. You know that's twelve pounds, bro. You can make that happen. Let's go.
And I don't see you know, cutting that much. That's gonna lot of that's gonna be a lot of cutting for I, him. I promise, dog. That what he waiting on. As soon as soon as uh, anyway get the one twenty six next year, Tank gonna be like, hey, let me jump right there. Cause that's what they gonna try to do. Man, next anything, year. I feel like anyway gonna have to move up to about 130, 135. I, I ain't gonna lie, that happening too. Bro, anyway, should have been up to 130 already, dog. But you know, because... anywhere real light, them them Japanese dudes be skinny, bro. I did, I did. A video Asian on that. be small for real. That's I did... why you cut that weight like that and keep that but I... power. But I did a video on that because you know, uh, Manny Pacquiao came up from 106 pounds. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he only he only coming from 108. So Manny Pacquiao going from 106 pounds. Mm -hmm. So 147. Anyway, talking about the yeah, 132 much. 132 much? No, dog. You ain't number one pound found. Pound he, found he, he going just, up. He just naturally pound. small, bro. Them, them, them Asian motherfuckers be small as Pacquiao bro. small like I had, him. Like you, ever, you ever talked to an Asian girl? Bro, I'm telling you, Pacquiao is a smaller fighter than him. Pacquiao came up from now, he could pounds. move up for sure. You know what I'm saying? He could move, yeah. but I think you know how anyway doing. I think he playing the right. Like he just gonna capitalize every division he can to. You know what I'm saying? He don't move up too much. You know what I'm saying? Cause if you move up too much, that weight can fuck around, slow him, slow him down, make him look bad. You feel me? That's that's why a lot of people say A B kind of fell off. He motherfucker, he should have stayed at yeah, one four. Yeah, he didn't go off fast. You right? You making the you know point? I like said, cause that hand speed be everything, bro. Like he ain't look the same when he got the one forty seven. You ain't lying. Mm -hmm. He look like a totally Steve different away. guy when he got there. Cause that when he was like he went away then. Dang. He went out a little bit. Dang, my dog just went out, man. Dang, Devo, he done went out again. <laughs> ah, plus crazy. Ah. <laughs> hey, plus crazy, man. What's up, Go Good? Y'all coming in and out, man. Yeah, y'all definitely coming in and out, man. I'm doing a long stream. I know y'all busy coming in and out the stream. Yeah, I'm just talk chopping it up with bro, man. I was just chopping it up with him. Yeah, man. Uh, Devo was talking about some real stuff on here, though. He was definitely, uh, he was basically saying the same stuff I be saying. No lie. But yeah, he do got a point though. Um I, I ain't look at it like that, but I'm glad Debo kind of broke that down though. About the Terrence Crawford and the boots thing. I will give him credit on that because now that I think about it, it ain't gonna be that many legacy fights like that. It's not that many legacy fights for real. So you gotta get it basically at the beginning or the end. If you can really find some. So he's making a good point on that part. What's going on, Go Good? Yeah, we was just in here chopping up about the uh in this fight. And a couple of other things. We're going over Garcia. I was talking to Plus about uh Garcia and um uh, I don't you think so? I think he will if they don't give him the fights he, he wants. I think he will. I thought he he was going to retire. I thought he was. I thought Terrence Crawford was going to retire. I thought Terrence Crawford was ready to retire. I'm hearing now that the Eubanks fight could possibly be something that Crawford can look at between Tim Zhu and uh. What I'm getting right now is Tim Zhu and Crawford. I mean, uh, Tim Zhu and um, what am I trying to say? Canelo was options for uh, Crawford after the uh, Eubanks fight. Yeah, man. It's about to be over with for uh, all these guys. It's about to be over. I feel like it's over with now, plus. Because these guys ain't really moving like that. They acting like they 35... They act like they 40 years old. These guys in their mid-30s, man. When guys in their mid-30s 10 years ago, they was making 10 uh four or five fights a year. Yeah, it might be a that's what I'm saying. It might be a tough fight, man. That might be a tough fight. Terrence Crawford looking at Tim Zoo and 
Canelo at the Eubank still? Because I was trying to think of that. Like, I don't know if uh, Canelo versus Berlanga would be enough after um after that Mike Tyson fight. He might, might uh, Canelo might need a bigger name. Yeah, I think a couple of more. I'm, I think at least two more. It looked like he want to have two more fights. He got a lot of new fans now, so he, you know, Crawford got a lot of new fans he want to fight in front of. So, I definitely think a couple more, uh, like uh, Go Good said, he definitely got a couple of fights left in him. Yeah, I think that's what it is. He want to have the Canelo fight, then he gone. He want to have some legacy fights, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how much fans will actually give him credit for the Jerron in his fight. I know most fans will in boxing, but on the outside, they probably want to know it. Um, they probably don't know how good Jerron Ennis is. But everybody in boxing knows how good he is. And Tim Zoo. You know, a lot of people don't know how good Tim Zoo is. That's all I'm trying to see. Like, I don't know if Crawford would get credit as far as the same kind of credit a boxing fan would give him that watches boxing every day. Compared to someone like that doesn't watch it a lot. Yeah, I, I definitely think that's gonna be it. But from what I'm seeing right now, Crawford's uh hey, I'm gonna drop the real reason why uh Crawford well, I already did a lot of it already, but I'll drop the real reason why I think he's gonna um why he's not taking the fight right now. AB got a lot of AB got to lose some weight. He got a lot of fight offers. AB getting the most fight offers right now, but he can't lose no weight. Yeah, uh, uh, Trader Kev is like a nine to five. Yeah, and having a family. Yeah, me too. That Barrios fight not happening. That that hurt everything. That Barrios fight not happening. That hurt everything. That's a major setback for us right now. Yeah, I think AB done, man. You remember, you remember like three or four years ago when we thought he was done? No, nah, it's a lot worse. It's a lot worse now, plus. I think it's worse than it was three or four years ago. I think it's a lot more uh, worse than it was three or four years ago. Three or four years ago, A.B. was decent. You know what I'm saying? He could have fought a Mikey Garcia or somebody, but now he looks, yeah, too much, man. Too much Casamigos for A.B. I thought, I knew he had a drinking problem, man, but this right here is insane, man. It's insane now. Because you know what's crazy? As much as Charlos have gotten themselves like involved into whatever, but A B still looked the worst. He gained the most weight. Charlo still can get in the ring right now. He just fought. For A B to be that done right now, to the point where he can't lose no weight. You got Kerner Ben, Mike uh Ryan Garcia, Kerner Ben then and you got uh Devin Haney as a fight. And you like, nah, I can't lose no weight right now. Oh, you don't want no money then. Then you complain about guys ain't getting you money. You can't lose no weight, dog. I mean, they literally paying guys to lose weight now. All you got to do is lose weight, step in the ring, get his check, and that's it. That's why I'm kind of confused on what he's trying to do right now. He's calling out guys, but not in shape. That's what kind of being said, man. We tried to offer you a fight, and you wasn't in shape, so. AB hey, got a lot of ways to go, man. He definitely uh sending himself back right now. But he he gonna he gonna announce a fight, I guess, soon probably. I don't know if it's gonna get done, but it's gonna get announced. But yeah, I think plus was asking me about the undercard though. Yeah, everybody on the undercard plus. That uh the undercard with um that Tim Zoo Keith Thurman fight. It's gonna be everybody on the undercard. Everybody. Yeah, that's going to be good. I'm trying to see the next couple of fights coming up. What's going to happen, but 
Yeah, that's gonna be a good card though. Exactly. Especially when they have a job. Guys gotta stay on weight and go to work. Yeah, A V don't understand, man. He's he really don't understand. Yeah, me either. I heard um dang plus. I forgot why I said seen it. I think I seen somebody say March 30th or somewhere. I forgot where I seen it. Oh, here you go, plus. Yeah, that ain't gonna article right there. That ain't gonna work, but y'all know what I mean. Try to put the website. Where is it at? Yeah, they got the article on here though. Where is it at? It's on Boston scene. And say it in the title. There you go. Yeah, they got an article right there. My bad. It's that uh Carmel Martin fight. It says it in the uh, thing. Carmel Martin uh returned March 30th on Tim Zoo, Thurman Card. Yeah, that's what it was. I had sent the other one, but kind of messed up. But yeah, I'm gonna definitely uh I'm gonna see y'all tomorrow, man. I gotta get up out of here. Uh. But I'm gonna uh, definitely check in with y'all tomorrow. Appreciate everybody for the support. Shout out to uh, Plus for popping in. I wanted to stay in late because I know Plus had came in late. Go good. Shout out to Go Good and Plus for uh, holding me down, bro. Holding down the stream. Shout out to Queen. She she keep it real. Shout out to everybody in the chat, man. D Ray, everybody who popped in tonight for real. You talk tomorrow? Uh, I'm probably pop up in the morning. Uh, tomorrow, I'm gonna try to do it early in the morning. In the morning, I know you twelve, eight, you uh two hours behind, so it's gonna be like I'm gonna try to do something like this, eleven a.m. for you. Yeah, I'm gonna probably be around like eleven a.m. Cause I got a story I was gonna talk about today, but I ain't really want to talk about it. I just want to talk about the Jerron Innes. I know everybody want to talk about Jerron Innes and Crawford, so I was just talking about that today. But I might talk about something different tomorrow before um unless something pop up, you know what I'm saying? But uh I definitely uh drop something later on though tonight. I definitely got some news to put out. But uh that's all I got though, man. Shout out to everybody like plus and uh go good. Shout out to Queen, D Ray, everybody, uh everybody who came in, Devo. Yeah, appreciate uh plus and man uh go good man. I'm gonna see y'all tomorrow, dog. For real. Shout out to plus man, and go good. All right, like and subscribe, everybody. Appreciate it.